synthetic ligament. So why isn't it a synthetic? It is synthetic, but yeah. calling it a ligament is, uh, I don't think even the Arthrex guys call it a ligament. I'm sorry to differ. It's okay. Let's get the knife. So do you have any experience of redo arthroscopies in your case for any particular reason and you have noticed that this uh, fiber tape has incorporated with the graft or it just lies with the graft? Uh, so thankfully we haven't had to do a lot of redos. Uh, since the last two years we've had two failures with our hybrid population of players. When we've revised them, what we found is that the entire ligament was gone, only the fiber tape remained. And you, do you like to tension it separately or you just tension I it with the... I tension them together. I'll show you. So we'll start, so uh, if anyone can, can you see this? Can you see? Yep. So this is the fibula. This is the tip of the fibula. We move two to three centimeters from the tip. Now just for the purposes of uh, this surgical demonstration, we're going to be making a big incision. Normally we don't make such a big incision. So at the posterior border of the fibula, you can feel the perineus longus there. I need two arteries ready. And we take the incision there. There's usually a vein here. So that's the vein. Yep. Mop. So if you're lucky, you miss the vein. If you're unlucky, like I am today, you hit the vein. Still is black handle kind of I'm a black handle kind. So we're dissecting through this fascia now on top of the perineus longus. Again, this is a bigger incision than what we normally take. So if you can look inside, can you see inside? All right. Fat guy. Reminds me of me. Oh, Brinder. So can we get some light? Okay, just get a retractor. Open. So usually it's pretty obvious. So he's got some fat, fat guy. Just retract up here. That's good. So you can see the perineus longus just there. Let's take this out. Oh, let's do it. Just split that for me. Okay. So he's got a lot of fat here. This way. So you can see both the tendons there. Just give me the artery. So the superficial one is the perineus longus. The deep one is the perineus brevis. So what we'll do is we'll take the perineus longus first. That's our harvest tendon. Oops. All right. So just the ethabon. So you can see that. That's the perineus longus. Now what we do is we have our foot in inversion. Now at this time we do eversion. This gives us more length on the tendon. And we'll do a whip stitch. All this. So it's important to take about four to five throws of this when you're harvesting it. It just makes your life a little bit easier so that the tendon doesn't pull through. We've had a couple of cases where it does pull through and then you have to go and find the tendon, which is harder. But as compared to the hamstring, it doesn't have that much recoil, so it doesn't go right up. If in case you're harvesting and the tendon slips or goes inside, what you can always do is leave your tendon stripper there you just go up the leg, make a horizontal incision here, and then you can pull it out through the incision there. Okay, so I've got five throws in here. Got my whip stitch done, so we'll cut that. We just keep the artery there, and we take the other one. Now, 
We've got our PL stitched, so we're going to go back and find our PB, which is a bit higher in this guy. Just retract it. Dr. Manita, uh, how, much, how much distally we can uh, uh, go uh, and cut the perineus longus cut tendon? This. Uh, we can go quite distally actually, it, it doesn't make uh, that much difference even if you want to go distally. There's no sort of harm to going back there. There's nothing you're really worried about. Is there any landmark or a maximum extent uh, up to which we can go? So you don't want to cross the tip of the fibula basically. The fibula is our posterior border for that, so we don't want to cross the tip. So he's got a very deep hernia sprung brevis here. What a very deep tendon, this guy. Normally it's not, not so deep. Just relax, I'll just pull both. So normally it's not so deep. He's just got a lot of muscle around there. Yep, hold this. So you can see that, that's the perineus brevis, that's the perineus longus. So what we're going to do is do our tenodesis. So we're using fiber wire for this. So here you want to take a minimum of about two to three throws, that's enough usually. That helps you do the tenodesis. So can you all see that? Can you see the perineus longus and the perineus brevis? Can they hear us? Yes, me again. No, no, no. All right, step there, did you? Yep, let's hold that, that's good. So we're doing our step here. So before we used to take our tenodesis on the lateral aspect, and what we found was that it used to cause knot irritation. So now we've moved and we've started doing it more superiorly, so there's less knot irritation that happens. Okay, so once we've got that, we remove the perineus brevis artery, and then we're gonna incise our perineus longus, so it's free. Just need to move the camera back. Camera thoda piche le le, please. Yeah, just go back. Or piche, or kafi piche le le. Need to come here. So, yep. So here you've got this tissue, which is the tissue you need to dissect out. So we're getting into that plane, which is above the perineus longus, and we're dissecting the fat. Now, the reason why that's important is when your tendon stripper goes in, we have to make sure that it's not obstructing the view. Just uh, retract this way, yep. And this is the fascia we want to release. So we've re released that fascia. So I can put my finger inside. I've got a good grip there, yep. It's nice. Hello, I'm Dr. Sanjay. I'm auditing. Uh, is there any chance of uh, sural nerve injury in during this uh, graft it is, harvesting? Uh, it is, and you know, it's also described, uh, you just have to be careful when you're doing it. There's a set technique we follow which prevents it which is we're not going posteriorly where the nerve is, we're staying towards the fibular side and that allows us to dissect into the fascia. Second thing is that when we've taken the tendon stripper, there are case reports if you go too high with your uh, tendon stripper, you can hit the common perineal nerve and cause a foot drop as well. And one of my friends in Pakistan, he had the same problem. He stripped it, went up too high, it caused the impingement of the common perineal nerve and uh, cause them to have a foot drop afterwards. But inshallah, luckily we haven't had such a problem yet. Good. Hanji? Sure. 
So just uh, we'll show you the graph. I guess that's more important than this. Do you want to put the camera in, Tatak? So, so this is the graph. Yep. Just bring it forward. So then, how do you regulate it not going too high? That uh, uh, so uh, stripper. So when you're taking the tendon stripper, what we do is we take an artery, and we have it clipped on that, and we're also giving pull down. Okay. So a common mistake is if you just hold the. So either you can uh, keep talking or I can talk. So if you hold the ethy bond only, then as you're pushing the tendon stripper, the natural tendency is for the tendon stripper to sink in as well, and that's okay. when you migrate up. Okay. So when you have the artery in hand, what we do is we curl it like we were doing just then. So mm. that gives a bit more traction, and then you have a counter traction traction like we do with the hamstring. Okay, okay, Same sure. Way. All right, so you can see here, this is our graft, minimal muscle tissue on it. So we've prepared this graft. We've got a nice looking graft. And as compared to the hamstrings, you can see how easy it is to harvest. So our total operative time there was four minutes, five minutes, I think. And it's just easy to harvest. And that took longer because he's fed up. In, in normal player population that we have, everything's superficial. We take it out. And it just, it just runs so smoothly. You, you haven't got any vincula to cut. You haven't got any massive dissections to do. And you're getting a graft, which is a nice graft. So you just size that for me. So just give me an bond into it. Let's get a, where is that? Sizer counter. OK. All right, let's have a look. Just put something proper into it. Okay, just hold this. Okay. Yeah, so that's a eight. So that's going hard into an eight. So that's good. So we're happy there. So for this guy, an eight is a good, and we're happy with that. Just pull through, just pull it hard. So you can see it's firmly going into the eight, which is good. That's nice. Pull through. So that's good. We're happy there with the eight. And I will show you the, what we're using for our fixation as well. This is an adjustable loop endo button from Stryker, known as Pro Cinch. And we'll, sh we'll show you the graph preparation. So Gupreet, you can put the graph on there. Let's have a look inside. How's it going? All right. So we're here. Just need a needle. White balance, cut Okay. Needle, dedo. So he's got some damage there. Also, Pandu. Yep. Stab knife. Okay. Just remove that. So he's full of veins, this patient. I think all these veins were just created for me. Okay. Foot pedal. This pin. Okay. So uh, that's the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. So he has got some give on his MCL there, but his MCL wasn't positive to testing. That looks good. So we'll probe that uh, and see it please further. Please show inside view. Show them the inside view. Wand head? Yes. Pedal wand. So you can see his PCL, that looks okay now, after all the years of torment. And I routinely like to use a wand here for my preparation. I think it just cleans up the space nicely, allows you to really access that posterior aspect of the notch, which I want to see, just there. So you can see there, we're right at the back of the notch, we're off the back wall. So if you can see inside, see that? We're right off the back there. So that's nice, that's where we want to be. So we're using the striker wand for this as well. You can use either, 
I think works nicely. And you can see the ACL there. It's got a bit of a remnant, so that's a type 2 remnant of the ACL just there. So it's tethered to the PCL. The PCL looks good, nice and firm, and I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to dissect out the remnant of the ACL just there. That's good. Clear up that space. So remember, we're not concerned here because this is all anterior tissue. So nothing's coming from the back to the front. So we're happy with that. And we'll have a look at the meniscus as well. So let's have a look here. Just come this way, Brinder. Hold that. That's nice. All right. So you can see inside here, the meniscus looks good. It's not pulling forward as well. So I'm happy with that. And he's got some tissue just there, but his root looks good as well. So you can see the root looks nice just there. So accessing this posterior aspect of the root is sometimes difficult. And there's a trick here that you can use, which we use, which is just relax on this. So if you flex the knee like this, if everyone can see that. So we have a foot in valgus already due to the post. We've got the knee flexed. And sometimes accessing the posterior horn is tough, but you can just drive in through this area. And here, you're right at the posterior horn. So this allows us to do our posterior horn work, which is really easy. And a lot of people complain that it's tough to access the posterior horn, but you can see, you're just there. That's the posterior horn. So that's nice there. I'm happy with that. Let's have a look at his lateral. So we'll go figure four. So you can see the lateral meniscus there. That also looks nice. Probe. Just get the probe. So he's got small little tear there, if you can see that. So that's what we were seeing on the MRI, just that tear there on the posterior aspect, posterior horn. So let's see if that's stable or unstable. Have a look. That's good. I'm happy with that. And there's no extension to the inferior articular surface. So that's something I'm not going to touch. So that's something that nature is going to heal. And if you can see, nature's already healing that. So there's some tissue there, and that's filling that defect, filling that void. So I'm really happy with that. Here we go. OK, bring it back. That's nice. So table height, come please. Table height, come Just hold this so it doesn't fall down. All right. So yep, let's go. Flex up the knee. It's good. Just reduce the table height. So today we've got Dr. Tapish, who is my assistant consultant, soon to be a resident of Lucknow. So is ki shadi ki baat chal rahi hai Lucknow mein? Needle. We've got uh, Brinder and Gurpreet, who have been my OT assistants, who are invaluable. Just table height down, it will nice. make everyone's life easy. So this is my accessory portal. So it's slightly more medial to my other portal, and it's lower. And we make it blind here. So we've got to go in. There, you can see we're inside. So again, I'm just working on this back wall. This is the back wall. I really want to attack this back wall and get it nice and exposed. So if you have table height, you will do something with shoulder. Can you do something Okay, one day. So can everyone see that? We're at the back wall. Hello? Can you yes, demonstrate femoral footprint for the demonstration purpose? Yeah, sure. So here we go. This is the back wall. And can everyone see that? We're right off the back wall, just there. So I've got nothing more posterior than that, just there. And that's nice. And if we move forward, so one of the common things is if you don't prepare this, you sort of think this is the back wall. And you start referencing everything off that. So it's really important. You can see the ridge just there. See that? So if you don't expose all the way to the back, we've seen in some revisions that we do that people have referenced off this line just here, which is at the footprint. But you really need to go all the way to the back, expose this back wall. Once the back wall is exposed, you can accurately reference. So table or down karoge? So I've got my all in. I know it's going to be an eight. So I'm referencing off the back. Now remember, the mistake people make is going too high. So when you're here, you don't want to be out here. This was early 2000s. 
this was 2010s. Now what we're doing is we're coming even lower. So the new CT guided studies show that the anatomical position of the tunnel is just about here. So I'm well in front. I've got space for my eight. So we we'll just tap that in there gently. It's good. Nice. Okay. Table down. Flex up. That's good. All right. So just tap that in for me. Get the drill next. Let's close the suction. Sir, uh, sir, how much anterior to the posterior wall and how much superior to the joint line? So I'm using an eight tunnel uh, here. So I know that uh, I want to be at least the minimum. Minimum is five off the back. So uh, I think it's just with time, with experience, with doing a lot, you sort of figure out where to go and where not to go. But you can always use a jig. A jig is not a bad idea to use. And regarding the superior, again, we're coming down through. Yep. Just open it. So I don't use uh, jigs. I don't like jigs. I think uh, when I started, I started using them. And I think they're a wonderful thing when you're starting off to use a jig because sometimes you're unsure, are you back, are you forward? So it really helps with that. But as time progresses, I think everyone can just do it freehand. It's much easier. It makes your life easier as well. Pump the bottle. Manav, can you leave your phone and come here and pump the bottle? Sir, you are making tunnel just uh, 5 mm anterior to the posterior wall. No, I am 6 mm here, so I am leaving 2 mm of uh, back wall. You will see it once we make it here. So, what is the minimum uh, yeah. uh, or appropriate uh, thickness left after making the tunnel? Yes, yeah, so you want to be… So, with the new CT guided studies, what they are showing us is pump it. So, you need to… Just, just one second, please. Put it into the new thing, put it into the new bottle and pump. So, you want to be at least… Uh, 2 mm from the bottom and 2 mm from uh, the posterior part of the back wall. So, so once they pump and I think this is a problem that probably all of you deal with. Just press the button. It's not that difficult. Push it. Okay. So that's 40. So you can see that. So I'm happy there with my 40. So we're going to be using our adjustable loop. So what we'll do is, I only want 20 inside. So we'll give a 20 clearance for the flip. And I'm happy having about 20 inside. So 20 is more than enough for this guy. So we use the eight reamer on the top and we use differential reaming. So we'll use the eight and a half on the bottom. So you just keep pumping, Manav. So that's my eight and I'm going to go 20. And you can see I'm not shaving a lot of fat because we know now that the ACL heals uh, from the tissues and the cells that generate from the fat. So I try to preserve as much of the fat pad that I can. And I just do enough amount of shaving to allow me to do my work. But I'm, I'm not clearing up a lot of space. It's not Hiroshima. We don't need a nuclear holocaust to be generated just to see the ACL. Okay. So that's my 20. Just pump nicely once so we can see. Just thoda aur jayega, 20, 20, that's nice. I'm happy there with my 20. Okay, just bring it down a little bit so I can just shave and show them. It's good. So this is our final back wall. So you can see I've got about 2 mm from the posterior aspect. I've got 2 mm from the inferior aspect. This is a 5 mm shaver. And you can see the endo button. I've left, I've got 20 inside here for my graph to fit in and I've got a 20 flip distance up there. So can you see now the back wall? And you can see how we've left about one to two mm and I, that's more than enough. You don't need to leave huge back walls. When you leave huge back walls, you end up going too anterior. It's good. So we'll bring the knee down to 30 degrees now. And you can see the ACL stump here. So the
सेकंड ओटी क्या है ये माइक सेकंड ओटी का या फर्स्ट ओटी का ओटी हेलो 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 अभिषेक या 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 हूँ से अभिषेक अभिषेक है सर अभिषेक अभिषेक वे आर रेडी विद द सेकंड केस डॉक्टर सुनील है सेकंड द ग्राफ्ट ओके एंड प्रिपरेशन इज गोइंग ऑन आई एम हैंडिंग ओवर टू डॉक्टर सुनील विल बी डिस्कसिंग द केस अ बिट द हिस्ट्री एंड ऑल डॉक्टर सुनील हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग तो प्लीज वी हैव अ 27 ईयर ओल्ड मैन हियर ही हैज अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ फॉल 5 मंथ्स अगो विद हिस्ट्री ऑफ इनस्टेबिलिटी on examination his uh, lakman said that it was both a positive and uh, then uh, he has uh, we have just about scoped him did a diagnostic round there is no meniscal injury there is bit of fraying of the lateral meniscus nothing major nothing concerning and uh, he has a simple acl tear i went in and harvested the semi graft and the graft is being prepared we use the quadrupled semiti uh, i don't know you are able to see my live this thing hello no sir we are we are still at the first oti hello yes sir we are now now here now sir you are visible yeah 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 so i've just about prepared my preparing my femoral footprint when i'm waiting for the rf rf hai so you can see that there that is the femoral footprint and if we go through the anteromedial portal you can see that yeah so we will place our uh, tunnel which is about 8 mm in that footprint there sir uh, please demonstrate your graft preparation hello also. sir the graft preparation going on please uh, hello sir the people here want to see the graft preparation hello sir we are audible here there uh, just now yeah tell me yes sir the the people here just want to see the graft preparation graft preparation yeah okay can the camera focus on the graft yeah, preparation there. please it's there so we have got two suspension devices here okay one on the femoral side and one on the tibial side yeah i measured the diameter diameter was about 8 mm which i think is quite adequate for this uh, gentleman okay because of his size yeah okay and uh, what we are going to do is on the femoral side we are going to use an adjustable button and the tibial side we are going to use a t button adjustable okay yeah so about the graft length is about 60 65 mm and the diameter is 8 mm okay so we create a continuous loop by stitching the ends of the graft mm -hmm. just hold this one ye dikha rahe hai so we are just about uh, completing the loop on the graft it is done with a number 2 suture mm -hmm. yeah. what scope is this this scope this is 30 or 45 okay ho gaya arif hello yes sir suction easy pe laga do 
उसमें से निकाल दें यू कैन सी देयर द फुटप्रिंट इज प्रिपेयर द कैमरा गाई प्लीज फोकस दी व्यू टुवर्ड्स दी नी पॉइंट कैन यू शो द आर्थरोस्कोपी ना या नहीं जरूरत नहीं है सिस्टर जस्ट वन मिनट so i mark my can we see the arthroscope picture because we are just seeing the outer view is it not towards the graft size preparation but towards the arthroscope can someone show this picture ye picture dikhane ke liye bolo you can see it now no sir still at the graft area all the next all chahiye aur wo black wala handle hai na next wo chahiye aur guide pin chahiye now you can see no sir it still at the graft point still at the graft, graft yeah you can see now no sir sir uh, sir we are seeing the outer picture of knee in one view but we are not seeing the arthroscopic picture we are not seeing the inside now it's there yeah now yeah no, yes sir so i am through the anteromedial portal now okay and i have just uh, put this mark while viewing from the anterolateral portal my graft is about 8 mm and i am in the dead center of the acl footprint you can see there yeah okay so now what i do is i use an all and all this is happening in 90 degrees of knee flexion all all i just make an entry point there mallet mallet you can see it yes sir so we just make an entry point there kar kar yeah so just clear the debris inside the joint once again hello sir for making so the once that for, is done for, for making the mark from the medial portal you make the two entries from the medial side sorry for making the mark on the footprint femoral footprint from the medial side you would make the two portal from the medial side no it is just one portal i use the same portal for marking also yeah for marking what i've done is i marked it this way i put the camera in the lateral portal okay okay and i use the rf device from the anteromedial portal and then mark the footprint there okay then check by on from the so it is the same portal. same one anteromedial portal i am not using two portals okay. what i do is i use vertical portals so my vertical portals are pretty flexible so i think that is a good point to put our femoral tunnel next what i do is 11 blade 11 11 you finished then i need your help now here you need to hold the camera so what i do is i extend my portal i go all the way down to the cartilage uh, down to the meniscus and go up a bit this is so that i can put my drill and uh, shaver for suction at the same time now we flex the knee completely yeah you can see that is our mark with the all you can see the outside picture table down please 
table down yes i am using i use any instrument just i need a straight device that's it yeah. you are done inko dhul de do aapne knee flexion pakad ke rakhna hai sister ji bas you can see that gone जब मैं बोलता हूँ तब करना है हैंड डाउन हैंड डाउन हाँ जाओ ये तो छोटा हो गया चक्की सो दिस पर्टिकुलर इंस्ट्रूमेंट जस्ट लेट्स मी कंट्रोल द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द गाइड पिन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ गाइड पिन इज नो लॉन्गर कंट्रोल्ड बाय द पर्सन इज ड्रिलिंग इट हैंड डाउन या गोइंग Okay, so our guide pin is out through the lateral cortex. Now we do the routine 4.5 tunnel, 4.5 drill. Yeah, just look up. the 8 mm hmm ja yeah. depth ke chahiye go 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 anyone having go any question uh, audience please anyone having any question please feel free thoda dheere karo haan ji abhi karo so you can see because i made my portal big i can put both of them together दिखा सुधीर है ठीक है ठीक है निकाल हो गया हो गया ना क्लिप पकड़ ठीक है इट शुड नॉट मैटर ठीक है ठीक है कुछ नहीं गेट वगैरह आ जाएगा कुछ नहीं होगा ठीक है ना डेप्थ भी तो मेजर करना है हेलो हेलो डॉक्टर सुनील डॉक्टर हिमांशु हेयर सो विद दिस टी बटन मतलब हाउ डू यू डिफ्रेंशिएट व्हाट आर द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ दिस टेक्निक विद दिस बटन ओवर द ऑल इनसाइड दैट इज बीइंग पॉपुलर फॉर क्वाइट सम टाइम या ये ये न द गुड थिंग अबाउट ऑल इनसाइड इज द थिकनेस ऑफ द ग्राफ्ट सो नाउ दैट वी नो दैट इट इज ऑल राइट टू पुट अ small button a uh, small graft and the graft heals inside the uh, at the mouth of the tunnel and not inside the tunnel yeah so now we have that advantage with us where we can put in short thick grafts more often than not when we use the traditional techniques our graft we have to compromise because of the fixation put a clamp on that so t button is number one made of peak it is as good as all inside it has no headaches of all inside a trimmer laga no headaches of all inside wherein it's a nightmare 88 ye 4.5 hai yeah take this so it doesn't have all the problems associated with all inside and at the same time in all inside technique because you are very uh, skeptical about the length of the the thing that you are creating tunnels you are creating so you always want to drill as much as possible in the end when you put a t button you are covering the cortex and getting the same amount of coverage on that side but here the disadvantage is that we are creating the entire tunnel on the tbl side rather than a yeah. socket yeah so uh, and the few the millimeters of bone you think it really matters there is no real uh, evidence to show that any of this really matters so the in vitro biomechanical study shown i have seen your uh, 
the studies about that, that the fixation strength on the TBL side with this loop is comparable. There is a weakest link. Yes. Yeah, you are 100 percent right. Fixation on the TBL is the weakest link. Yeah. So, I have just about completed and uh, we have tested T button quite extensively. In mechanically, we have tested it quite me extensively and uh, with it withstands forces equivalent to the gold standard uh, endo button. So, any additional benefit of the button being made of peak rather than being a metallic button? Yeah, you can use a metallic button. Definitely, you can use a metallic button. There is no this thing. Okay. The only problem with metallic button is A, right now we don't have a metallic button. Yeah, yeah. just pull it slowly. Slowly, slowly. We don't have a. Yeah, yeah, pull it. So, we can use uh, metallic button, but right now we don't have metallic buttons which are really, uh, which have an adjustable loop with them. And uh, as a matter of fact, you can take it with a pinch of salt. I did uh, biomechanical testing in Sironix's lab, and uh, what we found is needed. What we found is the metal buttons that we have now, they cut the sutures and uh, there this thing is lot lot less. So what I have done is I have just pulled my uh, bead pin right up to the femoral socket and at the midpoint of patella, just one centimeter lateral to it, I am making a lateral parapetal or portal. Because it's the bead pin in there. I need the knife again. <clears throat> because it is the bead pin in there, I'm not worried about sutures lacerating. So here I can expose the lateral part of the joint. See this? I'm in the lateral gutter. I don't know if you are able to see it. Can someone sort this shaver out? Just see if it is in the right mode. Bottom one. Uh, any particular reason why you are making this additional uh, portal? Water is finished. Saline is done. Any particular reason why are we making this additional portal? Sorry? Uh, why are we making this additional portal here? Yeah, you can see here now. I'm going to expose the guide wire from this. So you would routinely expose the uh, guide wire and see the flipping of the button through the scope? Sorry? You, you would can't? routinely be doing this? Yeah, I do it in every case. We have actually published this in Video General Sports Medicine. You can see it there. Yeah, it is a very, very safe, effective way of exposing your guide pin, especially when you are doing uh, the adjustable loops. Yeah, because your adjustable loops, your water pressure, yeah, thoda. Your adjustable loops, they tend to flip in the soft tissues. Whereas fixed loops, if you are not careful, they tend to flip inside the tunnels. And the reported incidence of this is about 25 percent. So, yes, normally it doesn't bleed this much because it's live surgery, it has to bleed. And so how much of extra surgical time does this step take? Sorry? How much of extra surgical time does this step take? It hardly takes f two minutes for me. Yeah. So most of us are not practicing this, so that means we are like missing on something? I don't know, it depends on the incidence of you flipping the buttons inside the soft tissue or uh, outside the co inside the tunnels.
Okay. So, yeah. do you recommend this T button for your revision cases also, where we have a problem oh, of tunnel uh, dilation on the TBS side? Fantastic thing, as long as you can gra get a graph which fits your uh, tunnel diameter. Yeah, because there the you don't want to have a huge big graft. So you, you have experiences of using it in the revision cases also. Yeah, yeah. So the, the tunnel diameter is usually around 12 in the revision cases, and it is really difficult to achieve that much amount of graft width. Yeah, you so can what? See the guide pin now. You can see it. Yeah. That's the guide pin coming out of the lateral femoral cortex. Okay. With the amount of knee flexion that I do. I know my particular guide pin always exits there. So I'm just about pulling the suture out, load the guide pin and the TPL jig, artery clip. So it always exists there. So T button really in a revision, no, here. revision situation depends on your tunnel. If your tunnel is too big, then I don't think it's uh, ideal because 12 mm tunnel, how will you fill it? You need to fill it with a graft, isn't it? You could just can't keep it, uh, uh, fill a uh, graft, uh, 10 graft on a 12 tunnel and hope the button to do the trick. So uh, if you ask me, no, we should be a bit more careful in such situations. If your tunnel's not uh, big, then yes, definitely. Hold the, hold the thing, jig, jig. Hold that. Uh, Sixty. So, when you increase your water pressure is not enough. Dusra wala khol do na. Take this out a bit. Piche karo. Yeah. So that is the anterior horn of lateral meniscus. We can see there. Yeah. You see the anterior horn of lateral meniscus, and that is the medial spine. So we want to get in line there somewhere, just medial to the medial spine, and this is an elbow hammer. No, ratchet down. Yeah, go on. Sir, while doing this, uh, externally, Hello? sir, externally, uh, do you find any landmark uh, at the entry of the at the tibial cortex while putting the jig and? Oh, uh, uh, I I do it in the middle. I do it in the middle of the tibia. Yeah, I know what you are asking. As you go more medial, then your tunnel length tends to be more. Uh, you can get a bit longer tunnel. As you change the angle on the jig you like say 55 to 60, 60 to 65, you get 5, 5 mm more in increments, some curate or something to hold it. Ah, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. Go on, go on. You mark the graph on 20. Femoral side. You should use the icon reverse. Yeah. Ne ne. Me batata. Go in, go in.
that is the problem. Take it out. Same sir. Seems as the Cyrenics people have good business in Lucknow. Put the femoral reamer. Give me eight reamer, any eight? Okay. I got it. Come in. Normally, I do even my tibial tunnels with femoral rimmers. I don't use tibial rimmers. Sir, do you gradually increase the size of the tibial tunnel? No, I don't have that patience. Take it up. Yes. 20. Uh, sir, do you uh, do the tibial tunnel is hyperflexion or it's uh, tip, you just... Uh, it for the yeah, station. this was the comfortable position for me today. <laughs> it has bit less flexion. This is more than what I would normally do. Okay. So, yeah, grasp it. Yeah, cool. Thoda kitchen of Nitra. Right, hand, hand close with you. Right, now if you want to do the suspension device on any bone, then it has to be cleared of soft tissues. You can't do a suspension device on soft tissues. Langenbecks and diathermy. So, you see this? Give me a forceps and mop. So what I do is I clear the tibial tunnel mouth. So I just clear the tibial tunnel mouth because the button has to sit on the bone, not on the soft tissues. Yeah. So. You can see that? Hello? Yes, sir, we are seeing. Yeah, so I've just about you cleared just the. Clearing the soft tissue over the bone. Around the tibial tunnel. Yeah. Yeah, that makes it uh, easy, this thing. Now we pass our graft. So, can you see the graft now? Yes, sir. Yeah, that is our graft. We have put marks. What is the length of your graft actually? 6.5? It is between 60 and 65. Okay. You want to do this? Go, go. You want to cinch the femoral bit. Yeah, go in. Yeah. Okay, start pulling the graft in. While he is pulling the graft, what I do is I just get into the joint again through the anterolateral portal and can we see the knee inside picture inside picture the can you see it now no not yet can you see it no, sir, not yet. We are not seeing the inside. Just wait, just wait, just wait. Can you see it? Still waiting. Cameraman, please. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, you can see? You read the postal letter corner of the knee to just see the flipping of button. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are not in the postal lateral corner. This is just in the lateral gutter. Yeah. Okay just the lateral cortex of the thing. 
There is okay. nothing. Yeah, pull it, pull it. Nothing unsafe here. Okay. Okay. Just pull one switch, na. Yes, sir. So we see the button flip yeah. every time. Okay. Now just flip it. And frankly speaking, I just know with my suture marks, my graph length, I don't uh, put any marks on my graphs really, because I'm more than confident about. Hey, don't cinch it. Just okay. okay. That's a button sitting Flipped. there. Okay. So we have no doubt about that. Now we turn to the intraarticular part. Okay, start cinching the graft in. I do do this with adjust with fixed loops as well, not okay. necessarily always adjustable loops, because uh, the way in which I drill my tunnels, I know that the tunnel length is. You see the graft coming in there. Yeah. It will be about 38, 36. So while he is doing that, I am holding the graft below. Mm -hmm. One of my fingers is in the loop of the adjustable loop below. Mm -hmm. Just go in a bit more. Just a bit. That would do. That's it. Yeah, you see there? Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is. Yeah, the can I have? Yeah. Langenbeck's? Retractor? Yeah, no. Punch, ghost is there, punch should be. Ghost is there, the copy. Can we have the outer picture in a bigger mode? Pakanda. Yeah, you be you the kind of label now. You can see it now? Yeah, we can see, but in a smaller mode, actually. Yeah? The outer picture in a in a smaller mode, we we want to see in a outer picture. Bada karne ke liye bolo. Yeah, 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 nothing. Yeah. So there is nothing special about this fixation. We just uh, cinch it as we would cinch any other mm -hmm. of the adjustable loops. That's it. The cinching is done, and the graft has gone in there. So here you don't have the headache of deciding on a screw size of screw, and you have fixation. You don't get fixation. You feel it's too strong. The screw sometimes cuts the graft. Sometimes. Okay. This screw goes in and uh, creates lots of problems. Here it's simple and the surgery is done. Uh, probe. Now what I do is, I do a, we cycle it for 25 times. Now you see, you can't get this tight of kind of tightness unless you do something like this on both sides. So. Yes, everyone says that adjustable loop loosen. They do loosen. They are not as good as fixed loops. But then, cycling now, 25 times. But then if you look at it, the initial fixation is far, far stiffer th in this construct than in the fixed loop and screw construct. I think that is the reason why uh, all inside techniques are showing no difference in uh, results compared to the fixed uh, Fixed loop techniques, fixed loop with screw. If you are so worried about it, with my approach, you can also put uh, knots on the lateral side because there is a portal there. Your sutures, you can just pull them out from there and put a knot on the lateral side. We have tested this particular button pretty extensively, and it is. Uh, the mechanical strength of this construct is fantastic. It is far, far better than your screw construct. The screw actually gives you somewhere around 800 newtons in case of best fixation. But this particular construct gives you around 1,000 newtons. Leave it. So once the this thing is done, we cinch it. There is nothing happening. Cinch it on that side. Yeah, there is nothing happening. Give me a knife, sister. 
and once that is done, the advantage is you can just convert it into a fixed loop, just like the suture disk technique. Nice. Koi bhi. Yellows. Langenbecks? No, no, Langenbecks. So I just note it at the end of it. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, please. Yeah, we just put tie some knots at the end of it okay. and cut the suture. Okay. That's it, really. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I thank the organizing committee and the wonderful OT staff here. Thank you, sir, yeah. for a wonderful yeah. demonstration. And now we are starting with our first panel discussion. I'll okay. call upon the moderators, Dr. Sanjay and Dr. Imran, to please come on the podium and to start with the first panel discussion. Can we have... Can we stop the relay from that OT? Sign probe. We are ready with our third case actually. Rajiv sir, we are just waiting for third case. It's actually started. After this, after 10, 15, 20 minutes, we'll go our for with our first panel discussion. So please start the relay. Dr. Sundar Rajan is ready with, the, with his uh, instability shoulder surgery, the bank card repair. Hello, Sundar sir. Hello, Sundar sir. Am I audible there? OT is getting ready. Wait for two minutes.
Hello. Now I'll call upon Dr. Shivam to please come on the stage to moderate the surgery. Dr. Ashutosh, Ashutosh sir, please come. Sundar sir has asked for two minutes just to ready with the portals and all. So till then you, you people please come. You want to be there from there? Okay, fine. Till Sundar sir speaks from there, uh, how many of us are doing uh, this uh, bank art surgery in, uh, especially the shoulder? How many of you are doing in a lateral decubitus or in a uh, supine or erect position? Check, check. So till we are uh, live on air, we can see being portals being placed. Uh, we have a, a routine surgery, a bank card repair being done by most of us. So I would request all the delegates and uh, faculties to participate in the uh, live uh, session uh, and discussion with uh, Dr. Sundar as he comes live to talk. Now what we can see here, they're uh, trying to put their portals. Posterior being secured. All the three portals have been uh, uh, established. There's no idea there. 
I mean, they're not edible to us. Neither we are edible to them. So all of us are doing uh, this bank card in a lateral decubitus. Rather, we should put in a way. How many of us are doing in a beach chair position? No one. I can see no no hands. Fine. What about cuff? Beach chair. So you people routinely do bank cart in a little decubitus and rotate. Fine. So it's only about the training or. We do in both the things in a little decubitus in our sort of settings. Okay. 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 Fine. So at, at times, you can convert in a beach chair position from scope to. Very well explained. Because if we we are getting any trouble, we can very well uh, convert it into a mini open technique. If we are doing in a beach chair, any other specific region, any other, apart from training. Convertible to a mini open. A viewing angle or some uh, kind of uh, pressure, or if we talk about any, do you people use uh, shoulder pump also during bank cart or during cuff surgery? For for bank cart, how many of us are using pump? Okay, Kamath sir, no pump in both, neither rotator cuff nor. There in. Okay. No, no pump. pump. Even, I, pump. even I don't use. Uh, without pump, it is. Uh, but the, that time when you are liberating the labrum, and then you go to distal, that is about five to six lakh. At that time, the blood gushes out. Hello, Abhishek. Yes, sir. We are Hello. The case. Am I audible there? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. You are very well audible. We are, but sir, we are not seeing the inside view or the arthroscopic view of the shoulder. And if we get a prop, uh, uh, just a brief history. Abhishek, can you hear us? Yes, sir, we are. Abhishek. Yeah, you are audible. Yes, sir, yes. Yes, sir, now we are seeing the picture and we are, you are very much audible. Good morning, sir. Hello, Dr. Sundar. Yes, sir, good morning, sir. So, Sundar, sir. He's not audible. Sundar sir, am I audible there? Yes, sir. Now you are audible. Just give me a. So, 
So, sir, you are going for you are doing a remplissage. Then, uh, you prefer a single anchor or a two two point of fixation for that? Hello, Sundar sir. Hello? Okay. Sir, are we audible? That is fine. Hello? Sundar sir, you are not audible. Yeah, I can hear you. Sir, I am Dr. Rajtosh and me and Dr. Shwama are auditing the session. Hi, Ashtosh, how are you? Fine, sir. Are you okay? Yes, sir. Now you are audible. Okay. So, he is a 17 years old gentleman, uh, had a sports injury. Okay? Okay, sir. Uh, following that, uh, he had a four time, uh, five times, I think, uh, four to five times dislocation. And uh, recently he had a 20 days before, he had a another dislocation. Okay? It's a non-dominant left-sided guy. He has got a, already we had gone, there is no bone loss as per the CT measurement. I can see there. Uh, so, we are uh, already inside the joint. We have the standard uh, posterior portal. We examined it. There is a hill sacs lesion with the uh, bank heart. And uh, already we made that uh, 6 mm cannula for the anterior portal. And the anterior superior portal, I am just giving my scope. So, we are planning to do a rimply surge with the bank heart repair. So, sir, uh, we can see that there is a double-loaded suture which is put inside the hill sax lesion. Correct. So, uh, uh, the question is, uh, w what is the site of entry inside the, ramp uh, the hill sax lesion? Yeah, that is a big controversial question, whether it's go close to the cartilage or go to the center or uh, uh, come down as much as we can. So, usually I put it in the center so that... Um, uh, if you try to cover as much as medial to the uh, lesion, close to the uh, cuff. So it makes sense uh, that uh, it can uh, give the maximum filling of the defect. Correct. Yeah, that is correct. That's why it is correct. So, we have taken, taken the four byte. The most important step is when you do this, you should not unload the.
superior to inferior up to 2 o'clock. Otherwise, it will not come up. It looks very much uh, down. Sir, in your PA planning, do you ask for uh, on track or off track hill sacks with a radiologist? Yeah, usually uh, we, we they give the our best close control radiologist give that index. Um, so more I'm I'm worried about the uh, glenoid bone loss rather than the on track off track. You know, so whenever there is a hill sacks, don't leave the cannula to come out. Huh? So, what's your critical bone loss in case of glenoid bone loss? So, we were now from 25 to now almost 15. Any patients with area, especially the sports patients with the 15, uh, I try to prefer to do a letarge rather than the bank out with research. But uh, some of the patients who are not very actively sports person, non-dominant hand, you can uh, slightly extend it to 15 to 20. But I think slowly we had come, I think most of us agree that we had come to uh, around 15. What is your cutoff? Can you give a suture retriever, please? What is your cutoff, uh, Abhishek? So this is Vinay, sir. Sorry? Vinay, Vinay. Yeah, Vinay. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So what is your cutoff? 17%, sir. I still uh, go with 17% uh, because I think... Uh, for uh, I'm not dealing with too much of sports population. It's mainly a recreational sports guy. Yeah. So for me, it's 17 percent which I take. Yeah, I think that's Saha's article or yeah, something right. like that. So your mobilization has been from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock? Yes. Or you will be, you'll be mobilizing it more? Correct. So, can you some other instrument? So it is a lot better, but still I had to do some more release at the 6 o'clock. I'm not happy. So I'll go up to 7 o'clock. Sometimes uh, I need the elevator again. So with this massive lesion, the posterior labrum and uh, the biceps anchor, are they okay? Yeah, biceps is okay. Posterior labrum is okay. So I'm trying to see the subscap muscle. Lot of bleeding. So I'm going a bit slowly here because we don't have. A, uh, actually, I think uh, I used to use pump. I think pump is better when you use bank card, but some of the many, many guys use uh, just gravity assisted for the bank card repair also. So I'm not used to it, but uh, we'll see. I'll go a bit slowly and try to release as much as I can and try to mobilize as much as I can. So almost I've done that. Call this. Can I give you the grasper, tissue grasper, and see the mobilization again? Well, the bleeding, uh, you can use wand, sir. Yeah, but it is, uh, it's overall oozing everywhere. Yeah. It's 
not in blame. one place. In, in general, in Bangkok, there won't, be, there won't be any bleeder. The bleeder usually comes from the subscap muscle when you go down right. and completely separate it. You go down the muscle, then when you elevate the muscle, naturally you'll have bleeding. Now he was suture retriever. Now looks better, you can see. Yes, sir. Already it's at the glenoid level. <coughs> okay. So I'm doing slowly because of the bleeding. Any special precaution you take when you are dealing with ALSA or simple bank card? No, the, the uh, most important uh, thing is this, when you have ALSA, it's very important that the release is the most important thing. So if you don't release it, it will not come at all. So the simple bank card, we don't need to worry, you don't need to disturb too many things, just you can clear that uh, bone and uh, do the, give me the rasp again. Rasp, please. So. You can see the medial uh, glenoid right. and also you can see the labrum well, but uh, just I am using the rasp, so just to make sure that some more biology, can you hammer it with a small mallet? Uh, go ahead, Vira. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes. This, go ahead, go ahead. This will also help you to some more releases also if it is down, if there is some stickiness. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. So it's going freely. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So whenever the rasp also goes freely, that means you have done uh, enough uh, elevator, en elevation. Can you give me the suture retriever again? Like this. Probably it's a very decent dislocation. Otherwise, it will not bleed, bleed like this. But then mobilization should be easier. Yeah, yeah. You can see that already we got it. It's not a big retraction. Mobilization, I'm not worried about the mobilization. I'm worried about the bleeding. So that your visualization should be good, no? Right. That is very important. Right. Before you go, go on with the anchor. Take the elevator again. Okay, so I think it's fine for me. Most of the releases which I could do, and even this is a, you can see up to two o'clock. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you can see that completely is going freely. I couldn't show the uh, subscap sub sub muscle because of the bleeding. Bleeding. Otherwise, you can easily see the subscap muscle. Maybe I can wait and show. Can you what? see that? Uh, that's the end point of release. Yeah. You can see now, entire medial uh, glenoid. Correct. And the, the down to my rasp is the uh, subscap muscle. Unfortunately, because of the bleeding, I couldn't, uh, it is oozing everywhere. It's not in one place. You can see that there's a two o'clock position. Glenoid is very much visible. Now it is better. Can you see now? Yes, sir. Okay, it's better now. Better. So, I, I think I can go ahead with the anchor. Come out. What do we have? A double loaded anchor? Do you have a double loaded anchor? Or? We have uh, 44 aspect, double loaded Double loaded will not work. We have 1.8. 1.8? Yes, we can use a double loaded? Yes, yes. Huh? Okay. So usually I use a double loaded anchor for my inferior one. So okay. what? what is the most inferior point you will be selecting in uh, this case? Around 5.5, 5.530. So that is the, generally I, use, I go for 5.30. So that I can take uh, right around 6 o'clock one and 7 o'clock one, so that you can cover the entire antro inferior. Can you support here? And a little bit of it like this. Yes. Can you give the. Yeah. Sleep? 
Yeah, you better. Can you can govern this? Yes. So, this is the Sronix uh, all inside anchor. Okay. So, I am going in the. Can you mail it a bit? Is that a cartilage uh, flap there? Sorry? Just, just at the entry of anchor, is there a cartilage flap or what? I mean, it's not very nicely visible. That is a small cartilage flap, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So, what is the choice of sutured anchor? Your choice? Uh, I use always double loader. I use both uh, uh, so peak screw or sometimes I use all inside also. Both, uh, both work well. Now, all inside we started to use more in the bank card, yes, B bank card also. Can you delete? So here we are using the all inside uh, ceramics. Is it ready? Yeah. That all suture anchor is about 1.8 mm dia or 1.5? This is 1.8 double loaded. Going? Okay. No, no, it is not going well. No, it is not going. No, I think we have tightened the, tighten it, it's not going well. You can see the good end on view, so that is the advantage of seeing through the antro superior portal. Correct, sir. So many people use uh, from posterior portal also, it's not working, please take it out. Still we are struggling with the uh, mallet it again, it has come out. Mallet the cannula. Mallet. So the most important step when you do this kind of uh, all inside, the cannula can should go inside slightly, otherwise uh, the possibility of, yeah. Yeah, one more. Here you have a mark also, I don't know this. Is it working now? Drill, drill, drill. Just check, check, check. No, it's not working. Do you have some other gun? So, okay. Okay. The drill is not working. Put in the reamer and do it. One minute. Yeah, go. Okay, gone off. Take it out. Oh my God. Take it, take it. Mm. Careful. So the most important when you do all inside, the possibility that if the direction is not okay, it cannot, it can come out. Go slowly. See so we are pointing slowly. distally slowly. and medially. Slowly, slowly, slowly. slowly. <coughs> Sorry? We are pointing distally and medially. gone inside, hope it works well, don't blame me, it doesn't work. Hold the cannula, Vira, hold the cannula, it's you, you are uh, in charge of that. It's okay, hold this. Okay, okay. You can see that? Yeah, pull out is good. Pull out is good, it's and, working well. And, and railroad? Can you give me the switching rod again? Sir, is, sir, is it a curved drill guide or a straight drill guide? Sorry? Is it a curved drill guide you use, use for the inferior anchor or the straight uh, drill straight. guide? I use the straight. Straight. Okay. They have the curved one also, I mean the flexible uh, also. Can you use the cannula again? 6.5 six cannula, make it faster. 6.5 cannula with it. So this is a tip, uh, this is a typical step. You have got the anchor in the most distal aspect, and now you are, I think, retrieving from the posterior one. Yes, I'm going to retrieve it from the posterior. Hold this, hold this. With the bite in the most inferior and probably some posterior part also. Take it out. So my 
my plan is to do a, a postal lateral portal. That is what I generally I use uh, when, you, when I use a double loader. Yeah, put the candela. So I took out the candela before for the rimply search. So I am putting back, hold that, uh, for my shuttling of the threads, take it out. So I need this for my shuttling, okay? Yes, sir. Can you give me the needle again? So, these are needle, needle the please. So it's, it's, it's a nice view of sutures which are placed in the uh, Ramblesa, uh, the Hillsax lesion for Ramblesa, and we have Quenla going down separately for retrieval of sutures. So I'm using the postal lateral portal. Can right. you see here? Yes, sir. Lawn blade. Don't take it off. I think. Lawn blade. You have the lasso. Right and left. Whatever it is. This is the which, uh, which side? Uh, left side. I need a right one. Switch retriever first. Can you lift the head, please? Garo. Yes. So I'm going to leave the one thread. I take first step for the three. So I part the three threads on the posterior anchor, posterior portal. Can you see that? Yes, sir. So I'm leaving one here, so everything is black, so I'm going to get confused. Is 25 or 45? Like I need 25. 25, uh, right side. So we have uh, a tiger uh, suture and we have a black suture as well. <laughs> because all from the same company. So you can see that Rempli Surge also black. These threads are also same color. Better goes with different companies. So that you should, you will not get confused. You guys have a, even less or some other company is fine. We are waiting for, I am looking for a 25 degree. I don't use 45 degree often. So that's why I'm taking, trying to take bite at uh, first bite. Usually I take at seven o'clock through the postal lateral portal. Then I take the inferior bite. Can you bring? All 25 only. I'm sorry. I'm going to. I'm, we are going a bit slow. So meanwhile, coming to the hill sacks, yeah. uh, do you always put uh, the uh, uh, rampless edge? Moving, moving, moving. If it is visible, in, uh, yeah, yeah. do you always uh, put or you sometimes leave hill sacks also? If, if it is very, very superficial and uh, very small, I will leave it. Anything which has got a depth, usually I think that, that requires the uh, uh, rampless edge. Second thing is, and we know that after doing Repli search, our uh, the revision rates are better. It's not going. So we have the lasso in 25 degree from the postal lateral portal. Yes, yes, correct. But it's not moving. Okay, okay. Take it out. Take it out a bit. Any tips to increase that space and visibility? Lift it up. Lift the femoral, uh, femoral head. Your job is. Yes, now it's better.
go inside some more. Because You're trying to take the bite from 6 o'clock position, 7 o'clock position or little anteriorly? I'm taking from 7 o'clock position. Do you have a lasso? Do you have a lasso with you? Arthrax lasso? Yes. Is Arthrax only? But where is the 9 tall wire? black one. So the first bite I took it from the 7 o'clock position. Yes sir. So I am taking this, by, um, that we have a two threads here, one is the white, another is the black. I think when you cut tiger, one is the black one. No, no, please put the black one. I told mm -hmm. black one. One is white and another, another is more black. Huh? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Tiger. Yeah, tiger, huh? the, the same thread which we have here. Both are here? Black. Only one, no? Huh? Oh, okay, okay, one minute, one minute. Then we'll leave it. Wait. Sorry, I thought it's come. Pull the wire, pull the both blacks. Or else put the tiger on. Put the tiger on. This is the tiger? Hmm? Less or loop, okay. Here there are two threads or three threads? Okay, one minute, one minute. It's hmm? okay, I'll take that uh, black one, okay? It's not come out, that's the problem. Call that black one. Yeah. Okay. Put it back again. Can you give me the lesson again? Put the wire and give it. Put the wire and You have to lift it up on shore when I take this bite. Huh? Because the clarity is not very good. I try to... Is it lesson? Is it an intel wire? We are going a bit slow. Sorry about it. Okay. I'm coming back again through the posterior po postolateral portal because that uh, bite was not sufficient. Yes. Right. And then the wire has come out. Right. You can see one. Wait, 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 wait. Why it's not moving freely? Really? Usually you'll be able to see clearly here the, because traction is very good, only the picture is not very clear. You can see that now. You are uh, supposed to hold the candle on. Yeah. Then I've put that black one. Hold the candle. Yes. So I'm shuttling that black thread. Posteriorly. Posteriorly. Postolaterally. Right. 
call this I think this is the only suture double loaded you will be using. Sorry? This is the only suture double loaded you will be using. One from posterior and another from anterior. Got it. Tight. I'm just parking this also in the same post lateral portal Great. so that it doesn't uh, come in the uh, problem uh, with the, it doesn't mix up with this. Leave it. Yeah. Leave it again. Hold this. Hold this. Leave it. Okay. Now we are ready for the anterior bite. Okay. Yes, sir. Hold this. Don't leave it. So the black one are for the posterior bite uh, has been taken and anterior bite is from the tiger wire. Correct. Problem is if you the when you slow it naturally the tissues are getting more swollen. Swollen. That is the problem will come in the whenever you do the labrum. So now you can see the labrum there. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So I'm going to take bite. Now I'm using the this is the left hand. I'm using the this is the left side, no? Left side less. Hope you are lifting up. Uh, Dr. Sundar, good morning. Should be here. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sundar, good morning. Dr. Siddharth here. Hi. Uh, so, just wanted to ask any specific advantage of 25 degrees over 45 degrees you have, uh, you feel like you specifically uh, waited for 25 degree. He has been using that. No, I am using uh, because we are taking two bites. Okay. Uh, so, I am taking another bite from 7 o'clock also. So, I do not need to take uh, such a deep bite. Hold this. Okay. Hold the cannula, please. Hold the cannula. Hold the cannula. So, it, uh, and also, uh, this, uh, for taking the 45 degrees always it's a bit uh, troublesome. I feel that. Uh, huh? Take it, take it. So always, I feel that 25 is better than the. Oh my God. Huh. Okay, you are going to see some drama. Lift it up and hold it like this. Yeah. I need a suture. Uh, Okay. Suture retriever. Wait, wait, wait. Why so much tangling is there? Oh my God. I don't think I can come out of this today. <laughs> 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 huh? I don't know. Why is there so much? Oh. Your black wires are parked in posterior, posterior portal. Yeah, yeah. These, these two actually, that's why I kept it separately, separately. you know what I mean? Yes, yes, we'll uh, see. These two are actually not in the 
trajectory, the same trajectory. Pull the wire, pull the, not in the trajectory at all. That's why I made the candela a bit free. Pull that, pull that wire only. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. But I used to take a candela, can can withdraw the candela slightly. One minute, don't do anything. I'm on the way. If I take all those things, you have to give me a separate award. So you are about to solve that. Yes. I will do that, no problem. Challenge today for me. Yes. Pull the pull both. Pull 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 yours. Oh, wait wait wait. One more. One more. One more. Almost solved. The yes. maze is almost solved. Yes. Today is my lucky day. Okay, pull it now. Okay. Pull the white. Pull the both the black there up. No problem. Pull the both blacks up. No, no, this thread is up. Up. Yeah. So that okay. that that black wire is tangling. If no. you can see, there, there, there. No, that will not cause any issue. Right. Hold the candle. Right. Somebody right. can shoot. Hold the candle all the time. Okay. Okay. Hold this. Okay. That's a lucky escape for me. Yes, sir. I, I thought I had put on a new anchor <coughs> because I was supposed to put a new anchor for this. Somebody has to hold the candle. Vira, your job is to hold the candle. Here, 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 in the tip, yes. Somebody should hold the uh, scope for me to lift it up. So, yeah. Can you see now? We can see, sir. You can see the nice bite there. Right. And uh, somebody has to hold the scope there. Can you connect the camera a little bit back? Camera? No, no, this, this one. So the message is you should use two different company's anchors. That is very important. Can you, somebody can hold the scope? Come no confusing colors. You can see the two bites now. One we is can at see. seven o'clock. One is at uh, six o'clock. Six o'clock. The six o'clock will bring the uh, labrum to the five thirty position. Okay. Hold Correct. This. Can you show the properly? Yeah, like this. No, no. Lift the. Uh, yeah, connect it. Correct. Beauty. Can you hold it like that for some time? Yes. Thank you. So you can see that is my post. You see the nicely labrum coming there. This is from the anchor. This is from labrum. If you have doubt, always you can use the knot pusher. Make sure that you are putting, going in the, taking the right one to the post so that your knot will go onto the lateral side. I'm not pushing. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Don't go inside. Yeah. Not push her, please. Can you can you put somebody light? Okay, it's okay. I got it. You can see the nice bump is getting created there. Right, sir. Don't do anything. Please keep it in the same position for some time. So changing my post. Can you put on the light? is poor. What cutter you have? Suture cutter? So these two steps are very, very important. The first anchor is the most important thing. 
So, see that can you hold it for some time yes cut it thank you now i will suture this one through through my posterior portal itself suture retriever please can you give a suture retriever can you switch all the lights please suture retriever thank you I'll leave the leave the traction for some time can you switch all the lights please what the light ban kar de light ban kar de sir you have uh, fixed the 6 o'clock uh suture can like one slightly withdraw the candle yeah it's fine fine I'll leave the traction okay. did you leave the uh can you slightly withdraw the candle yes correct correct thank you very much now can you hold this keep it there leave it can you lift the head please yeah can you hold the scope like this same position Come, Mira, come this side. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Okay, you can see that. Sir, this seven o'clock position. Hold this, come this side. Hold this. Yeah, this is seven o'clock position. Sir, so you have first fixed the six o'clock, then seven. Yeah, because I want the shift to be done from six o'clock to to five thirty position. Then the remaining seven o'clock position, whatever we have, I want to tighten it up. So the most, uh, I feel that that intro inferior. your capsular labral bites are very very important okay sir so the bite is not from 6 o'clock the first one if you see okay that doesn't require any uh, shift from 7 o'clock the mm -hmm. shift mostly happens from 6 o'clock to 5 o'clock or 5:30 you know what i mean yes so sir so this is what because we are separated up to 7 o'clock and uh, i tighten that remaining 7 o'clock uh, position with this uh, anchor so create a good pump bump over there any tips to avoid the axillary nerve in the 7 o'clock uh, suture passage yeah if you go very deep down up to uh, 10 mm or 12 mm is safer for you unless you taking blindly if you go down with 45 degree then that is a risky that's why you can see i uh, you see that i don't use the 45 because it can go slightly more deeper than 25 can you switch on the light or somebody okay. can put i am very poor with that uh, my eye vision <laughs> thank you so when you make these two bites at 7 o'clock and 6 o'clock uh, position cut up can you come that cut come this elvira so you can see now this from 7 o'clock to 6 o'clock so we have a good okay. bumper down inferiorly so i am going to move the next anchor for single loaded anchors here after so this is the most important step shit you can see already the head is in almost in the center uh, the whatever the anteriorly subluxed head has come to the center can you see that yes sir so i am going to put next single loaded anchor can you make it faster thank you so i will make one or two extra and uh, finish the job Yes, Malik. Thank you. It's around four o'clock. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Is it going inside? Nah, go, go. So how many anchors you are planning to fix? So I will see that after this, uh, because already I have taken the two bites. I'll take one more. Uh, uh, usually I try to go for at least three. We'll see after this next bite. suppose if i come 
superior to sub sub subscribe, then I may leave it with this. Otherwise, I may need to put one more anchor. Okay, good. You can see that uh, so we are using only all inside here. Call the candle, somebody. Yeah. He wants to confirm by pulling the glean eye. Okay, that's good. So working well. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Suture retriever. So I'm taking uh, one thread down to the posterior portal. Can you give me the 25 lasso, please? Lasso, left-sided. So we are using the left side. This is the left hand. I'm using the left-sided. Okay. If anything which you work from the posterior, usually work the you do the you use the opposite one. Like a writer. Pull, pull this thread. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Can you see that? Bye. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Suchi retriever. And uh, somebody can. Retriever, pull it, pull it, pull it. Not come. Okay. Okay, I'm ready to tie it up, tie it up. Come this side. So already I'm just in front of the subscap. It's a very small green eye, that's what I told before. Can you do that? Can you hold the scope? Thank you very much. Yeah, you can see that my candle, you can see my candle. You're going too close. No, just hold it like this. Huh? Okay. Just I'm in front of the subscap. No, no, hold it like this, please. So this is my labrum. This is in the anchor. Okay. Almost I. Once I finish this knot, then we'll reassess again. Then if it is no place for put anchor, then I just go for a simply search push tightening. Push no, no, just hold it. Like okay. Hold it like this, please. Not push it. My light on. Scopey, scopey. Maybe extra another five minutes, I'll finish the job. You can see that is a subscap, okay? Yes, sir. There is no place to put further anchor over there. Cut. Thank you very much. So that thread is slightly little longer. It was cut a little longer. You can see that it's uh, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Yeah. So you can see from seven o'clock. To this 4 or 4, 4 30, this is the subscap. And right. there is no tissues over there. We know you cannot do anything further. Leave it out. Now I'll go ahead with the remplissage tightening. Somebody can hold the scope. And I want to show with the both, both the hands. 
Okay. Somebody can hold it like this. Yes. Check the artery. Not push already. Can see that? We can see that. You can see the closing of the ripple surge here. Lights on. Sorry, I cannot see. <laughs> Thank you very much. Because of my poor vision. You are going too close. Yeah. Just hold, show it like this. Okay? You can see the how nicely that tissue is yep. getting closed. Don't yep. take out the scope off, please. The recess is obliterated now. This is why you like the Rumpley surge well, isn't it? So it gives you uh, another support from the posterior side until the, your labrum heals. Your, your head doesn't go and press the head often so that uh, it allows the, it heal. Eventually, when you do a lot of axial rotation, it may get stretched out a bit, but still it works very well. That's why we like the ample surge. So while tightening the ample surge sutures, do you externally rotate or not? Okay, I've done the one, then I'm doing the another one. Are you rotating the arm also or just it is uh, through that only? Sorry? Uh, we are not rotating the arm. No, no, I'm not rotating the arm. See that nice coverage now? Correct, sir. Just another two minutes, I will finish off. Are you able to see the outside view also? Can you see the outside view? Hello? Yes. Okay. We Sundar. can see the outside view. Dr. Sundar? Hello? Uh, Dr. Yes. Sundar, how do you miss the, uh, how do you tie the knots? Blind in the subacromal space or you like to visualize them? No, I don't visualize. I just blindly stitch it back. We never had any issues. If you have any issue, sometimes you can have some puckering, which you can put an artery forces and release it. Uh, what about the deltoid? How do you miss the deltoid? Between Sorry? The, how do you avoid the deltoid muscle getting entrapped between the sutures? That's why when you deltoid gets the thing, you can you see the puckering. So when yeah. you deltoid gets thing inside, suppose if you are getting caught between your threads are not going in through the same spot, same hole which you are uh, trying to do it. If it goes, uh, if it rounds around the deltoid, then there's possibility that you can have the puckering. Yeah. The skin will go inside. It's easily you can identify it. Generally, it doesn't happen. So you can see the nice Rempley surge cover. You are not able to see the hill sucks at all. Okay? You we see the head is nicely centrally so covered here. We are not seeing the inside picture. You are not seeing the inside picture? Now, now the in inside picture is visible. And can you see now? Yes. So this is where the hill sucks. Yes, we can see the inside. You are not doing anything. You can see the nice infraspinatus coverage. That's just simple parasite technique which can cover the... This, this hill sucks is not too big. If it's very big, you can use a two anchors. Here, that one anchor with the double loaded with the parasite technique is very, very, very much enough. And you can see the head is already in the posterior now, almost. You can the head is, and uh, you can see that uh, that is from seven o'clock to six o'clock and the four o'clock. It's a small glean out. I told you the, this is the subscap, and you can see the that is the anterior cannula. So you, you cannot put any other tissues here uh, repair to repair it here. So this is your uh, free space for your external rotation to become free. Any, anything else? I think it's over. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can you cut, cut it up? We are switching to the next uh, OT. Dr. Deepak Joshi is ready with his surgery.
just give us uh, one minute. So we are having our fourth live surgery, lethargy uh, procedure by Dr. Deepak Joshi. In a while, just we are switching over to that that area. Rajkumar sir, sir would you demonstrate this RK sign that you have 
published recently. R. K. Sangya. Now, on me or maybe some other, some other person. Deepak yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Deepak sir, am I audible there in OT? You are not audible. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, now. Welcome, yeah, sir. I'm just connected. Okay, okay. So you know the history of this patient. They have presented the slides to you. You will present or I'll speak. <laughs> Maybe in some other time, Rajkumar sir. In between the session, we will have demonstration. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, I am talking to whom? Abhishek. Abhishek from. Abhishek. So this is a case. You can see he is focusing on the CT scan. So your scan. your voice is little low. Can. Voice is okay. little bit higher. My. My volume is low. So am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, please. So he is a 17-year-old boxer. He is a okay. budding boxer. So he has dislocated his shoulder multiple times in last two or three years. And uh, if you quickly look at the CT scan, if you are looking at the CT scan where they are focus focusing, so you focus there. So he has approximately 23 percent of the Inward bone loss anteriorly, you can very well appreciate on the CT scan picture. So, there are two things why we are doing lethargy in this patient. One is the bone loss, 20% is the margin that we take. Above 20%, everything lethargy below uh, around 18 to 20 uh, percent bone loss in a heavy, basically, activity person like a thrower or a person who is into the sports. We go for lethargy, otherwise the watershed mark we keep 20 millimeters, so 20, to, sorry 20 percent, more less than 20 percent we go for soft tissue bank heart and lethargy, moment it is more than 20 percent we go for lethargy. Dr. Joshi, we want to see the CT cuts. Yeah, yeah, we are trying to show that only. Can you see? No, still not. No, no. So he's trying to show. Can you see now? Still, we are not able to see. No, it's not being transmitted there. Kindly see, kindly look. Can you see now? Abhi dikh hai? Yes, sir, dikh hai. So, ab dekho, you can see the loss here, quite a bit loss anteriorly, and they have calculated it, so it's approximately 23 percent, okay? Okay. So, by the circle method, they have measured. So, mm -hmm. that's why he is also a sportsman, so that's why we go for lethargy in this case. Very well. Okay? Okay, sir. So if you focus now at the surgical site, I have just done the dissection. So I have given a relatively little bit, little bit bigger incision. So otherwise with a two or three finger incision, generally we are able to do the let, most of the surgeries, except when the patient is muscular. So if you look at this skin, so, so that's the clavicle here. The coracoid was marked somewhere here. Can you see the surgical site? Yes, sir. So I gave an incision at the medial border of the coracoid. So this is the modification that I use because I believe reaching the glenoid neck is more easy if we just give only the skin incision. Basically, it's just at the medial tip of the coracoid that we have marked. Okay. Okay. So then this is the how I went into the delto pectoral groove. 
So pectoral iris on this side. This is pectoral iris, and that's the deltoid here. We just need a little bit of finger and artery dissection to reach the coracoid. Can you see the coracoid here? Can you notice coracoid here? That's a coracoid. Sir, actually, we are not seeing the good view. The camera person, please focus on the incision so site and. Yes, sir. Now, now we are seeing. That's the tip of the coracoid. That's the conjoint tendon here. Okay. That's the pectoralis minor on the medial side. And if Abhishek retract a bit, can you see? So the light or dali. The light dali. Ye wali hamari. This is the C A ligament laterally. I don't know whether you are able to see because it's always a deep surgery. Can you can you can you see this is the C A ligament this side here? Abhishek, can you see? Yes, sir. So that's the C A ligament. Can you see the by white structure here? Sir, actually not because it's a bloody field and probably the camera pointing towards, yeah, now. No. I think camera should focus towards the right side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think camera should focus from the medial side so that we can yeah, see them. Okay. My artery is at CA ligament. Can you imagine? Notice this thing. Uh, camera person, can can you switch both the views? You have two views, na? Make the other one bigger. Ek bada karo, tum bada karo. Jo beta chota view dikha rahe ho, satellite wala, bada kar do usko. Camera guy. Yes. Ek view ko bada dikhao. Yes, bet. So yes, this is the CA ligament here. My artery. So that's the conjoint tendon, white shining. Yes. Better. That's the pectoral iris minor, medial border, and that's the coracoid here. Better visible. Okay. So first I'll release the pectoral iris minor. I hold the pectoral iris minor tendon like this. So I am on the bone because all my plexus and everything is here medial, okay? So I have to be very, very careful. So I start releasing the pectoral iris minor first. Okay, so the pectoral minor is released, so I take a periosteum from medial side. So I am using a Smith and Hatu system here. So the Abhishek, this retractor little loose, yeah. and this little hard. So now I Take a CA ligament, take a part of CA ligament with the coracoid. Cut the CA ligament little about one centimeter distally. Okay. So that if if I get a chance, then I can repair it with a capsule. Okay. Okay. So the lateral release has been done. So now I take a coracoid retractor do. और एक लीवर देना मुझे नहीं बेटे कोरा कोल्ड रिटेक्टर दो तो दैट से यू कैन सी दिस इज अ 90 डिग्री एंगल कोरा कोल्ड रिटेक्टर दिस इज अ स्मिथ एंड एटू सिस्टम सो आई प्लेस इट एट द बेस ऑफ द कोरा कोल्ड मीडियली सो दिस इज गोइंग टू प्रोटेक्ट माय 
all the vessels and everything, all the plexus on medial side. Okay, so it's an open surgery, a little bit of bleeding would be there, here and there. And I take a liver, liver de do, sister, or saw ready rakna. Pele scale ready rakna. So, my sister, wo wala do, spike wala do, my nabo saw wala bataya da na. So, I take it laterally and give it to be shake here. So, that's how I have a fold. And this is at the medial side of the thoracoid. So when I put a saw, it is not going to go into the plexus here. Okay? Can you see this retractor? Yes, sir. We, we can see. So take a, give me a scale. So thoracoid has to be minimum 20 millimeters. Okay? A length. That's the tip here, and with the artery, I mark the 20 millimeter. So minimum we take that it should length of the coracoid should be at least 20 millimeter. I go more. I think the camera person, जो पहला वाला view था वो ज़्यादा अच्छा था. So I take a saw now. So that's the mark on the 20 millimeter here. So I have to cut from here. So it should be more than that. Okay. Give me a saw. Suction. So I needed a saw, smaller saw, but it's a bigger. So then that fixed into the groove of this retractor. So I cut from medial to lateral. Sony Jalra. Saw is not working. Sir, you use straight saw or uh, 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 angled one? No, this is not an angle saw, it's a standard straight saw. Okay. So if you have an angle saw, you can cut from superior to mm -hmm. inferior. From, but I am cutting from medial to lateral and the saw is not working at all. So it's working out but it's not working at all, it's just not cutting. I'm so sorry. important the plexus is there and the saw is not working. So ideally we should have a saw but the saw is not since it is not working. I use an ostracon which is not the ideal thing to do when you are cutting the cut because you may fracture the cut so, copper they don't. So, I have cut the coracoid medial to lateral, protecting the plexus. Copper, you have to say, though. Put the coconut of now, grabber they don't. So, my brother, grabber, I. 
इंस्टेंट हेड में हाँ ये दो अब काम हो गया साफ There's a coha quite coming. So that's it. Simple surface. Can somebody do? Yes, put short. Do suction. Do it. Yes, put short. Do it. Suction. Do not retract. Do it. Put it. Add. Do it. So I'll do a little bit of release. Any questions? Just now you are just releasing the uh, soft tissues over the coracoid, no? What is the question? What is the question? Yeah, what is the question? You are just clearing the coracoid with the sling. Cleaning the paracoid and just mobilizing it a bit. Okay. So I am. This is the inferior surface. Okay. Okay. Or even this. Okay. That's the, you can see, that's the now, is the coracoid and that's the conjoint tendon. Can you see? Yes, sir. So, let's give me the coracoid holder now. Somebody hold on. So, that's the coracoid holder, you can see. So that's a mark for the drill here. You will see how it is drilled. This is one of the new mechanical system that we are having here. So I asked someone to hold for me. Hold the product part. Product part, thoda uthana. Intro posterior jo tha, uthana. No, mujhe do. So much of camera around me, I am sorry. Now hold this and give me the retractor. Oh, coracoid holder. So you can see I have, this is the coracoid holder. This is how I have held the coracoid. That's the inferior surface. Good morning, Dr. Joshi. Dr. Kedi the party here. Hello, boss. How are you? Fine, fine. Thank you. Uh, just uh, tell the orientation of the surfaces. Uh, which surface you are? So that's the upper surface. Okay. Mm -hmm. Inferior. Okay. Yeah. That's the inferior one, or you can say medial. Okay. Okay. So. So I cut the, I have the 
if i look if the sir it is like it was like this okay toracoid was like this okay so i i had cut the pectoralis minor from here and this is laterally i cut the ca ligament so i am just trying to clean the concave surface okay okay lao the saw do agar karta hai kaam to do what is the minimum length 20 mm is the minimum length that i had marked okay so it is almost at the base of the coracoid so pakad lo so pakad lo so i am trying to flatten it yeah no the saw is not that great it is not cutting at all nebular de do So do you say just uh, make it flat or uh, let it be a little bit concave? I am making it little bit flat. Okay. I am just contouring it so that. And the other thing I am want to just debride little bit of cortex so that I have a bony union. I'm sorry, this is relatively, I think. I'm not getting the saw. This is also more important thing that I should have. I had told these guys that I need a saw, good saw, which I think. Can you use burr to just? The best thing they it. probably could have managed. No, I should not be doing this. I should not be doing this. can see this system has this jig okay that is for drilling holes That's the bone here. That's the end bone. We have a tissue after this. Okay, so that is the maximum that we can go. Can you see? This is the marks for the drill. This is uh, this is at the edge of this. These are three marks. One is this. This is at the edge of the just five millimeter beyond the edge of the coracoid muscle tip and muscle junction. Okay. 
this is 10 millimeter behind so we have a 10 millimeter uh, distance between the two screws this is 15 millimeter hole so if we have a larger coracoid we can drill around 15 millimeter okay can you see yes sir we, we can very well see So two holes in the bone are drilled with a 2.7 millimeter drill bit, okay? And then I mark with a cautery both the holes. If you have saw, then give me the saw, please. So, very important, we need to have a good union. Can you see, I have just flattened the coracoid. Yes, sir. It is flat yes. now. And we expose little bit decorticate because there that is what we will have we want a bone to bone union okay so we leave the coracoid now and we give me a retractor we go for the subcast plate now okay okay so i retract again and give me self retaining self retaining external rotation at this part and can you see this muscle here i think the camera person should zoom under dekha under dikh raha hai external rotate karo bete so that's the muscle here can you see this yes sir there's the upper end yeah there's the lower end okay there's the muscle and we have a head here okay so i will do a split in the middle here ओके थोड़ा कैमरा पीछे करना पड़ेगा मुझे दिखाई नहीं दे रहा। So I will do the split in the middle. I will go, I will do the split at the in the muscle belly. Okay, not at the tendon. Then I can go slowly, laterally. I can feel the head here and the glenoid here. So give me Fukuda. I go the Fukuda. Somebody has to I think give me a little time. Oh, this is the part you won't be able to see. Because camera cannot come. So there's a head there down. A camera person medial side is a view the so that Yahan's hand or was a bar. 
हाँ इनको इसको जूम कर दीजिए बिल्कुल बिल्कुल सर Yes, sir. So yeah, Fukuda. This has a light in it. You can see that's a light cable. We can attach a light cable onto it. This is the under wall. Where is it? Under wall. Where is it? नहीं दिख रहा सर। Can you see this thing inside? No, no. I think कुछ थोड़ा एंगल चेंज करना पड़ेगा। So that's the head. The line दे दो। दूसरी दूसरी तरफ से दिखना पड़ेगा, because we're not seeing inside. So that's a very good system. सर अंदर नहीं दिख रहा है इधर ये वाला कैमरा है तुम्हारा नहीं आएगा अंदर ये आएगा अंदर दूसरा वाला हाँ ये वाला अंदर आएगा पार्टी देना तो डेट्स डी हेड डेट्स डी ग्लिन वाइड है जो दूसरा वाला व्यू है उसको बड़ा कर दीजिए I'm just cleaning the glenoid a bit. We are on. Glenoid neck. So, Abhi. Now you can to see both the things. Can you see inside? ये छोटा वाला पिक्चर हटा दीजिए कैमरामैन ये वाला बड़ा दिखाओ सेक्शन दे दो सो यू कैन सी वी हैव ए लाइट सोर्स अटैच्ड ऑन टू दिस रुकुडा रिएक्टर वेरी गुड वेरी हैंडी हेयर ऑल द लाइट इज बीइंग फोकस्ड ऑन टू द ग्लिनोइड व्हिच आई यूज्ड टू हैव प्रॉब्लम्स 
And this is the glenoid here. Mm -hmm. You can see if I can touch, that's the glenoid. Eye. Show me the, give me the small artery. Can you see the entire glenoid neck? This is the glenoid here. Okay. That's the head. That's the glenoid. Line there though. Let me wash it and show you. Can you see the glenoid here now? Yes, sir. Marginally, we see. So you can see that's the glenoid neck. So give me some artery there, though. This glenoid here. This is the neck, entire neck. That's the head. That's the head here. That's the glenoid surface. Okay. That's inferior six o'clock. That's the subsequent attaches here. That's three o'clock. So we have to attach our coracoid here. Okay. Actually, sir, we are not having the proper view. I think again from the lateral side we need to see because if we want to see the glenoid. Sir, वो इधर से दिख नहीं रहा है पूरा. Glenoid दिखाओ, इधर से दिखाओ. ये वाले से दिखाओ. Okay, somebody will come and show you the glenoid. अभी ठीक है सर बिल्कुल दिख रही है जी दिख रही है ये दिस इज़ द नेक ऑफ़ द ग्लिनोइड दिस इज़ नॉट द ग्लिनोइड दैट सरफेस दैट्स द नेक सो आई एम लिटिल आई मेड एन इंसिजन लिटिल मीडियल टू द कॉर्कोइड so that I reach the neck end on. I have to just attach the coracoid here. So that's the head and I externally rotate. That's the glenoid surface. Line there though. That's the surface of the glenoid. Can you notice the surface of glenoid? Yes sir. Absolutely. So now we take the coracoid back. Grabber the coracoid, sir. So, now I have to see how much of which offset I have to use. So, the Smith and Nephew have a very beautiful system. So, so, One hole is this, okay? Offset though, coracoid sir. So, this surface, this end will go towards the glenoid, okay? And this will go towards the 
inferiorly okay this will go towards the surface of glenoid so i can check how, how which offset i can use so i put it in the hole here i rotate kitna mm hai ye dekha 7 so that's the offset so this is 8 and this is 7 This is the seven millimeter offset is flush with the coracoid. Can you see? Yes, sir. So, I'm um, seven of millimeter offset use. Sorry, I see. Not going. Light is on. So, you can see a seven millimeter offset here. Sort of section. i put it at the inferior surface of the glenoid like this uh, on the superior surface of the glenoid and i am at around 4 and a half clock position okay thoda bar pakad udhar kar do can you see this is for the inferior screw so this is for the inferior screw give me the drill so i do direct drilling here on the glenoid now mm -hmm. so i go here like this and i go the another contact so i have drilled here okay so now i can have a suction okay double the suction so that's the hole here can you see i mark with the cautery that hole yes sir so now i take a 34 screw so we have a flat screw for the coracoid mm -hmm. you can see this screw follow okay. you can see this screw so it has a flat head it's like a washer here we are not seeing the screw actually can you see ha ah, fine fine so okay it's a flat see, screw it has a flat head like okay. a washer here okay okay it takes okay so we no need to put a washer now i can have a grabber again so i just put the screw in here screw first somebody will help me holding this <laughs> i think i will just give ah uh, seedha pakad lo to kacche pakadna ye hold lock nahi kar raha i think Hold this, so you can see the light. Now screw driver, de do. So I'll put the screw in the inferior hole like this. not able to go you can put a guide wire dusra dana ek aur ye rona ja raha hai isko ja raha hai isme se nahi ja raha abhi ek ek aise nahi ja raha nikalo isko तो निकाल दो
sorry I think I was at little bit of bone at the junction. पतली वाली चलो दे दो भावो दे दो शुरू दे दो So we have a screw going in. Are we still on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I just put a. This is a four millimeter lag screw. So so the all the instruments are very important. So I just threaded it into the paracord and just suction there though. I'll go into the other hole and give me a wash. Where is that? Light level. So I just pour this light. ये light पकड़ो संजीव आके इधर से. धक्का नहीं देना है इसको ना ऐसे पुश पुश करके रखना होता है ये मैं अगर कर करूँ ना यू डोंट हैव टू पुश इट्स नॉट अ लीवर होल दिस सो देयर इज अ होल बिलो इफ यू कैन सी सो हैव टू पुट इन दैट दिस होल करना 
¿no? ¿Qué bar me lees? ¿Qué bar me lees? कोई टॉल क्लिप है पकड़ने के लिए Somebody can clean my sweat. बाहर निकल गए देखना हम टेलीकास्ट हो रहा है हमारा कि नहीं दूसरे रोटी में है टेलीकास्ट हो रहा है हमारा सर आप आपके ही रोटी का देख रहे हैं हम लोग अभी कैन यू सी समाओ है पूर्ण दस क्रू यस सर सॉरी इट इस फ्लैश विद द ग्रीन ऑयल हेयर ओके 
Yes, sir. So I'll just rotate. I I won't tighten it that much. Now I'll put the other screw. Fine. Okay. जी बिल्कुल वो देना मुझे एक कुछ पैरी ऑस्टेन दे दो सो वी नीडेड ए केवर हेयर कैन यू सी नाउ आई हैव ओरिएंटेड इट अलोंग द ग्लिन वायर कैन यू सी अगेन द इनसाइड पिक्चर इज नॉट दैट क्लियर लाइन दे दो समबडी इज देयर वहां पे है समबडी Now it's visible, sir. You're it's going visible. for the second screw. Yeah, fine. So one screw is in. It is not tightened fully. Okay. My finger is flush with the glenoid. Okay. Even I can have someone of you. Abhishek will put his finger. My coracoid is flush with the glenoid here. Uh huh. So what I was lacking was a small K wire. So since I have got it, so what I am going to do is I will just orient it. We can rot still rotate the coracoid. Okay. Mm hmm. So I will just, just to get it flushed. Flush to the glenoid now, and then I drill here through the already created hole, and I will put another screw here. Mm -hmm. Now, just drill there, so it's not covered by this. Ilana, now cover there, so sharp is cover. हेलो सर डॉक्टर इमरान अख्तर हियर सर सर व्हाट शुड बी द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द ड्रिलिंग एंड हाउ टू मेजर द स्क्रू लेंथ या जनरली वी पुट 34 और 36 सैंडर साइज वी कैन हैव अ डेथ गेज टू मेजर द स्क्रू ओके और वी कैन यूज द अदर वायर ऑफ द सेम साइज इसको दिखाना मुझे थोड़ा ऐसे सो आई जस्ट मेक इट फ्लैश एंड देन आई पुट द अदर स्क्रू Anything actually? And sir, direction of the. That is what I feel. Uh, the problem with this uh, thing is uh, in this system. What I feel lacking is the depth gauge is not there. So we should have a depth gauge. I think I'll tell the minister guy. And sir, direction, sir, what should be added? Direction. Direction is always both the two has to be parallel to each other, and it has to be parallel to the surface of the glenoid. Okay. So now I tighten it. So this screw has washers. Uh, it's a washer. I mean to say it is a flat head. We don't need a washer. I tighten the other screw. I tighten the other upper screw. Uh, so it's very tight. I'll just retract and show you inside. देखो light भी अंदर focus कर दो. Can you see here? It's flat. Can you make out the coracoid here sitting under two screws? Yes, sir. So it is flush. Mm. It is flush. You can't see. I just retract a bit. You can see here. You mm -hmm. can see a part of CA ligament that I had protected. Yes, sir. This part. This. Can you see this part? I had cut the CA ligament distally. I will stitch it this to the capsule. Okay. Okay. 
and the function of this thing is the spring effect. You can see I bring the solar part entirely, remove everything, retract, and external air becomes. Adapter there, retractor, normal retractor there. Can you make out this link? So it is in coming in front of the coracoid, uh, in front of the greenoid, internal tape. So the head is not going to dislocate. So just can you have a look? See that? We are off. Hello, Abhishek, can you hear me? We are switching on to the next OT Kataria sir is ready with the surgery okay. and handing over to Manchu sir. Okay, okay. Now we are switching over the next surgery is the ACL reconstruction with flexible reamer. Himanshu Kataria sir will be the demonstrator, he will be showing the surgery. I think he is ready with the tunnels, with the arthroscopic picture, debridement and all. Now he will be starting with the tunnel preparation. वहाँ मैंने दिल्ली में बोला था कि मुझे केबार चाहिए हैं तो तुम्हें वो समझ नहीं आती थी लंबी वाली दे तो जो यूज़ ना करें हेलो जो हम यूज़ ना करें हेलो अभिषेक उधर से उधर आवाज़ आ रही है हेलो अभिषेक क्या नहीं हेयर आ रही आ रही आवाज़ आ रही है हाँ मैं पहले बड़े एक क्लिनिकल हिस्ट्री आवाज़ can you see the video? No, we are not seeing the video, I think. We are seeing the video from the previous OT. Now, now, now it's okay. Now we are at the second OT. Himanshu sir is visible. Himanshu sir, good afternoon. Am I audible there? Am I audible, Abhishek? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, boss. We are at the OT. Himanshu sir is visible. हम उनको देख रहे हैं. Now the cameraman can focus towards the towards the knee side or the Inside picture if we are in the knee. I think Himanshu sir is not uh, hearing us. Sir, yes, I will start. Abhishek, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, sir. We are very much hearing you. Okay, handing over to Himanshu, sir. Yeah, sure. So, good afternoon, Dr. Abhishek. Good afternoon, and, sir. Uh, good afternoon to the organizers, and I thank the organizers for giving us this opportunity to uh, show the uh, flexible reamer system for the ACL reconstruction. Uh, I have here a 58-year-old man uh, who has a history of injury sometime around June, July, uh, which was actually a road traffic accident. The, uh, the clinical examination at that time revealed uh, a significant knee swelling and an acute knee which was not examined uh, in the details but subsequently as we have examined him today and with the MRI which I'll just report to you this patient uh, had a flexion deformity of about 5 degrees uh, he had a knee range of movement of anywhere between 0 to uh, from 5 to about 90 95 degrees he had a Latman positive he had an anterior draw positive the tests for the coronal instability were negative and he had a positive McMurray's test I'll quickly take you uh, through to the uh, MRI picture here so as you can see here, we have the uh, T2 weighted fat saturated images, the sagittal cuts and the coronal cuts. You can see this is an MRI which was done sometime in August 22, 
the significance of the injury, significant bone marrow edema in the tibial plateau, as you can see. One can very clearly see a clear ACL injury. And uh, one can very clearly see that there is an injury to the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. The posterior horn of the medial meniscus, as you can see here, there is an injury to the posterior horn. This is uh, corroborated uh, when we have touched upon the coronal cuts, starting from the medial to the lateral. So that's my medial cut, and I can, uh, that's the medial side. I can clearly see here that there is an injury to the peripheral corner. There is an injury to the peripheral corner here, and there is an injury to the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. The lateral meniscus apparently looks all right. Uh, besides that, the MCL is seen in its full entirety, except a little more anteriorly where we are seeing some, some kind of a grade two changes in the MCL. The LCL apparently and the iliotibial band are fairly all right. Uh, going over to the uh, procedure, we are going to do a, a anatomical ACL reconstruction. And what we are going to be uh, uh, using is the flexible reamer system. The one which we are going to use today is uh, something which we call as the Versatomic by the Stryker company. And uh, I'll just quickly go through some of these instruments. You can see here uh, the offset. These offsets, the peculiar thing is, number one, the color coding. The color code for this, is, uh, this is a 6 mm offset. This is a 7 mm offset. The peculiarity of these offsets, if you notice, they are not straight, they are curved. So the moment they are put on the uh, femoral side, you will notice that the wire tends to not go straight, but tends to go up. So the basic advantage that we get is that you tend to get a slightly larger femoral tunnel without do going in for a deep knee flexion. So this is one thing which is supposed to be more anatomical. Probably if I'm uh, avoiding deep knee flexion and I'm able to get a larger tunnel, somewhere down the line I feel I'm able to prevent a posterior uh, femoral blowout. I'm somehow able to prevent a CPN injury, which is rather rare, but still one of the possible advantages. Uh, the uh, basic thing that is being used in this is this nitinol wire. This nitinol wire is a flexible wire. So the idea is that it can go into this. And the nitinol wire has two colors, you know, you can have, which we'll just show you. There is a, and once we have a color change, then the measurement of the femoral tunnel is through the direct measurement, which is going to be done by using a gauge, a depth gauge, which will be put on the outer femoral cortex. Uh, of course, we have uh, got an awl by which we can actually mark uh, the point at which we want to drill the tunnel. And the uh, interesting thing is that something like the intramedullary nailing of the femur, we have got this flexible reamers. This is a typical 4.5 mm reamer. This is an 8 or a 9 mm reamer. So these flexible reamers will go the way my nitinol wire has go, gone. So they will actually follow the wire and help me in trying to get a larger femoral tunnel. Uh, Dr. Ankit has helped me in uh, preparing a graft. I have a graft which is, uh, I've, I've harvested a, a, a semi-T gracilis graft. This is about uh, 100 mm, yeah, about 100 mm in length and about 9 millimeters in diameter. It's a quadrupled, uh, it, it's a five standard graft. And we are using the uh, shortening loop by the striker, which is the pro -sync system here. We'll be using a hybrid fixation, so we'll be using a, 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 an aperture fixation at the level of the tibia. So I'll quickly now go in for the uh, arthroscopic images. Probe, please. Probe, please. So uh, I have done a quick diagnostic round. There was a little bit of uh, dressing up which needed to be done. Uh, I'm somewhere in the medial uh, uh, articular, uh, medial uh, uh, joint su surface. You can see the medial meniscus here. There was, uh, you can see uh, the fairly intact uh, articular cartilage. There was some injury here to the uh, root area and to the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus, which was a small flap which I have Sir, removed. we are not seeing the just, uh, inside picture right actually. I have a fairly uh, valgus stress piece. I have a fairly uh, stable, In camera, you can see that here. The camera person, please stable, focus over the uh, monitor. Of the lateral meniscus, you can see that. Sorry, camera person, please meniscus. focus over the monitor because we are uh, not seeing the knee inside. Let's just go quickly to the lateral side. So you can see here the lateral meniscus. There are some. Uh, there is some evidence of uh, an old healing tear and a fairly thinned out and a fairly thinned out uh, lateral meniscus. You can see that here. 
some evidence of healing here, but the root of the lateral meniscus, the ramp area seems fairly all right. Uh, we can uh, clearly see the uh, popliteus tendon in, in its entirety posteriorly. So this is as far as the compartments are concerned. Going over to the uh, to the intercondylar notch area, I was expecting in this 15 58 year old gentleman a significant osteophytosis in the notch, but I find that the notch is fairly uh, young for his age. And uh, one can see here the fairly intact PCL. Uh, one can see here nicely appreciate the uh, the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus and how it is actually going under the ACL. So you can see how the ACL actually overlaps the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. And that's the basic uh, premise of a good ACL reconstruction that you are precise in your anatomical locations. So I'm looking at the ACL uh, lateral side, the ACL medial side. This is the point I have picked up for going in for my TBL, uh, for my TBL tunnel. And I've cleared out slightly this area. I've tried to go on here over the top position. I'll be somewhere uh, in the deep and high position, which will be somewhere here, which I'll be using the flexible uh, offset in this scenario. So let's start with the TBL now. a jig which is actually tibial jig which will take on the wire at the level of the shoulder of the jig. So we make sure that we are very clear of the notch. So this is a fairly anatomical position. We'll now go ahead with the Mirko uh, Gochi. We'll go ahead with the uh, TBL tunnel. We have a 9 mm graph, so we'll go with the 9 mm graph protecting the PCL. Counter, counter, the better counter. Do. No, you sit down. Sit down now. Yeah. And sit nicely. Sit nicely. No, sit nicely. It's now you have a very important gear. You're okay? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just, yeah. So I've picked up the over the top position here, uh, going at a fairly high and deep level. And this is my point which I'll be picking up and then marking my point here. 
and I think we'll go ahead with it now. Uh, if I can have, a, can the camera person just focus once on the outside, on the outside of the limb? Uh, so you can see here uh, that so we are seeing the outside. The limb in roughly about 90 degrees of flexion, uh, and uh, there is a small marker here. This marker actually tends to give us an idea that where the wire is likely to come out. So, uh, can the camera person show this marker? We can see that. So, you can see that marker uh, which comes out and gives me an idea that I'll be coming somewhere in the midpoint of the iliotibial band. I'm fairly okay as far as the over the top position is concerned. I may be about a good uh, five to six millimeters anterior to the posterior wall. And uh, can you flex the knee a little more now? Little more. Bus, that's enough. So, we'll go ahead with the drilling now. Uh, Himanshu, Dr. Sundari here. Hello. So uh, we'll try to keep and keep a watch on the color change uh, of this nitinol wire. Himanshu, sir. So that color change actually indicates that we have reached uh, the end point. Himanshu, sir. Am I audible there? Dr. Himanshu. Yes. Himanshu, sir. Am I audible there? Yes, sir. Audible. Dr. Himansu. Dr. Himansu, can yes, you hear us? Around the corner now. I think he is not able to. Yes. So you can see that color change here. You can see that it's so clearly visible, the color change. So we'll go in a little more. We'll go in up to this uh, broad laser mark where number two is there. And I think that's the point. It's a very fairly precise point uh, to measure. And the measurement now is not going to be done intra-articular. The measurement will be uh, at the level of the lateral femoral cortex. We'll give a stab incision. Stab, please. And can I have that measuring device? Please, please. So we can focus outside. Can we focus outside? You can outside. You can see, na. Yeah. Ah. I come. You hold it. I come. So you can see here that uh, we are getting almost about 35 millimeters of the femoral tunnel length. Uh, and the important thing is, please don't focus on 35 millimeters intra-articular. It is 35 millimeters as taken. So you, you try to focus here. You can see that 35. You can see, I, is that visible 35 mm? Actually, actually sorry, it's in a smaller picture. So we cannot appreciate. We, we're not appreciating. So this is a femoral tunnel of 35 millimeters. So accordingly, now we'll go in for fixing our graft. So uh, you can see the typical flexible rima. Amit, this is nine. So the flexible reamer now is going to naturally take the track of this flexible nitinol wire that is inside. So we go now.
just go to about 25, 27. in roughly about 25. It's a wash candle. Okay. Wash candle. Either. Wash candle either is a clock, table cube. Okay. Just to. Yeah. Okay. So we've done it with the 4 mm, uh, 4.5 mm reamer find that when we are using this, uh, doing with the 4.5 is a little helpful in uh, flipping the button, just removing a part of the debris from here. Retriever, please. Just pull it. Let it hang down. Let it hang down. Retriever, please. Graft, please. Don't pull it. Don't pull it. Yeah, that's it. Graft, please. Graft, please. Thoda sa pull kar lo, but just pull it a little. Pull, the, pull both the threads. Pull both the threads. Pull it, bitte. That's it. I'm just trying to see the tunnel through the anterior medial portal. So that's the position of the tunnel through the anterior medial portal. So you can see here very clearly there is adequate uh, posterior wall which is present, posterior wall of the lateral femoral condyle, and that's my tunnel. And uh, it's difficult to say from here, but it's a fairly curvy linear tunnel. It's not a straight tunnel. So I normally try to keep the uh, scope in the anterior and is crossed through. So we've marked the graft according to the length of the tunnel. So we've marked it as 35 and 27. So we'll go up to the point of the button. We'll keep following the button. We have the button inside now. You can see, track the button. And now we've almost crossed it. You can see the mark very clearly. And we find that there is no bungee effect. So we are now ready to shorten the loop. I'll now switch my portals to the anterior lateral portal once again. Graft ko wash karna hai bari. Once again. I will go. You come here. Let me wash the graft. Bring it here. Bring it here. So now we'll check the flip once. Can you just focus on the outside? Graft ko pakar Thoda bit of dila rakhna, halka sa dila, haan. Thoda pull karke. So a very clear flip is palpable. Okay. Okay, now we, now we are ready to shorten the graph now. Hamit aise pakad ke rakhenge. Halka, tight nahi bitte. Hello. Hello. So the 
basic advantage of this flexible reamer system is that when you are looking at obese people who got big thighs, where it is a problem in actually getting deep flexion. As you are all aware, the optimal flexion is around 110 to 120 degrees. So if you are not in a position to get deep flexion, flexible reamers are very useful. And another indication which I find I have uh, realized over a period of time is that when I am looking at partial ACL tears, see the, uh, the anterior medial bundle is lost and the posterior, the anterior medial bundle is intact and the posterior medial, the posterior lateral is uh, broken. In such a scenario, again, uh, you know, putting the flexible reamer at its point, uh, at the point where I just need the anatomical fixation, it works pretty well. As you can see outside now, the, uh, the graft is well seated. Uh, we have a, uh, you know, a toggle which is present at the outside also and uh, that's the graft. So now we'll go ahead with the uh, TBL fixation. Uh, can I just have a probe? Probe, probe. So you can see the uh, fairly robust 9 mm graph in a 58 year old uh, gentleman and uh, I would say a fairly pristine articular cartilage. This is not something which I expected considering the clinical examination of the knee but it's a fairly healthy cartilage that I have. And you can see the relationship of the ACL vis a vis the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, vis a vis the PCL, and vis a vis the typical isosceles triangle which is invariably created here. So uh, I'm now just due for my TBL fixation. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm willing to take that. Otherwise, uh, from my side, the procedure component is more or less finished. Give the stool. Give the stool to me, and you come here. Come here, and here, sit on your Come here. Yes. Either lights will be Amit Nitinol. Do. So, see, my side push. Karto. Yes. Nitinol, sit. And two retractors. Either light, light please, light, light please. please. Light on the beauty is the Hold the cockers also tightly, yeah. And remove your hand from here so that you can see properly. A guide wire or go there, a mirror retractor or there. Is it audible? Tap nine ka, ten ka. We are done. We are done. We are
बढ़िया इनका डॉक्टर साहब आई कवर हटा देंगे आई कवर हटा देंगे इनका रामधन ये उधर अपनी उल्टे हाथ की तरफ देखो टीवी की तरफ टीवी दिख रहा है आपको टीवी दिख रहा है टीवी में ये लोहे की डंडी दिख रही है हाँ या ना ये लोहे की डंडी हम जिसपे चला रहे हैं नीले नीले चमकते हुए मास्क के ऊपर ये आपका नया ए है ठीक है ये आपका फटा हुआ जो रस्सी था वो ये नीचे पड़ा हुआ है और ये नया एस जो नया रस्सी बनाया है वो ये पड़ा है इसको हम पूरा हिला रहे हैं तो आपका घुटना हिल रहा है ये अच्छा मजबूत यहाँ फंस गया है ठीक है इसके अलावा आपकी गद्दी है ये एक गद्दी दिख रही है चमकती हुई ये एक गद्दी है और एक गद्दी और है अंदर के बाहर बाहर की तरफ वो बिल्कुल ठीक है दोनों गद्दियाँ आपका जोड़ भी बहुत तंदुरुस्त है आपकी उम्र के हिसाब से आपका काम अच्छा हो गया है दीपक जोशी साहब Dr. Sanjay Sivastav is not here. Uh, I think I should call upon Dr. Sundar Sir, Dr. Sundar Rajan, please come on the panels. Dr. Siddharth Agarwal, please. Sir. Dr. Himanshu, please come on the dais. And Dr. Mohijam, please. Ah, I know, I know. discussion about calf tear so i'll get uh, i'll give two or three scenarios and we will discuss about how to manage this so welcome everybody so that's the case one it's a 50 year female housewife six months old injury it's a significant injury she was she had a fall in the bathroom now she is complaining of shoulder pain no significant weakness and she is non diabetic and non hypothyroid so that's the mr scan of the patient so my first question goes to himanshu so himanshu would you like to comment something about this mri in a lady who is 50 years old housewife not so active more or less sedentary so what do you derive out of this mri scan so seeing the image uh, we can interpret that this looks like a supraspinatus tear which is at the footprint with tendinous changes in the this amount of tendinosis in the tendon in the other section the tear doesn't look so big but definitely there is some element of tendinosis in the the infraspinatus and the other parts also sundar sir yes. your opinion about this this mri especially that coronal section that we have got so any comment on that coronal section yes it is uh, a 60 years old isn't it yeah. 60 years no, 50, old 50 50 50 50 50 50 Yeah, for five zero looks like uh, more tendinosis, more weak calf, uh, more of degenerative. Okay. Uh, I don't think uh, you can. Th we don't think that the trauma is a big issue because it could be a, just an incidental. So just very small footprint tear in that. Uh, okay. Near that attachment. Siddharth, can you appreciate a, a laminated kind of pattern of tear there? Yeah, please. Sorry. Laminated tear. So can you appreciate some lamination in the tear pattern there? so period la mina probably looks to be torn it's a torn but again with this uh, significant uh, the amount of tendinosis it's too difficult to be sure about it okay first priority would be to conserve for a uh, maybe 2 to 3 weeks and let's see how does she respond so straight away it is it surgery, is not laminated so she is already suffering for 6 months and she has tried everything uh, 
suffering for six months a very vague term. How about range of motion? Pain, range of motion is all good. No empty kind positive. She only has primary complaint of pain for last six months. And she is specific that the pain started only after the episode of injury. If, uh, if she has undergone a thorough conservative trial. Yeah, she has got a steroid and, also. And we are, she has got a steroid also. Yeah. She must have been better with that. Yeah, she was better, then again she got again, went, went down. In those cases, we can go, most likely this will be a partial bursus hydrate tear, okay. partial lamina. Okay. And once we are convinced that we are through with the conservative management, mm -hmm. then uh, probably taking down the tear and repairing it would be an option. But I still, in case I'm not sure about the conservative, one trial would be the first. Just okay. Sundar, so you want to add something? No, so because whenever the patient presents like this, whether diabetic or non-diabetics in this age group, 80 to 90 percent because of the stiff shoulder. So the cuff tear may not be a significant one. So if you pick the careful examination to be done is the first rotation. Even patient may not know that they have a stiffness. They may say, they may have a good forward flexion, they may have a good abduction. Then you put them into the external rotation, always you compare it to the opposite side, the last 20 to 30 degrees will be a stiffness. So 80 to 90 percent will be a stiffness rather than these tendinosis or the partial tear may not be the cause for the pain. So okay. I would examine the rotation first, then I send for a physio, proper physio, so because even six months it doesn't matter. So this patient has to be properly evaluated, send for proper physiotherapy. Unless at the three months no improvement, then we can go for an injection. Okay. Awesome. I, go, I, I go with uh, Dr. Sundarajan, you could uh, appreciate very well on MRI that we have loss of axillary fold. Uh, I think it could be more of a stiffness. We, with have, we, we also uh, could appreciate a, uh, fluid in the deltoid, uh, sorry, uh, subacromial region. Um, it could be, um, we need to do a proper physiotherapy and then should decide to go inside. Okay, she was with me for six months. So, Sundar sir, you said when everything is exhausted, you would go for surgery. No, 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 I told injection. I told injection, surgery. so injection is already given. Is Injection is already given. I would like to go for surgery. Surgery. After exhausting the options, then I'll go for surgery. Okay, so Himanshu, you would go for surgery. Uh, so what, what surgery would you plan? So, so six you months come without any improvement, I would advise her to undergo a surgery with a guarded prognosis that the tear is a small. We'll try to go in, localize the tear, complete the tear, and repair the tendon in situ at that position. So you will always complete the tear? Yes. And then you do a repair? Yes. So, so everybody on the panel will complete the tear? Definitely there is lamination which we can see. We expect a lamination inside plus there is tendinosis. That means some part of tendon is degenerated at that area. So I'd like to just to complete the tear and just do a formal repair. So any specific reason you want to complete the tear because studies have said either you take down repair or in situ repair, it doesn't make any difference. So, my so why do you want to take down that? So my experience part. is just by doing a complete uh, uh, repair. Okay, all of the faculty will will. Yeah, getting uh, a healthy tendon is always always essential. So it is better to complete the tear and do the repair. And um, I would I would add one more thing that would be uh, subacromial decompression as well. Yeah, subacromial decompression. Okay, fine. So here is what it looked like. So I chose not to do a complete takedown. Few fibers were there, so I thought hardly 10 to 20 percent of fibers look. How to do you that. know it is 10 to 20 percent? Look to me. That's what so I. So there is that. no uh, nothing subjective object. Anyway, it looks good. Yeah. Uh, not taking down looks good in this very option with the quality of tendon that seems to be intact. Exactly. Looks great. Correct. So if we expect a partial tear, absolutely. Then we have an attachment. <coughs> yes. So medial attachment is there. So what I do is I have I have gone through literature, and when uh, it is it is conclusively proven that whether you do a complete takedown or you do an in situ repair, it doesn't make any difference. So I have gone through this, and I I think in most of my cases I do in situ repair. I don't do a complete takedown. Until now I think they are doing well. Yeah. So yeah, that's well done, Vinay. Because the partial tear, usually the partial articular sided tear, people tend to do the 
your transcendence technique when the cuffs is good and the quality of the cuff is good and a little anger patients with the good quality cuff but this is really highly uh, you know degenerative tendinosis we don't the source of the pain it could be even the tendinosis tendon which is attached to the remaining or the articular side so yeah. i would always take down and do the repair in this case especially okay, complete take down if it is an articular side tear and the quality of the cuff is good then that is the ideal case to do a transcendence okay so like now that. we get to the second case so 65 male businessman one year old injury he was a boxer in his younger time shoulder pain diabetic non hypothyroid and that's his mri scan so now you have another scenario where you have a articular sided tear so initial one was partial sided now it's a partial articular sided tear he was a boxer you can see some fatty degeneration there so imanshu how do you go about this again complete take down and repair or you would like to preserve this time as sundar sir said this scenario he will try to preserve no no i, I didn't say sir, that, sir. that's the idea so he is having okay. pain for almost a year now it's so one year so it's a tricky situation his age is in a gray so zone again, complete the tear doesn't down. look bad so i'll just try to give some more time maybe some steroid shot prp okay i have it. given steroid shot two st shots of steroid already given Okay, so why this fatty infiltration is happening? Can we explain that? Yeah, absolutely. That? that is something which is a concern. So yeah. that is looks like an indication to operate this patient because the tendon is getting atrophied. So probably that is why he is not getting relieved in the pain. So anyhow, I I thought of operating. So what do you do, uh, Siddharth? So we would like to do a complete take down and repair. And so he had a subscap tear. Biceps okay. looked okay. that's the subscap so what do you do i would still go in for a complete take down you complete take down complete take down yes. and you would yes. repair this subscap or you would leave this subscap subscap has to be repaired repaired subscap no some subscap, subscap so it's a complete take down and subscap repair subscap repaired and uh, for the supra part and i i i also do uh, biceps tear so what is the subscap tear here yeah, exactly and, and the biceps is subluxating or not it's yeah, a no it's tear. a type 1 Yeah, uh, almost type one subscap tear. Absolutely. Your biceps in the groove. I I don't touch the subscap. Biceps are literally seems to be subluxed. Even the biceps do not be for this case. No, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. I just go. You can see that. I just go there. Down picture. So you do a biceps do not me yes. along with subscap repair. Yes. No, you only subscap. Biceps is subluxating. That's an indication that because that it needs to be repaired. Okay. So that might be an indication to do a subscap repair. But as of like in this images, it doesn't look like that. It needs a repair. So that was his under surface. So one can see a bare area, and hardly that uh, you can see few fibers attached there. But again, this time also I did in situ repair, transcendinous. So that's what I did. I did repair the subscap. It's good. It is good that you are getting lot of these cases. Yes, yeah. because my tolerance to operate these kind of cases is very, very less nowadays. Okay. Of course, I used to do these kind of things when I was young. Now I'm old because I know that most of the cases they respond to good rehab. Uh, okay. This kind of degenerative tear. You can see that humeral head osteophytes in this case. There are yeah. definitely such degenerative cup tears, partial tears. Usually they respond well to conservative. So uh, conservative, sir. How long do you think and conservative will will continue? That's what I said. It's uh, at least you should have a two to three months of uh, conservative treatment, the power of rehab. If you don't improve, many patients improve very well with the injection also. Okay. Very rarely require. I mean, of course, it's, it's with well done operation. It's the patient will get a good relief. But many patient may have become all right with the rehab with the injection also. What have you done for the biceps? Biceps. Do not me. Yeah. Was it subluxed or was it in? Yeah, it was subluxed. It was subluxed. Yeah. So, 50-year male lawyer, one-year-old injury, and shoulder pain with weakness, empty can positive, BRI positive, diabetic, non-hypothyroid. So that's the scenario. Anything to add, uh, Doctor Dard? You have got a seems to be supra uh, subscap. Yeah, subscap is gone. Supra is gone. You have good amount of fatty atrophy. Yeah. And uh, okay, infra also gone. It's a massive cuff. Okay, massive cuff. So that was his. Cuff. So, uh, uh, Himanshu, what is your idea of irreparability of cuff? So, looking at this uh, MRI picture, do you have this criteria of irreparability of cuff tear? Like you hesitant 
of operating the cuff so based on you need to be really sure before putting your patient for surgery whether you can repair it or yeah. it's irreparable so is there any irreparable uh, so as of now i feel like everything is repairable if you can mobilize them very well okay and if you are ha not having any arthritic changes in the shoulder so you sir, you, do you follow everything. some criteria of irre irreparability of cuff yeah, you to, usually the two, three important characters are one is the clinical, you know, either it's an acute or chronic. When you come to the radiological x-ray, it's very important to see the proximal humeral migration, whether it's a type 3 or type 2. But so in a massive cuffter, even acute cases, you'll have a proximal migration, which you have to be very careful. So you have to correlate with your chronic history and the proximal migration. Third thing is MRI. So you see the fat infiltration. Okay. And you see the how much retraction up to the glenoid level. Especially even the subscap, it's very sub so even at least in the glenoid retraction, the supra and infra can be repairable. But in the subscap, it will not be repairable if it is beyond the uh, glenoid level. So you have to correlate with the chronic proximal migration, retraction up to the glenoid level, fat infiltration if it's more than grade three or four, occupancy risk is very less, thirty percent, forty percent, then they may not be repairable. Okay. Thank Thank you. Partially, partially repairable. Oh, one more thing I want to add. Um, uh, partially repairable. Not complete. The MRI uh, looks better than the intraoperative picture. Yeah, so uh, uh, Dr. Mosa wanted to add something. Well, uh, just wanted to add regarding the criteria of irreparability. Uh, if patient is diabetic and uh, gleno uh, the cuff is, is has been retracted up to the level of glenoid, I think you need to take it with a pinch of salt that um, whether you are going to give a result or not. Okay. So uh, if, if the cuff is getting repaired and operatively you find that you have done a good job and when you well I have burnt my fingers while starting um, physiotherapy uh, I, I, I need to get up I, I wanted to get a repeat MRI and I saw again the whole cuff has been retracted so, so what do you offer to these patients? Suppose See, you find up, that ended up with the, with the superior capsular so what do you offer to these patients uh, with so a massive cuff one year old history and then what do you, if you're not trying this, to repair in this? In this scenario, I will, I will go ahead with a trial, trial of repair. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll con the, the, well, I guess suppose the MR looks good, but if it is more than one year, the most of the time, sometimes the supra cannot be repaired. Yes. You can the repair MRI a subscap, you can repair the infraspinatus, but you, you will not be able to repair the supra. So that you have to put into the patient. But even if you do infraspinatus repair, if you are able to have the force couple from the anterior and posterior, that's good enough to have a good function. That's what I explained to the, the patient. The MRI was fresh when I... Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely fresh. Because the retraction seems to be very much still glenoid. Yeah, so it once you go inside, you see a lot of new things. Uh, a lot of edema is there, as you can see, synovitis there. So, Himanshu, Even the this, was the, this was the situation anteriorly. So, uh, would you want to comment about, uh, about this part of this uh, arthroscopic picture something? So, this was the status anteriorly. So, you can see some fibers down there, which seems subscap, but it is too down. It cannot be subscap. And uh, that's the slot which is empty. Yeah, I think, that is the I think Vikram, you can come in. Huh? Yes. You want to add something? Yeah. This is a line. So basically, we'll try to release and bring down whatever we can. To so the if you footprint. see yes. this kind of subscap, what do you think? Whether it is subscap or something is missing there? Because the slot that the, the insertion site for subscap is empty. Yes. That's the insertion site. Correct. Correct? So. Uh, so this is what was done. So in the first video, you can see the subscap which was there, down there, and on probing, it was medially migrated. And that's the comma tissue that comes. So one must look for comma tissue. That's Follow the point. The comma tissue and just track so that's the comma tissue. Yes. And once you grab hold of this, everything falls in place. So Sundar sir, what's your take on uh, repairing this subscap? Single row, double row, how do you go about subscap repair? I try to do, suppose if it is like a retracted, it's very difficult to do a double row because you'll not be able to put the entire footprint. But whenever I do a massive cuff repair, you always, I do through the subacromial approach, you know. Otherwise I do up to type three, I do the intra articular. So whenever you see from the uh, acromial, then you know the how much footprint is. You guys are all not different. I mean, so, you know, like supra and infra, the footprint diameters are so different from person to person. Sometimes you'll be amazed to see, especially when you have a complete subscap uh, tear, sometimes even medially we may need to use some two anchors because otherwise you will not be able to foot, uh, put the entire subscap into the uh, footprint. 
So always I try to cover the footprint as much as possible. So I always try to do a double draw if, the, if it is an uh, uh, acute case easily if you are able to bring to the lateral part of your footprint. Otherwise I will do a single draw. Sometimes I use even two rows for the medial, medial side if it is a, a, a big, boot, a big footprint, it's a big guys. Yeah, Himanshu, your take, uh, you do subscap so, double row, single so row? I do subscap single row always. Single row. So nowadays I have tried to preserve my sutures from the single row and I try to put some of the sutures in my anterior double row anchors which I put. So that gives me a little more compression on the anterior side. But that's not possible in most of the cases. Siddharth, you do also a double row in subscap. In this case, I would have done single row subscap repair, biceps and not me, medialization of supra infra footprint, and repair at the best possible point after the release. So supra infra is single row or double row? Uh, that I would prefer, if possible, double row. So my next question to, to Himanshu, to Siddharth and Mozam boss is why a double row for supine fan, not double row for subscap? Because so you want a better hole on subscap. So, so you want to do a double row for subscap. That's Sundar Sussex. Getting so double for, for row for subscap with so much retractive subscap is pretty difficult. And you don't have much option of medializing in subscap. Whereas in supra infra, you can medialize the insertion and you can get a better double row option. That is in subscap, you don't have that uh, liberty of, you know, just getting it medialized that much and having a, sign, a, re a reasonable tissue for the second row repair. Yeah, so for me, double row is always when I can bring the tendon to the footprint. If I have to medialize, I'll prefer to do a single row, a Mason Allen technique, and I just don't go for a double row. So if it's easily reducible, I do a double row. For subscap also? No, no, for supra infra. infra. For subscap, it's always single row. As I told, some cases, I preserve my interior, the, the, the sutures from the first anchor and try to incorporate them in the lateral row anchor, so that gives me a decision. So is there something to do with the healing of subscap? It heals better, that is why a lot of people yes. say about yes. it's a very single row repair with subscap. It's a very strong muscle and we all know that even like in type 2, type 3 tears, patients have minimal functional loss. So even if we restore whatever is torn, the function is restored and the force couple balancing is there, so that helps in uh, the future healing. Advantage of for internal notation because you have another internal notator. So even if it heals well with the one anchor or uh, part of the footprint, that work very well. But uh, like it, the same concept we used to have for the single row, for double row, for the supra and infra also. Now, most of the guys, I don't know, but many of them are trying to do a double row repair. So always with the subscap also, if you do a single row, then you see that when you try to pull the same threads here, you will be able to cover some more footprint of that same, your end of the tendon. Yeah. So always happy to put in a double row, so you have a more coverage for the healing. You are giving a more chance for the tendon to heal. And most of the time, um, only, uh, I think um, part of the subscapularis is already attached. Most of the time, superior part of the uh, tendon is, is detached. So I think single row could be. So I think the idea is to get this hold of this comma tissue because that's a very important part exactly. of managing subscap. Exactly. The moment you fix up a comma tissue, everything falls in place. So uh, we have some more time. So that's the uh, post-op six months of this patient. not me. I don't do tenotinodesis. No, because I could bring, so once in this scenario, you see a very retra retracted kind of tear of supra infra. The moment you big subscap with comma tissue, everything falls in place. So a tear which would seem irreparable, once you repair subscap, everything falls in place. So these are very benign kind of, so if you see a subscap with infra supra, supra and infra, this is going to be a tear which can be managed provided you just fix sub subscap and preserve comma tissue. If you take down the comma tissue, then it's a problem. So case four, a 50 year male, he's a retired judge, very, very sedentary. I think it's 70, not 50, it's uh, uh, wrong. So one year old injury, shoulder pain with weakness, significant weakness, empty can is positive, BRG is positive, non-diabetic, non-hypothyroid. So I don't have MRI uh, picture of this patient, so I'll go with the intra-operative pictures. So that's the scenario of subscap and that's the supra infra. So Himanshu. So a lot of edema, degenerative cuff, supra infra looks like swollen kind of supra infra and this subscap is bad. So it must not be one year old injury, it may be like longer than that injury. So what's your take on this? So I don't have MRI scan because I tried to get it, but the so patient is out of town. I'll try to release it from the subacromial and the guineohumeral side, both uh, the supra and the subscap up to the 
coracoid level. I'll try to preserve my biases for these kind of cases till the time I'm very sure that I can bring everything to the footprint. If it is not possible, I'll try to do a partial repair, try to balance it and maybe use biceps for augmentation. So you do have, you do believe in partial repairs? Yeah, I believe in partial repairs. I believe in balancing the shoulder. Balancing the, 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 the shoulder. subscap and the infra is something which is most vital in most of the shoulder functions. Sundar, sir, your take on this? What is the clinical uh, issue? So he messes, had a pain uh, and weakness in the shoulder. Significant. Yeah. Internal rotation weak, external rotation weak, empty can positive. So supra, infra, subscap, all weak. Yeah. He had an injury uh, one, month, one year back, uh, but I think that injury would have been like uh, in, insignificant. But this kind of scenario, it seems like an old kind of tear. Yeah. And he was carrying the earlier, for some time. As I said earlier, subscap, I mean, supra is the tough one to prepare in these cases. So that's why I tried to say that even last case also. If you try to get that force couple from anterior and posterior, infraspinatus and subscap, it's uh, good enough. But uh, if I say that, you no, know, sometimes the patient has got a elevation up to 60 to 70 degrees, he has got a further weakness, you can do a biceps SCR. It had an additional stability to prevent the superior migration and helps in getting in a more elevation. And your infraspinatus helps in elevation as well as the external rotation. So Siddharth, uh, you take between partial repair versus tendon transfers. So how do you go about doing a tendon transfer, deciding for a tendon procedure? Vinay, I'm not in tendon transfers. For me, it's partial repair. Partial repair. Uh, Mozambos, uh, you would well, like to uh, take this? I could appreciate uh, the arthroscopic picture of um, a surprise when it is doesn't seem to be, the tendon doesn't seem to be. Yeah, it's uh, a swollen tendon. It's very swollen, degenerative kind of tendon. And retraction is also difficult. You can see me trying to retract to bring it back there to the insertion. I'm not able to. So uh, I go for I go for partial repair, partial repair. and yeah. along with I will uh, augment. Sundar sir, your partial. take on between partial repair versus tendon transfers, how do you? What's your threshold? Yeah, now uh, now all the patients, which is I feel that is, I'm not able to repair completely. Always I tell the patient I'm going to do a partial repair, and add a tendon transfer. And uh, depends upon that. As I said, if it is a more of external rotation problem, it's got elevation. I do a wide uh, repeat tendon transfer. So the I patient is got a, shop. Oh, yeah. If you are able to do a good infraspinatus repair and the uh, problem is that the uh, elevation up to 60 degrees is there, more than the problem, I can do a biceps ACR. Okay. So we'll finish up because. Uh, so what I did is subscap repair, did a partial repair as Himanshu said, and did whatever I could repair and balance the repair. So this is the function of this patient. Very nice. Sometimes these patients do very well once you balance the repair. So that's it. So we had four scenarios. Thank you so much, uh, panelists, uh, for a wonderful discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vinay Pandey. Now I invite Dr. Shalin Singh to conduct the inaugural ceremony. Our chief guest, Honorable Vice Chancellor, has already arrived. Dr. Shalin. Thank you, Avishek. Thank you. Good afternoon, all of you. It's my privilege to welcome you all in this PCS event the fifth arthroscopic conclave uh, 22 and annual meeting of AUP. Thank you all for giving us your precious time. Before I start, let me acknowledge the presence of our eminent guests. I consider it a great honor to welcome our chief guest, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of KGMU, Lieutenant General Professor Bipin Puri, sir, who has kindly consented to be the chief guest of this conclave. Welcome, sir. I request you to, sir, please take a seat on the dais. And I request Dr. Dharmen to please welcome uh, VC, sir, uh, with a small plant as a token of gratitude. Thank you, Dr. Dharmen. With long list of his achievements and glory, I would like to invite our guest of honor, the General Secretary of Indian Arthroscopy Society, Dr. S.R. Sundar Rajan, sir, who is a renowned surgeon of Ganga Hospital. Sir, kindly gracious, and please have a chair on the dais. 
I request Dr. Narendra Koswaha to please welcome, sir. Next, I invite our great teacher, organizing chairman of this event, the Pro Vice Chancellor of KGMU and head of the department, uh, orthopedic surgery, Professor Vinish Sharma, sir, Dr. Deepak, to please welcome, sir. Dr. Narendra Narayan, to please welcome our guest of honor. With the great pleasure, I invite President of UPOA, AUP, founder of the Arthroscopy Association of UP, Office Sitting Head of the Department of Sports Medicine, and Organizing Secretary of this event, Professor Ashish Kumar, sir. sir, please have a seat on the dais. <laughs> Dr. Mayank, to please welcome, sir. Next, I request Dr. Vinay Pandey, Secretary of Arthroscopy Association of UP, to please take a seat on the dais. Dr. Sanjeev Kumar, to please come forward for welcome our Secretary of AUP. Next, I invite Secretary of Uttar Pradesh Orthopedic Association, Dr. Santosh Singh, sir. Santosh, sir. Dr. Arpit, please come forward. Next, I would like to invite President of Lucknow Orthopedic Society, Dr. Sanjay Kumar Srivastava, sir, to the dais. Dr. Devrishi Rastogi, to please welcome Dr. Sanjay Kumar Srivastava. One day with a great teacher is better than 1,000 days of study. I acknowledge the presence of our great teachers and mentors, Professor UK Jain, sir, and Professor O.P. Singh, sir. Welcome, sir. I request Dr. Ravindra to please welcome Professor UK Jain, sir, and Dr. Arpit to please welcome Hello, Professor O.P. Singh, sir. Thank you, Dr. Ravin, Dr. Arpit. Ladies and gentlemen, we should start with the name of Ma Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge and art. Ma Saraswati, we pray for your blessings with all humility. I request Ms. Chetna, Ms. Sraddha, and Sriya Singh, students of MBBS 2020 batch, to please come forward for Saraswati Mandana. Thank you, dear students. 
Now we will have our traditional auspicious lamp lighting ceremony as a tribute to Ma Saraswati. I request dignitaries and dais to please come forward for the lamp lighting. to the podium and deliver a welcome address. Thank you, Shalin. Respected Honorable Vice Chancellor, Lieutenant General Bipin Puriji, Dr. Sundarajan, Dr. Santosh, Dr. Ashish, Dr. S.K. Srivastava, and Dr. Vinay. My mentors and teachers, Professor Ope Singh, Professor UK Jain, my senior colleagues, Professor AK Singh, Dr. Arun Chaturvedi, heads of the department, delegates, and of course, honored faculty that has come from far and wide, students, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you all today to the Arthroscopic Conclave 2022. And the fifth cadaveric arthroscopy knee and shoulder course. Dear friends, the faculty that has come from far and wide will be contributing today towards your knowledge. And the cadavers tomorrow will be there for hands-on workshop. We should respect all those cadavers who will be giving you a chance to learn from them and also the honorable faculty that has come all the way to teach you. This conclave has been going on for a few years now, and the original founders of this UP Society of Arthroscopy were Dr. S. Dr. Srivastava and Dr. Ashish. Dr. S. K. Srivastava was the first president, Ashish was the secretary. And today, I am proud to say that Dr. Ashish is also the president of UP Orthopedic Association. He is the president of UP Arthroscopic Society and also the organizing secretary of this conference. Dear friends, this conference will be memorable and I am sure you will take a lot of good memories with you. I once again welcome all of you and I'm sure all of you will be looking forward to the forthcoming sessions of knowledge as well as the Cadillac workshop. Thank you much. Thank you so much, sir. Next, I invite our guest of honor, Dr. S.R. Sundar Rajan, sir, to the podium for a few words of wisdom.
good afternoon. Uh, suspected uh, Vice Chancellor Dr. Bibi, Dr. Vineet, and our uh, Sandosh, Sanjay, our Professor Ashish, and Vinay, and respected seniors, teachers, and my colleagues. It's a great privilege and honor to be here in this prestigious conference under the Professor Ashish Kumar. He called me last time also, but I could not make it due to personal reason. But uh, this time I could make it and do a life surgery uh, uh, and went on very well. Indian Arthroscopy Society, uh, you know that it's a very growing and uh, young and energetic body because what I'm saying that young and energetic because a lot of youngsters who finishes orthopedics nowadays, they are so much interested in arthroscopy. It's not just keyhole because there are so many surgeries to be done in arthroscopy. So if you take a knee, you can do around at least 30 procedures. Unlike an arthroplasty where you can do only a one replacement in the hip and knee. But scopy has got so much to offer and so much to learn compared to the other field because it's technically demanding. But considering the uh, 10 years before, now you have a lot of opportunity to learn in both cadavery. You have a lot of observerships and a lot of stalwarts in India itself. When we learned, so we had to go abroad and learn all these techniques and get from the stalwarts. But now we have all the Indian stalwarts all around the city, whether it's a, whether, whether all around the India, whether it's a U Lucknow or a Paimbatu or a Chennai or a Delhi, you can anywhere and learn. So anyhow, we have almost more than 3,300 members in Indian Arthroscopy Society, more than any state orthopedic bodies. So that shows that's the interest of the youngsters to take up arthroscopy. And I request, if you are not a member of Indian Arthroscopy Society, to become a member, not just to get, a, uh, get into the body, you have a lot of things to learn. When I was a joint secretary, when Dr. Our, my past secretary, Dr. Samantha, Dr. IPS Obray, and Dr. Uh, Pratik, especially in the COVID time, we had utilized it and had done hundreds of webinars which we could bring all the stalwarts all around the world to have a, uh, talks. And these are all available in Indian Arthroscopy Society YouTube channel. We have a lot of materials to be, uh, we have a lot of materials where you can go and learn. And we have our hundreds of videos, surgical videos, where uh, you can, you can uh, you name it, you get it. So that kind of uh, uh, quantity and quality which we have in Indian Arthroscopy uh, Society YouTube channel. And uh, it's a, it will be a great privilege for me um, and at the same time, I wanted to thank, actually I forgot to thank Professor Ashish and the whole UP team for allowing me to conduct IASCON last year. <laughs> you know, because of the COVID, it was supposed to be held in 2020, so we had to postpone to 2021. Then again, the second wave came. Just I made a, one call to Professor Ashish. Ashish I, I was asked to do a hybrid, which I, wanted, I, I don't want to do because I want to do live uh, in person. And Ashish immediately agreed, you are my close friend. How can I, I mean, I'm going to refuse? So please go ahead, I will do in 23. In spite of, I know they have a problem of having an IOA very close by in December, and he agreed to do a, in September. For that, I want to thank uh, all the members and Professor Ashish for that magnanimity. Uh, with this, I will uh, conclude my talk and uh, welcome all of you for this prestigious conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sundar Rajan, sir. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, next, I request the Secretary of AUP, Dr. Vinay Pandey, sir, to please come to the podium and to present the annual report of Arthroscopy Association of UP. Thank you, VC sir. Uh, thank you, Sanjay sir, Santosh sir, Sundar sir, Vineet sir, and Ashish sir uh, for giving me opportunity. So I'm going to present the annual report of Arthroscopy Association of UP. So uh, these are the inclusions in my report. So we had this physical meets last year. I'll try to compile what were the physical meets. 
then we had category courses, webinars, fellowship, membership drive, and newsletter. So these were the inclusions of the report. So physical meets to start. We had this uh, arthroscopy conclave that we are having every year. This was last year, 2021, and it was organized here only. Then we had an April uh, Varanasi Apex Arthroscopy course, which was organized by Apex Hospital in collaboration with Arthroscopy Association of UP. Then we had uh, Agra course. Uh, this was again uh, done by our very dynamic editor, uh, Rajat. Uh, and uh, this was in the month of May. Then in June, we had uh, uh, Lucknow Cadaveri course done by uh, Sanjay sir and his team. And this was in Kanpur. Uh, again, a very good course. Uh, very prominent faculties came in this course. Sundar uh, Rajan sir was part of it. And then we had this uh, knee preservation symposium in RML Hospital, Lucknow. This was done by uh, Sachin Avasti, very good friend. So then we had Cadbury courses last year for hands-on training of uh, youngsters. This was uh, uh, here only, uh, part of arthroscopy conclave, which is happening every year. This Cadbury course happened for one day. Knee and shoulder session are there, basic session and advanced session. And this was again uh, Lucknow Cadbury course, which happened in June of uh, the 2022. Then we had webinars. We tried to keep in touch with, uh, with academics throughout the year. We planned to have webinar every month or so. So we had this first webinar uh, done by uh, uh, AUP in collaboration with Agra. And we had this Tamil Nadu Arthur, uh, Arthroscopy Association along with Arthroscopy Association of UP webinar. Sundar sir is part of it. And we had a very dynamic uh, secretary, uh, Bhupesh Karthik, who was part of it. And then we had a Meerut webinar, which was done in the month of March. And then we had a webinar with Allahabad Authority Club, uh, done by Dr. Ajay Verma. He's working at Surupani Hospital. And this was a webinar in collaboration with Varanasi. So we had this webinar of Arthroscopy Association of UP, along with districts of uh, Varanasi, uh, this, uh, Uttar Pradesh. So Another one was with Varanasi, and we had this great faculty in Dr. Ramakant, Ajit, Rohit, and Abhinay. So we are having one topic, one uh, webinar, and having one district collaborating with Arthroscopy Association of UP and presenting the webinar. So we are having this webinar, seven and eight webinars have we done. This is another one, which was done with Gorakhpur Orthopedic Club in collaboration with, uh, with Arthroscopy Association of UP. And then we had this fellowship. Uh, we were always planning to get some fellowship because uh, so that we have this traveling kind of arrangement where fellows go from there to some other state and learn few tips and tricks of uh, arthroscopy. Our Dr. Uh, Raji Raman has been very, very from Kolkata has been very, very helpful with this. He has always been very uh, cordial in inviting our fellows and training them. And this time this was awarded to Dr. Increasing our membership drive, so more growth of association as well. So newsletter, uh, we were planning, Rajat, from the time he became editor of this association, was always planning to get a newsletter, rather a journal. So we thought we will start with a newsletter, see how things are going. Every three monthly, this will be published. And after about a year or so, when things are streamlined and we have a good feedback, we will shift this to a... Uh, committed journal of arthroscopy uh, association of up so this newsletter has been pre-launched two days back uh, with our uh, board members and national faculties and i think officially today is going to be launched uh, 
and I think Dr. Sundar Rajan sir and Ashish sir and everybody will, will inaugurate this newsletter today. Thank you so much. So that's the secretary report for 2021. Thank you, Dr. Vinay. The AUP Visiting Fellowship for year 2021 was awarded to Dr. Fahad bin Amit from Bareilly, and he has completed this fellowship successfully. I request our chief guest, Honorable VC sir, to kindly present certificate to Dr. Fahad bin Amit. Thank you so much, sir. Arthroscopy Association of UPU is releasing its first newsletter. Dr. Rajat Kapoor from SN Medical College Agra is editor of it. I request dignities on the dais to please release this newsletter of AUP today. Thank you, sir. Now I invite our esteemed chief guest, a most dynamic person, our guardian in this university, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, to the podium for a few words of wisdom. So, Professor Vineet Sharma, the chairman of this organizing team. Secretary is uh, Prof Professor Ashish. And of course, the dignitaries on the dais, uh, part of the UP Arthroscopic Association and the Orthopedic Association. Um, senior teachers, revered teachers, senior uh, faculty members, senior Georgians, Professor A.K. Singh and Arun Chaturvedi, and um, faculty members, delegates, students, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, I congratulate the UP Arthroscopic Association along with KGMU Orthopedics who have teamed up once again to do this, uh, this amazing uh, workshop uh, for, uh, on arthroscopy. And I sincerely believe, and I always keep saying this, that. Uh, uh, these operative workshops, live workshops, cadaveric workshops, um, they are the way to go. They are actually where the actual learning happens. And because when you are into it in a big way, when you are actually doing it or getting a feel of the instrumentation, getting exactly where you are, and when you do a cadaveric uh, uh, procedure, then perhaps uh, uh, you not only get a feel of what you're doing, but also you, there's a chance of correcting yourself without causing any damages. So in that perspective, I think uh, these are excellent initiatives, and I'm so glad that uh, the UP Arthroscopic Association, UP Orthopedic Association, all teamed up, uh, geared up to take care of the budding orthopedic surgeons. And I'm so glad to see that uh, this has actually continue to grow five years uh, after five years after initiation that I'm told that there are nearly 150 members in the Arthroscopic Association of uh, UP and, uh, and now uh, they are a part to reckon with and are being acknowledged. So I'm so happy that that, uh, that is happening and um, so I think it's also important that when you are recognized by your national body, I'm glad that uh, Dr. Sundaram is, is here from Ganga Hospital, um, the secretary of the, the national body. And, um, and I, 
I'm told that uh, the national event, arthroscopic event, is being planned now in 23 at KGMU. So I think that's uh, itself um, um, an acknowledgement of the fine work that you people are doing. Uh, I'm talking of the UP Arthroscopic Association and the UP Orthopedic Association and, of course, uh, the department here at KGMU. Well, friends, uh, let me say this, that uh, minimally invasive surgery is, is the way to go, is there to remain, and whether you like it or not, you have to get onto the bandwagon. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's important for the youngsters to understand the nuances, the dynamics, the mechanics, the ergonomics of how the whole thing works. It's important. It's important because in your lifespan, you're going to see that the vast majority of surgery is going to be by minimally invasive surgery. And uh, the open procedures would be far and few. And therefore, in that context, it's important to remain contemporary. It is important for you to take on to this opportunity. Don't let go. Because this is the time for you to get on and understand the dynamics and pick up. There's no rocket science, let me say this. It's no rocket science. I remember many years ago when I started my MCH program at PGI Chandigarh, nobody was doing laparoscopic surgery. And uh, 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 much later, we got onto the bandwagon and thereafter we, were, we started uh, laparoscopic surgery in our premier armed forces hospitals. The point which I'm trying to make is, at some stage, you have to make a go. So that is my point number one. I have another point to tell you, and that is that in today's times, remember that this surgery, when we talk of minimally invasive surgery, it comes with a price. And in a country like ours, a developing country, not many people can afford. And therefore, there's a need for an ongoing um, innovation and creativity from us as, uh, as you all, as orthopedic surgeons, and try and get into economically more viable options in technology. So therefore, pat patents, try and get the technology, improve technology, so that the costing, the economics comes down, it becomes more vi economically viable and available for the common man. With these few words, once again, I congratulate the um, UP Orthopedic Association, the UP Arthroscopic Association. Thank Professor Sundaram from Ganga Hospital for uh, coming here uh, this, uh, for this workshop. And of course, congratulate uh, the organizing team, Professor Vineet Sharma and his team. Um, let me say this, a word about Vineet. Uh, he's a man of few words. He's a doer. He just says and does it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. We cherish your constant support and act of goodwill towards our department and institution. Now, I call upon the president of UPOA, the president of AUP, and founder of the AUP, Professor Ashish Kumar, sir, to please uh, give the vote of thanks. Thanks, dear Shalene. So I am here to present the vote of thanks, which is always a pleasure, which I am doing for the last five years, again and again. So uh, once again, we are having our chief guest, our honorable vice chancellor, sir, Lieutenant Bipin Turi. And I know that he is very, very busy in inaugurating so many things even today. So he has spared time from his extremely busy schedule, this undoubtedly. So I am, sir, very grateful to you, sir. Dr. Sundar Rajan, I am humbled with the word that he has used for me. He is a very good friend of mine. He is a secretary of Indian Arthroscopy Association and is a renowned surgeon in the Coimbatore. And uh, everybody knows how Ganga Hospital is doing. I have been to his place uh, again and again, I think, and it's always a pleasure to be with him. Thank you, Dr. Sundar, that you are here and we have uh, traveled, changing so many flights, I know. Thank you very much. So, and other dignitaries on the dais, Professor Vinish Sharma, sir, my head, my elder brother, 
and uh, Dr. Sanjay sir, Dr. Santosh, Dr. Vinay Pandey, I'm grateful to you. Uh, Dr. Vinay Pandey, just one word for him, that he has uh, taken uh, much ahead this association and he has worked hard, really worked hard. He's a very good arthroscopist and uh, still he, he spares time doing all these things, which is not easy. I have done for the UPOA also, for this association also, but it's difficult to find a person who can do this kind of things and continue the things, legacy. That's very, very important. So thank you, Vinay. And uh, all the esteemed faculty members, um, I, my teachers who are sitting in the front row, Professor uh, UKJ and Professor O.P. Singh, who always come whenever I uh, request them to come. Dr. G.K. Singh out of town, that's why he's not here. Uh, Professor Chitruedi, Dr. A.K. Singh, who are here on my request. And uh, Dr. Arun Shirvastav is also there. Thank you, sir. All the esteemed faculty members, there are so many. I have to, from the state, from the outside, just naming few of them who have come from the very far off places. Dr. Nilesh, Dr. Siddharth, Dr. Rajkumar Amravati, Dr. Joshi, Dr. Manit, Dr. Rajiv, Dr. Apsingi, Dr. Atik, and many more. And my all colleagues who are in the state who have traveled here and on just one call, they are always ready to help me. So thank you very much. Our delegates who took interest and come to learn and just uh, make this uh, event successful, thank you very much. I'm especially thankful to Dr. Shantun and Dr. Abhishek uh, Saini, who are in the OT, who don't come even for the inaugural function, and who are conducting all these things behind the scene. And all it is because of these life surgeries, which they are taking hard uh, pains to continue. And from morning to the evening, 7 o'clock, they have started. So I'm very grateful, and I will give, tell them personally after, afterwards. And uh, similarly, Dr. Abhishek, who is just managing this hall since morning, all the time, tirelessly. And of course, my all faculty members who are all here and were all doing whatever I requested them to do. So thank you very much. Without them, this event could have been nothing. Similarly, uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, grateful to my members of our Arthroscopy Association that we have already discussed. There are so many sitting in the hall. It will be a time wastage if I keep on speaking because life surgeries are waiting. So please forgive me for that. So I have written so many names, but it's not, I think, will be appropriate to do such kind of thing. And because of them only that we are here to uh, host the 2023 ISCON. It is because of their support and hard work. Thank you very much. Grateful to all other faculty members, residents, nursing staff, OT staff, and all others who are working with me in conducting this event again and again yearly. Highly grateful to the surgical and pharma companies to support this program. Otherwise, it may not be possible to conduct at all. All media persons for covering this program and to all those who might, I might have forgotten to thank. Thank you very much. Thank you. Long live AUP. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I request all of you to please stand for our national anthem. <laughs> Janagana mana adhinayaka jayare Bharata bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindhu Gujarat Maratha Dravida Uttara Vanga Vindyari Machala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Janadhita Ranga Dava Shubha Nami Jage Dava Shubha Ashisha Mange I have to make uh, an important announcement that our conference, there are nine life surgeries and uh, so many things which are going on. So we don't have any official lunch break. So don't worry, it will be continuing downstairs. So I am going with uh, Honorable VC sir and other senior teachers. So you people make it comfortably coming down and uh, the conference will continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I request all of you to have a delicious lunch with us. Thank you so much.
it all will be a running lunch for two uh, two hours round. So we are proceeding towards our uh, next live surgery. It's about rotator cuff uh, repair by Dr. Nilesh Kamath. In 10-5 minutes, we'll be relaying the things. So some of you may go downstairs to have a lunch, and some of you may can uh, remain here just to see the surgery. And after all, afterwards, the, you, you can just proceed for that. Okay. I would rather request some of you, please, please be here to see the surgery. <laughs> Lunch will be there. It will be there for two, to around one and a half and two hours. So don't worry. Dr. Nilesh, uh, am I audible there? Nilesh, am I audible there? Hello. Ah, Dr. Nilesh. Hi, Abhishek. Can you hear me? Your voice is little echoing actually. Abhishek? Yeah, yeah, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Phone to me, Abhishek. Are you getting my voice, sir? Is anybody there? Yes, sir. I am there. I am there. Are you getting my voice? Yes, yes. Hmm, are you getting my voice? Yes. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello? Hello? Dr. Nilesh? Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Kama sir? Yes. Can you Do hear you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Udar ki awaj nahi aari abhi lag raha hai. Aisa. Do you hear me sir? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hand mic se check karna ki awaj sunai de rahi hai. Aapka awaj nahi aa raha shayad. Abhishek can you hear me now? Eco kar raha hai yaar. Can you hear me, Abhishek? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are very much audible. Okay. A little Thank lower you. volume, but fine. And please, please just elaborate just in a two minutes uh, what have you done and what. Uh, first of all, I am sorry for the delay. No, no, no. You are perfectly all right. Okay, I will give you a quick brief on the clinical history. Yeah, so sure, sir. If someone can zoom in on the camera, on the x ray picture. Yeah. We, we just want to see the X-ray picture or the uh, uh, MRI or some the uh, portals. Yeah, you so placed. By the time they come on to the X-ray picture, let me just brief you with this clinical history. We have a we have a 27 year old male right hand dominant with a history of RTA around two and a half months back. He presented with an avulsion fracture of the greater tuberosity, which was treated conservatively. And he then presented with features of stiffness and inability to get full range of movement with weakness. Okay. So if you look at this present X-ray, you can see that the, the humeral head is well contained within the glenoid, but you can see that there is a fragment which is proximally migrated. Can you yeah. appreciate that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Now the same thing when you look at it on the coronal picture. On the coronal picture, you can see that the cuff is, is running across and you can see the fragment which is there right up here. Right? Yeah. Now, in my regular practice for a situation like this, I would also get uh, some local CT cuts to okay. see the exact orientation. Mm -hmm. But just from a theoretical perspective, if I have to describe the MRI, mm -hmm. we are going anterior to posterior on the coronal pictures. Mm -hmm. You can see that's the coracoid, that's the short head of biceps. Mm -hmm. You have a rotator interval, then the fibers of subscap coming in. Mm -hmm. After the fibers of subscap, that means the lesser tuberosity is over and you have the long head of biceps. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the long head of biceps, you can see that fragment coming up here. Now this is important to assess on the MRI where the fragment is because at two and a half months it is malunited. So you have to literally fish for that fragment. 
right? So each cut is around 3 millimeters posterior. So now if you can look at the long head of biceps finishing here and then starting right from the first, second, third, fourth. So nearly four cuts is where I can see the fragment. So that gives me a rough estimation that I'm looking at a 1 to 1.5 centimeter fragment. Am I making sense here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely fine. So we'll go on to the arthroscopy picture. Yeah. And I'll first start off with the subacromial space. So I want an inside arthroscopy picture and an outside view of the of the portals. Abhishek, tell me when you get both the views and I'll explain what I'm doing. Sir, we are getting both the views. So you didn't go first in the joint, you, you, you first went into the subacromial space. I did go to the joint because I had to clear the rotator interval and I... You're not audible, sir. Some... Okay, so can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so someone audible. will have to hold the mic, but... Okay, so we did go in the glenohumeral joint first. Okay. Because he had an external rotation of 0 to 5 degree, 0 to 10 degree. So he was developing a secondary adhesive. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I've cleared the rotator interval, exposed okay, okay. the coracoid, and I'll show you those pictures later on as well. Sure, now coming to the subacromial space, that's my standard posterior portal. Mm -hmm. This is my posterior lateral portal. Okay. This is my 50 yard line, mm -hmm. and that is going to be my lateral viewing lateral. portal because this is an anterior tear. Okay. This is my anterior lateral portal, okay. and this is my anterior mid glenoid portal. Okay. Fine. Fine. Arthroscopic probe. So now when I track back, you have the arthroscopy picture. Actually, we are not seeing inside the shoulder. Yeah, so I will wait for the arthroscopy picture to come. Wait. Yeah, yeah. Now we are there. You are good? Yeah. Okay. So what I have done, now we are looking at the end on view of the cuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now my probe is coming from the anterior lateral portal and this is the cuff. So this is the amount of clearance that I would want. Mm -hmm. Posteriorly, the first thing that I would do is I will go ahead and clear right up to the spine of scapula. Can you see the yeah. spine of yeah, scapula yeah. running across? Yeah, we are seeing. So that tells me that exactly how my probe is lying. Mm -hmm. Posterior to that I have my infraspinatus. Mm -hmm. Anterior to that is my supraspinatus. This is a cannula, the one behind, mm -hmm. which is there in my posterior viewing portal, which is now becoming a retrieving portal. Mm -hmm. The second cannula is in the posterior lateral portal. I am in the lateral portal. You have one more cannula which is coming in the anterior lateral portal. Your probe is there. And I have kept my anterior portal free so that it acts as an outlet. You can see water coming okay. out throughout, right? Now, if I look at my fragment, I had told you that it was anterior. So, if I look at this, I have done an osteoclasis and os arthroscopic osteoclasis and have lifted up the entire fragment. Okay. This was mal united uh -huh. and so if I lift this up, I can go underneath and enter straight into the glenohumeral joint. Yeah. Okay? okay. Now if you look at the long head of biceps, my long head of biceps is right here uh -huh. and I told you that immediately posterior to my long head of biceps, my fragment is going to start. So that's my long head of biceps, I'm tracking behind and that's where the fragment starts. Okay. We are good with this? Yeah, yes, sir. So now, after my exposure, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a triple or a double loaded anchor with tapes. That is a helicoil region of on the medial side into the crater. Okay. I'm going to pass the sutures across indirectly. Now I can't do a direct passing device because it will crush the bone. Ah. So I'm going to use an indirect passing device like an acupass and shuttle all the four limbs, that means two tapes, two ultra tapes, and two ultra braids. Okay. And then in a parachute technique, I'm going to bring it across, and I'm going to go on the Hello. lateral side and fix it here Hello. with a multi-fix, okay? okay? Hello. So now for portal insertion or for anchor insertion needle. Hello. Hello. So the first thing you will do is, of the lateral margin of the acromion, you will try to make a separate individual portal okay for anchor so placement this is for anchor placement because my angle of attack i need a trajectory along the medial margin of the of the articular surface mm -hmm. uh, or medial margin of the footprint and it needs to be vertical knife nikalo
Now, whenever you do this, see that your needle ka or your, your blade comes in, and once you see the blade coming in, you can see the tip of the blade coming in, okay? That is when you will turn it 180 degree around and go proximally. Do not try to go directly proximally because you can cut the cuff out there. Following which you are going to use the RF. RF you know? To mark the point. Sorry? Use the RF to mark the point. You will use the RF to clear the bleeder so that you have a nice crack out there. So you will see my RF coming in. Hello, foot switch. Hello. Hello. And I am going to clear that entire part Hello. so that it does not bleed throughout. Otherwise, it is damn irritating to get that bleeder and does not give you good visualization. Okay, okay. Okay. Yes, so sir. now you can see that is the medial edge of my footprint. Can you see that? Yeah, very well. Right? Toka. Toka as in uh, all, all. So we are using a 5 5 helicoil region of soap. So, in spite of clearing this, you will realize that many times it gets stuck in soft tissue. So, go in a, in a kind of uh, rotating movement. Yeah, here we are, right at the medial edge. Try to get the entire curved portion inside, right at the medial edge. Mallet. Okay, go, 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 go. That's it, hold. So, I've also, what I've done before doing this is I've, I've run my shaver across this so that it gives me a good bleeding surface. You, you have already prepared the bed. I've already prepared the bed. Hold this like this, hold this like this. Don't take it out. Now, don't get him to take it out immediately because you want to know the trajectory. Now, take it out. And in the same trajectory, you will come in. And go all the way in. It is a vented anchor, so allows for good bone growth. And it comes in with a pair of ultra braids and a pair of ultra tapes. Hold this for me. Mallet. Handle pakro. Can you hold the handle? Water check, water check. Water check. So I just wait for, for the water to come up again. Tape need you have up the sub threads killing. Okay, so unfortunately, I've gotten an anchor which is all sutures rather than tape. Can you see that? It's double loaded anchor actually. It's a double loaded suture. anchor. I requested for a region of saw with tape, but that's okay. I mean, this case shouldn't be an issue. So, what we'll do next is hold the cannula, high strong. So, with a suture retriever or with your eye strong, you are going to come in and you are going to retrieve your first suture and take it off the anterior lateral portal. Now, that is my retrieving portal right now. I will take my acupass, hold this. I already have a cannula in place. I am going to come in from this acupass. Cannula Pichelelo, please. Thank you. Now, the trick when you are using an indirect device is can you hold the scope for me like this? No, 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 one second. Hold it just here. That is it. Perfect. Can I have a grasp now? Easy, easy. So, you need an assistant who can, who can do the needful here, who can show the scope. So, I have got Vrain with me who is helping me with this. Hold this here. You got it? 
what you want to do is you want to open up this so that when you pierce you can actually see where you are coming you need a counter we can use a traction suture so usually not required here because this is not too big a tear okay i normally would keep a traction suture in for retracted for a tear ones. which is quite big retracted ones yeah the problem here is that just when you don't get a counter mm -hmm. the entire cuff kind of starts flapping around mm -hmm. आप स्कोप पकड़ सकते हो पकड़ो इसको यहां पे, आपके पास को पकड़ो या आई एम राइट यू सो दैट्स माई नेटिनल स्विच आर कमिंग अक्रॉस होल्ड छोड़ दो छोड़ दो डोंट होल्ड स्कोप कैन यू गिव अट्रैक्शन टू ऑल द सूचर्स फ्रॉम द एंकर नो नो फ्रॉम द एंकर खींच के रखो सब एक एक इंडिविजुअली खींच के रखो थैंक यू दैट्स गुड So you're going to shuttle this across. Bus, bus, that's it, that's it. Dada, me come. It's gone through, no? So that's my first bite across the cuff. Can you see that? Yes, sir. So that's gone across the cuff and it's coming from the superior surface. Mm -hmm. Acupus. So in fact, I'm using a pump in this case. I mentioned earlier I don't use pumps. The only reason why I'm using a pump because this was a stiff shoulder. and i had to do an uh, ortho lysis yeah i have to do it can la piche le lo you the posterior part of cuff you pass the acute part from the the from the posterior lateral portal that's right now i am going i am trying to see where is my first bite mm -hmm. my first bite right up there so around a centimeter in front is where i would want to go Mm -hmm. and that's where i'm going to go with my second bite mm -hmm. to midiri you are using just a just an anchor only one yeah, anchor only one anchor now it's important for me to see to it that i i go beyond that fragment nahi to otherwise it's a futile yeah, yeah. futile experience futile. entire thing uh -huh. rasta पास पकड़ लो वन सेकेंड कैनल आपका बाहर आ रहा है सर एनी ट्रिक हाउ टू अवॉइड दैट दोनी चंग बिकॉज द मिनट टाइम when we face this situation situation and we uh, pass the we, we try to pass the acute pass or whatever suturing device and it it is uh, always hitting the that uh, bony chunk so you need to you need to make an effort to go as medial as possible don't okay. go lateral because okay. Okay. see i'm not going to tie knots here you understand because i'm not going to tie knots mm -hmm. i'm not going to over constrain it at any point of time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you just medial to the chunk and you are just doing the thing okay fine
हेलो कामर सर नाउ यू आर फ्रॉम दी एंट्रो लिटिल पोर्टल एम आई ऑडिबल देयर कामर सर यस वी कैन हियर यू ओके नाउ यू आर फ्रॉम द एंट्रो लिटिल पोर्टल फॉर टेकिंग द अनदर एंटीयर हाफ ऑफ द स्टेज ऑफ द योर वॉइस इज नॉट कमिंग एक्चुअली So are you getting my voice? Because I think either either I am not audible there or you are not audible here. Hello. Me. Come on, sir. Ah, am I am I audible there? You are audible. Am I audible? Yeah. Now, now you are audible. Okay. Fantastic. So, what I have done now is that all this while I was, uh, I was retrieving from the anterior side and passing from the posterior side. Now I have changed my trajectory because I wanted to go beyond the bone fragment. Okay. So now I am taking a bite from the anterior lateral aspect. Uh huh. That we we can see from yeah. the picture. ियंटी Okay, there is unfortunately this come through the this thing, uh, ice tongue. So I just have to retrieve this thread again. Mm. So those are my two posterior sutures. You can see those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We can right. very well see. This is my anterior ones. suture. Now I'm going to go in between these two for my last suture. Okay. Ashton, first Ashton. Ashton. Ashton, Ashton. Raspani. Okay, water, water check, पानी, ये thread खींच के रखो. Now again, I am going to come through here, so I can feel bone. Mm -hmm. I can feel bone. At this part, there is no bone. We are medial to the bone actually. Hmm, I am going medial to the bone. 
just peers and stay there. Don't, you don't need to kind of really try to come in. Ask our assistant to hold this, Aishtong. Mm -hmm. Then you come up and lift up the fragment to see where is it that you have come. Yeah, you can see? Yeah. And then you try to shuttle it across. Okay. Pakad ke rakhai aise? Aise pakad ke rakhai, isko pakad ke rakhai. Mm-hmm. Candela पीछे ले लो आप ना ठीक है कोई बात नहीं कोई बात नहीं मत करो just trying to triangulate to get to that uh, nitinol loop because it's at an angle and it's not kind mm -hmm. of coming in freely yeah here you go okay hold this बाकी के थ्रेस पकड़ लो। ओके। ना इफ आई वांट आई कैन स्टिल डिबेट एंड आई कैन टेक माय सेकेंड व्हाइट टाइगर स्लाइटली मोर एंटीरियरली। बट लेट अस सी हाउ इट रिड्यूसेस वेल एंड देन वी टेक अ कॉल ऑन दिस। आइस्टॉम। दोनों थ्रेस खींच के रखो ब्लू। You are doing this for two reasons. You are doing this, one is to, to restore strength mm -hmm. and second is to prevent impingement. So when you are reducing this, if mm -hmm. both these things are taken care of, you don't need to bother much about it. Mm -hmm. So this is how I am going to come down. Okay? Probably slightly close but… Uh, Little lift up. No, lift up to niche dhaba dunga mein, that's not an issue. Okay, let's sit. Give me the multifix. Dono threads keech ke rakho, ye sab chhoad do. Dono threads khali keech ke rakho. Rakesh, thoda haath ko ER karo. External rotation karo. Matlab, sorry. Bort tight hai. Thik hai, koi baat nahi, koi baat nahi, aise hi rakho. Aise hi rakho. बस इतना ही बस इंटरनल बस वाटर इन पानी जा रहा है मैलेट ब्लैक मार्क तक गो बस डेट्स इट कैन यू होल्ड इस Artery. Put that down here, baby. So I'll shuttle this. There are two kites here. So, do say blue, they don't go. No, 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 no. Yellow, blue. So facing myself here, I don't know if you are seeing the outer picture. No, no, this is coming out. Artery. No, sir, we are seeing outer picture. Oh, no, 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 artery. One second, no. I 
levantarlo. से निकाल लो खींच के रखो उसको बस खींच के रखो दस से सर शटल डेट अक्रॉस होल्ड इट योर ऐसे पकड़ के रखो मैं करता हूँ बाकी सब ना मत खाली सो यूल गो टिल द ब्लैक मार्क एंड देन यू विल ट्रैक्शन इट गिव अ ट्रैक्शन ऑन इट ओके रखो आप हैमर करो छोड़े नहीं राकेश आप हैमर करो गो 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 टिल वन सेकेंड वन सेकेंड टिल द ब्लैक मार्क या गो 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 दैट्स इट या सो दैट इज काइंड ऑफ संकन एंड नाइस होल्डर्स होल्ड इसको पकड़ो आई डोंट पुट इट इन द क्लीट्स बिकॉज आई डोंट वांट टू ओवर टेंशन इट ये निकल गया कैन समवन टेक द Once you're here, you got good purchase. That's good. Then go in an anti-clockwise manner. Hello. Yes. Can Sir, you how, how are you uh, actually assessing the tension on the cuff right so now? All I'm seeing is that the cuff is sitting in its crater. That's it. That's all that I'm seeing. I'm going to go in the cleaner. You can see how well the entire cuff is back on its crater here. now you may debate on this that this slight area out here might be a area of void i'm going to go and assess it from the glenohumeral space let me unload this anchor and then i'll talk to you about it okay sir okay just nikal lo nahi 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 is ko khali ho gaya ho gaya black color nikal lo khali anti clock was good yeah okay cut off going all the way ek minute do ke meko can you hold this chodo sab saath mein nahi dalte नीचे दिखाओ नीचे क्लोज कटर है कटर दो कुछ नहीं आई डू इट नो 
ओके मेरे को ये देना ग्रास पर देना मेरे को पकड़ के रखो मेरे को एक आर्थोस्कोपिक नाइफ है कुछ देना आर्थोस्कोपिक सिज़र दे देना आर्थोस्कोपिक सिज़र है वहाँ पे So if something like this happens where you feel that the thread limb is quite long, you can then hold it with a grasper and come from the opposite side and try to cut it off. Not the most desirable thing, but that's what you would need to do. Even this is blunt. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. So that is done. So you can see that the tension on the cuff is a question which was asked. Now two things. One is you don't want to strangulate it. So you're not audible. Yes, sir. So you're not audible, actually. I think we have we have been shifted to another case. Yeah, that's why that was a glitch over there. So this is uh, our seventh surgery. Uh, the piece all inside PCL reconstruction by Dr. Atik was there. Atik, sir, am I audible there? I think it, it takes two, three minutes more. It's a lag there. Hmm. Yeah, I think. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're right. Hello, Abhishek? Yeah, yeah, sir. Now, we are in the PCL OT, na? Yes, yes, we are in the PCL OT. Can you hear Atik, sir? Uh, I don't know, uh, sir. Must not Atik, sir, abhi nahi audible hai. I think the, that yes, microphone sir, is sir. not working. Wait a second, wait a second. The 4K mic. Uh, arthroscope, that's why you are seeing so much of that clear picture. No, no, college is our We have got a 4K arthroscope this time. Can you see, can, do you have the video feed? We have got a very good video feed of 4K system, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now you can have uh, Atik sir, uh, you can hear Atik sir as well. Hi, so. Uh, hi, hi Atik sir. No. Hi, hi, thank you guys. Thanks. So I'm here with uh, trying to do the all inside PCL. The anesthesia was given by Dr. Apurva, assisted by Dr. Puneet, and ably assisted by Sister Shashi and Amit. Okay, thank you, everybody. And I am Atik, of course. So I've made a uh, posterior portal. You can see an uh, image and I put a curate there. And I'm just trying to make a posterior socket. This is a flip cutter by Arthrex. A nice size, nine size. We made a graft of nines, which is not bad, which is very decent. And uh, we're just going to make a socket now. So you can see the flip cutter flipping now. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are very much audible. You are seeing from the anterolateral portal and you are putting the that uh, protector my from the I have a curate which I use. It's from the posterior medial portal. Okay, fine. So I just protect that so that, you know, it just saves you, that's all. So, Amit, if you can flip the flip cutter. Can you see the flip cutter flipping now? Yeah, yeah, we then can we'll see. Then we'll make a socket now. Yeah. So the graft size is 9 millimeters thickness and 9 centimeters in length. Okay. Uh, 2.5 in the femur socket, 2.5 in the tibia, tibia, and 4 centimeter is over the back part of the tibia, right? Okay. 
Okay, so we are good. So we have reflipped the graph now, uh, okay. the flip cutter now, and we are going taking it out, and we are going to pass the first shuttle here. We were 16 millimeters below the posterior part of the tibia. Okay, okay, to start with. So I'm just trying to pass a shuttle now. Give me a minute. So some you can show the uh, can you show the uh, 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 the graph to them how we created the graph. So can you see that my first shuttle coming in? Yes, sir. And can I get a suture retriever, please? Thank you. So I'm going to pull it out. So what has happened is I made a tibial tunnel and I'm pulling out my suture through the first shuttle, the, through the posterior medial portal. Portal. That's right. So the here the thing is everything is done through the posterior medial portal, mm -hmm. including passage of graph. Mm -hmm. So you are you are not worried about the uh, the killer turn and all that. Mm -hmm. It just goes directly in. Okay. Yeah. Equal color, equal color, equal Yeah. So can you show the outside image? Can somebody show the outside image? Yeah. So we are seeing the outside image actually. So if you can see, this is the posterior medial portal. Yeah. And this is my, uh, this is the tibial socket which I made mm -hmm. from here. And the suture from the there. Graft has come. Yeah. So also what I do is, I, I hook my uh, uh, shuttle on this mm -hmm. uh, suture retriever and go all the way in. Mm -hmm. The reason is simple, it tells me whether I'm entangling into the soft tissues or not. Okay. So here I'm not, you can see it's clear. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're doing any out, uh, is, uh, all inside ACL or PCL, just do this small thing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you sometimes end up entangling onto the, uh, uh, to the soft, soft tissues, issues. then it's 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 a it's a nightmare after that. Mm -hmm. It's happened to me, and uh, so I'm just telling you, don't get into it. So I'm you. I was using a 70 degree scope here. You can see the tunnel here. Okay. Can you see the socket? Here? Yeah, yeah, we can see them. So I'm now switching back to a 30 degrees. My 70 degrees job is done. Mm -hmm. I don't need the 70 degrees anymore. Okay. So you don't use your posterior medial portal for viewing. No, I don't view it with the posterior medial portal at all. Okay. I just use the... 70 degree. Yeah, it's easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I have a 70 degree, so it works. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you can view with that also. Mm -hmm. Or uh, even with, if it's easy, then you can just do it with the 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for now. Huh. So right now, I was viewing with the 70 degrees from the anterior lateral portal. Now I'm going to switch to the anterior medial portal. So I'm going to switch to the anterior, so you can see the, I'm sorry the image is not very, so you can see the PCL was totally gone, you can see that over here, I'll just clear it a bit more. That, can you see that? Now, PCL is a big fan-shaped structure. So right from almost going to, I'll take a high up. Unlike the ACL where you have to go really low and back, here you have to be relative anterior and high. So a good point is usually about three-fourths of a uh, centimeter in front and uh, below the articular cartilage, behind and below the articular cartilage. Just a rough guide. Or in the middle of the insurgent. Bita, saline khatam ho gaya, please change kar do. Saline change kar do, please. Someone, please change the saline. Thank you. So the entry point will be right through the middle of the footprint, right? Yeah. Middle of the it's a single bundle, so middle of the, definitely through the middle of the footprint. Just a minute, I'm just getting my saline in order. Thank you. Okay. So I'll just 
the dimensions with clear so that clear uh, yeah, distinction. Yeah. So can you see it now? That's the PCL. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, yes, you can see. Can see that clearly, I think. So I'm just clearing, just clearing the footprint. Yeah, I'm just clearing that for demo purposes. Normally, I don't. But you know, when you are doing live surgery, it's better to be. Can you see that? Yeah, yes. Sir. It's very clear now. Can you see that? Yes, sir. So this is somewhere where, where I'll enter where the here, somewhere. Okay? Yes, sir. So I'm changing my portal now. So now you'll go to the uh, anterolateral one. Anteromedial. Medial, medial, okay. Yeah, because I have to aim, you know. So can you see that? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'll go somewhere here. Hello, Amit. Aja, beta. So I'm going to, uh, you can use an outside in or an inside out. I'm very comfortable using the inside out, so I prefer doing that. So can you see that? That's the cartilage here. Can you see? Yes, sir, yes. And it's going all the way up, so I'll probably aim one minute. Why change for Okay, So I'll go somewhere here, high up. Can you see that? That's pretty high and anterior. I think we are good. Mm. You're happy with that? Yes. Can you see? I yes. think that's a good position to go in. Chalo. I'm going to tap for a little bit. So you guys happy with that position? Yes, sir. Yes. Bas, bas. Dira, dira karna. Ek second. Na. good. So I'm going to drill my uh, socket here. I'm going to take a standard reamer and ream here. I don't need a flip cutter or anything here. So you can, so I usually use my flip cutters for about four or five times. So it's because of this thing, I'm able to save on them because it's mm. expensive. So that's the reason I use this. So I'm going to make a 25 socket here. So there we are. So nine on top and nine below. So that's twenty almost. एक सेकंड ये थर्टी है क्या? हाँ, ट्वेंटी फाइव तक चले जाओ, चले जाओ आप ट्वेंटी फाइव का, चले जाओ, बस निकाल, निकाल। ओहो, सॉरी, एक बार इसको, सॉरी इट्स नीड्स टू बी टाइटेंड अप। लाया है ना? हाँ, इट्स कम आउट। सो आई मेड माय सॉकेट, सो नाउ आई पास माय सेकंड शटल। Amit, suture. Equal, equal, equal. So, 
Now we need to pull this out. Pull the wire out, please. Kinchlo, 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 Equal kar lo. Equal kar lo, beta. Good, good. No, push karo. No, no. Push karo. Kincho, kincho. Keep pulling. Ek na suture retriever de do mere ko. One minute. Okay, now pull. Gently. So I'm, I've come here. No, don't pull, don't pull. So I'm leaving this here. I will now switch back to the anterior lateral portal. Suture retriever, please. When I ask you to. Okay, just pull now. Both together, pull. Pull, pull, pull. Okay, so can you see this loop now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. I am delivering it into the posterior aspe aspect of the knee. Because I need to get this also out through the posterior medial portal. Mm. Because then I have to pass my graft from there. Okay? Okay, sir. So, so I have come through the posterior medial portal and I'm pulling out my uh, the sutures there. Yeah. Okay? So this will this shuttle will pull my graft into the femur mm. and the other shuttle will pull my graft into the and I will recheck here whether I'm free. You see I'm free, I'm not entangled. Mm. Can you see that? I'm very nicely free. Good. So now we will pass our graft. Have you shown them the graft? Amit, have you shown them? So that's my, can you see my tunnel in the femur? Mm. The socket? Yeah. Mm. So now I'll pass my graft into the femur and then into the tibia. So this is where the money is, putting the graft in. <laughs> So you can imagine my heartbeat and yours is at the same level right now. So I'd like to show you the graph. It's just getting done. I'll just show you the graph and I'll show you what I've done to make life easy and for easy for us to pull the graph in. So I'm using an arthritic system, the tightrope two with the uh, with the internal brace in it i just use that because i feel pcl is a very strong graft you need to just uh, 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 you need to have something in addition to that so that's what i'm saying so water is coming out so i'm sorry uh, saline is over so i'm just going to do that Meanwhile, the graph, any questions from anybody? I'll take them now till the graph is coming and my saline is coming. So, have you seen the outside picture? Yes, sir, we are seeing. You are seeing the outside picture? Yeah. Outside the Khadija. So, this, can you see this, the green one here? This is from the femur. And this is from the tibia. Is that clear? Yes, sir, we can see. Good. Thank you. And that's my posterior medial portal. That's the graph. And these are the two points. Okay. <coughs> Atik, sir? Yeah. Your choice of PCL reconstruction is single bundle or sometimes double bundle? I, 99% of the time, I do single bundle. I have dabbled with double bundle, <coughs> but I don't think it gave me any difference. It gave me more of a heartache, to be very honest. So I'm okay with the single bundle. But yeah, theoretically, yes, in very heavy people, wrestlers and all, you can do a double bundle, but quite frankly, I have not seen any advantage in my patients. But yes, theoretically, yes, a double bundle in heavier patients, athletes, may be a better option. But so far, I have just done few double bundles, but I did not... So, there is a request. Yeah. They need to see a femoral socket, a little panoramic kind of uh, on, the, on the femoral condyle. Yeah, just let the saline come. Give me, okay. two, give me two minutes. I'm sorry. Just give me two minutes. Uh, do you recognize shiny white fibers for making TBL tunnel for PCL? Or it's sorry? like uh, the shiny white fibers destroyed by Lapard. Yeah. 
yeah, for yeah. making the TBL tunnel. Do you use that as a landmark or no, it's no, like? No, no. I clear the posterior part. The moment you clear the posterior, you reach the champagne drop off and you okay. are, and you put your jig in. I go 16 millimeters below. Okay. Okay, sir. It's Thank you. Uh, and I take post-op x-rays. I've been taking post-op x-rays and I know where my tunnel is heading. So, you know, I've been checking them again and again. So, so do, do you ever use, make use of CRM while drilling this uh, TBL tunnel? Honestly, no. Only in pediatric. Okay. I have not used the CM. I don't use the CM. And one more question, sir. In in a scenario of multi-ligament, yeah. when you are doing PCL with the MCL, so how do you avoid this tunnel conversions or tunnel coalescence? So what I do is when I am doing my, I make these tunnels first and then I start making the MCL tunnels. And if the thread gets entangled, you know you are going into that. When you pass your wire, yes. you know. So, you, so before you pass your graphs, you get your wires and all in place and then you know that if, if you are drilling and the thread inside this gets entangled, you know okay. you stop. So you after passing the wires or threads, uh, you will start with the MCL yes, tunnel? Yes, okay. yes, yes. I do not pass my graphs okay. because I know that I am going wrong then, right? Okay, if I sir. pass my graphs, I mess up with my graphs. So yes. Okay, okay, sir. Even when Thank I you. do a, in the ACL also, when I am doing a LET and making, I always do my threading first. Do the before passing the graph, I make the tunnel for the thing and then check, or ALL or whatever I'm doing. I check no, always. Sir. Okay. Sir. So that just saves a bit of. Okay. Okay, buta. Chal nahi ra, buta. Buta chal nahi. Oh, ek needle de do. Thank you. So the saline has come and I think I should be able to show you guys. So you can see that it's a high, can you see that? So it's uh, there. A little bit more. Yeah, it's very high. Okay. It's almost scruffing the anterior cartilage, you can see that. So, better dhyan se gir jau. So I'm passing my now. So can can you come in the outside picture? I want to show something. If you don't mind, okay, just hold it. Just hold. It's okay. Just it's inside. So this is the outside picture. Uh, can you see this? This is our graft. No, no, we cannot. Outside picture, please. Outside picture, please. Can uh, can you see the outside picture? Uh, we are zooming in, sir. Little bit more. I think we can make this outside picture the main picture, so that we can appreciate more. Yeah, you no, because I need to show you the outside picture. I need to show you the graft first. Yeah, yeah, we can see, sir. Okay, so this is the graft. It's a nine millimeter graft, and this is the uh, our button, the uh, tight rope too. I have lengthened it. So what I do is I lengthen. I'm using the ABS on on the tibia side and the regular uh, tight rope on the femoral side. The, so I have lengthened these. Yes, sir. The advantage of yeah, this yeah. is compared to others is you can lengthen these. Okay. Because what happens when you lengthen this, you can pass the buttons first and then pull the graph in. Okay. So it becomes easier for you to pull in. I'll see. So I think you should stick to the outside picture first. I uh, remain to the outside picture. And now I'm mm. passing. Amit, beta, up over the Atik sir? Yeah. Arun here. Hi Arun, how are you? I'm fine. Sir, uh, do you drill your tunnels exactly the same size your graft is or you drill a millimeter or half more than your actual graft size for I PCL? For PCL, I like to do 0.5 more but I've been dabbing with doing the same thing. Because I lengthen the graft, uh, with the same you're able to pull it in. Okay. So now you'll see the, can you see the, uh, the threads of the tight rope have come in? Can you see that? Yes, yes. So I'm keeping it inside the socket only. The outside picture is not clear. Kindly ask your cameraman. Yeah, now it's clear. Yeah. Chalo, Amir. So we are pulling the graph. Tera haat aara, beta. You can't help it. Chalo, jau. Incho. Incho. Jau. 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 So the button has come now. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So 
you can see the graft is not come at all. So I'm pulling now, the button is flipped. I'm pulling from outside, can you see that? Yes sir, we can appreciate. Yeah, so now I'm going to pass my graft. The femoral side. So you can understand the importance of what I showed you of that shuttling, railroading or shuttling, whatever you call it, so that there's no entanglement, entanglement of the soft tissues. So I'm going to pass my graft in now. Can you see the graft coming in? Yes, sir. Dr. Atik. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, Dr. Siddhar. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Hi. Sir, uh, while passing a graft at this step, yeah. does it <coughs> ever get stuck at this edge of the femoral uh, tunnel? It can. Theoretically, it can. Uh, but normally you don't find that issue. No, I have not found it because, see, I am telling you, the lengthening has really helped me. No, while you are shortening your loop, yeah. that time when the graft reaches the edge of the tunnel, One where second. it has to take that acute bend. No, no, so far not had a problem, but okay. yes, I agree with you, can happen. I have had two or three times that was a struggle point. I can't hear you, I am sorry. So now what I'm doing is, I think you need to see this now, the outside picture, please. Can you see I'm holding the ABS button? Hello? Are we out? Yeah, we can see, sir. So, wait, wait, wait. so always, this is where you should hold, hold the ABB, ABS. Never the two threads, because if you pull the two thread, it'll tighten. So over here. So what I do is, I do not pass this directly. I use a... I use another suture loop here. So you can see, we use another suture loop here and then I pull the suture loop in and then get the graft out. It just uh, prevents you from tightening your ABS. Just hold this little tight. Okay, so I'm pulling it now. Don't know, okay, but it's okay. Outside picture is, uh, can be main picture. Okay. Okay, so I'm pulling the thing inside. So can you see? I've got the loop now inside. Can you see that? Now yes, I'm pulling sir. the loop out. So the ABS has come out now. Can you see that going down? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I think five minutes and we should be done. You need young eyes for this, Amit. See, like mine, I'm a young guy. Can you, are you on the outside picture? Can yes, you see sir. Can you see this now? Tight it up. Tight it up. Can I put it down? So you can see the graft is going inside the tunnel. Can you see that? No, we are not seeing the inside picture. Okay, inside the graft. Wait a minute. Just I'll show you one minute. I'll show you the inside, and then we'll go to the outside. Can you see? No, no, you are not saying inside picture. Inside picture, please, kar do. switch, kar do, please. One second, kar do. Amit, you can open tight. Kar do, thoda sa. Switch, you can see. Switch, you can see. So, you can see that. This is way below. Can you see that? Yes, sir. And that's up. No, no, we are not saying inside picture, sir, still. 
So can you see the outside? The graph is with me. Can you see this? Yeah, yeah, that we can see. Yeah, yeah, that we can see. अब ऊपर थोड़ा सा टाइट कर दो उसको. शाबाश. थोड़ा सा टाइट कर दो. Yeah, that's good. बस. That's enough. Hold it tight now, okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Can you see the inside? Yeah, now we can see both. So you can see that. That's the graph there, and then I am trying to show you going way down. Can you see that? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So I'm I'm just pulling this. I'll show you the inside picture later. I'm just doing the outside part now. Pakad ke rakho. Bahut dena bata. So I'm pulling the graph. So graph is. Can you see that? The moment I pull the graph, even the tibia is coming forward. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Can you see that? I'm leaving it now. So can can you see that? Yes, when sir. When I tighten, it will come forward. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Let's tighten this. So I'm going to tighten this in 90 degrees almost, like this. Uh, can I have a button, ABS button, please? So I I normally tie the internal brace over the button only. There's a two holes there, so I keep it a little lax because it shouldn't shield the graft itself. So, uh, so better you have to. Doctor Puneet is going to push the tibia forward. Can you see that? Yes, sir. And now I'm going to just tighten it. Can you see it going forward? Yeah. Artery the doctor. Let us pull this forward as much as you can. Yeah, good. I have tightened it. Now you leave that. Leave that. Leave that. Can you see that? Yes, sir. No answer. Push it forward yeah, as much as you can. Then I'll just tie a knot here. I normally tie a knot because uh, there's always some creep which happens. So I tie a knot so I uh, convert the advantage of a uh, of a. Adjustable loop to a fixed loop. Knife, please. just just loosely tie the that gives an advantage so whatever people who believe in internal bracing yes good don't believe that's also fine i just feel that it adds a little bit of a strength it gives me a peaceful night sleep so that's okay Please. Inside picture, sir. Yeah, I'm getting to that. Slightly out of focus. पंचर कर दो थोड़ा सा, थोड़ा सा पंचर कर दो। So can you see that? That's the inside picture. No, we can't see, sir. Are you on the outside picture only? Yeah, we are on the outside picture.
Now we can see. Can you see that's the piece here? Can you see that? Yes, sir. We can appreciate a nice dark piece here. Yeah. Now ACL has also become torn. Yeah, torn the laxity has gone. ACL yeah. laxity. So thank you. Thank Wonderful, you. sir. Thank you so much. Everybody has enjoyed this surgery. Thank you so much. So much to learn. Yeah. Thanks, uh, sir. Thanks a lot. Hello, Any may I know who's there? Yeah, this is Dr. Pandey, Vinay. Ah, when I was, we are moving to the OT, uh, OT uh, uh, with the meniscal surgery. Yes, yes, yes. So Vikram Maskar is going to perform meniscal yeah, repair. And uh, just give us one minute. Have to so the video feed off. Can you put off my mic, please? Yes, we can see. नहीं नहीं शेवर का फुट पेडल दे दीजिए विक्रम वी कैन हियर यू यार तू लेके निकल ना विक्रम हाय विनय हाय एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू दिस मेनिस्किस रिपेयर हाय थोड़ी दूर आई एम डॉक्टर विक्रम मस्कर विथ मी आई हैव डॉक्टर एमर डॉक्टर प्रज्वल हरिपाल सिस्टर शांति टू सपोर्ट मी थ्रू दिस सो यू कैन नाउ इफ समबडी कैन फोकस ऑन टू द आर्थ्रोस्कोपिक इमेज सो Uh, what you can see now we can see only outside we are now we can see sir most ideal one uh, for a repair so this is a 21 year old gentleman coco player um history of uh, can i get some silence yeah history of a sudden uh, squatting incident he tried getting up and for following that started developing pain in the in the knee no form of instability i've done a preliminary uh, arthroscopy that shows the acl to be very good the lateral meniscus is perfect here if you look at it what i expected on the mri was definitely a horizontal component that let's go into the meniscus here which you can see with my shaver you've got a uh, some kind of a root compromise which you can see here lots of nobody is that, can anyone hear me yeah yeah vikram we can hear i am vinay no respond vikram Hello. Can I get these guys online? Okay. Hello. Hello. Can someone hear me? Yeah. Hello, Vikram. Anyone hear me? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. So I'm getting yes. no response. So I'll just continue. Hello, Abhishek. Every time I can hear you guys. So 21-year-old Coco player uh, got yes, up sir. from a squatting position, followed by sudden onset of pain. And this is what we have. Not your ideal meniscus repair case. But let's see what we can salvage. He's just 21. Uh, alignment seems fine to me. So what I've done Vikram? generally is done a diagnostic arthroscopy. Hello. Uh, the ACL is good. Lateral compartment is great. I did a MCL prycra. So wonderful that you can see the medial compartment in and out. So I prefer doing this regularly for all my uh, my cases because it gives me uh, room to put in my jigs and whatever I want to. I'm going to take out elements that are not salvageable <laughs> in the white white zone especially the flap that you can see here it requires a little bit of patience we get get rid of it as fast as we Hello can. Vikram So on the MRI I could see a horizontal tear on the posterior horn of the Vikram can you hear us and there was an element of extrusion yes. of the meniscus hence i suspected that there'd be some kind of root compromise in this patient um can i have a punch sister if you don't mind vikram thank you yeah can you hear me now absolutely loud hey, and clear himanshu here hi how are you buddy yeah. so till now we have seen that it is a complex tear involving the root in the posterior yeah. part of the medial meniscus Absolutely. and you have done a picrusting open the yes. joint and yes. now you are just trying to remove the the degenerated white white zone Absolutely. part Absolutely that's what I'm doing and there is a horizontal cleavage kind of a tear in the posterior horn yes. which you will try to repair Get back yes Absolutely 
We'll have a look, look at the root. I did suspect some kind of root compromise in this patient. Well, let's see uh, whether it, it you know, really and truly has that. All right. I'm getting rid of all the white, white part, which is not going to be a component of my repair. Trying to get hold of this goose neck. So it looks like that almost 60% of the posterior horn is almost gone into gone, this. Gone, yes. Can I have a shaver, please? whatever I can. So Vikram, just for the sake of audience, how yeah. do you balance the meniscus or what are your criteria to stop chopping off the meniscus at this yeah, point? Yeah, so any flappy components roaming around like this are not amenable to repair because they don't have a brother or a sister next to them. So they should be approximatable, let's put it that way, all right? And because uh, all these components are later on going to give you trouble. Right? So you need to get rid of them as soon as you can. And then you get a better picture of where the, uh, the actual tear lies and what are your points that you're going to take care of. I'm going to switch portals now. All right? So I'm going to look from the medial side and work on the other aspect. Because that will give me a better access to my, so don't, give me a punch please. So don't be, uh, you know, very fixated upon using your same portals. Okay, so you should be flexible with your portals. You saw me struggling, cutting this goose's neck off, but now you'll see it goes low behold. All right, it goes off quite easily because I got a good hold of it from this end. Right, and gives you a better perspective about the meniscus also. So I've got rid of this. Can I have the shaver, sister? Definitely, it's all about the direct access to the... Direct access, but sometimes we tend to beat a dead horse and we keep trying to reach there. Uh, that's sometimes just to save the little effort which we yeah, take take to switch more, the portals. So be very quick and then you can, you can balance it much better. Yeah, so here we are. The lunch was great, Dr. Ashish, wonderful. I felt like staying, staying back, having some more lunch. It was so good. It's open for next one and a half I hours. Know, I know, I think uh, let's get done with this quickly and I can have some lovely kebabs there. Okay, give me some cautery, please. Okay, so, so Vikram, can we have yeah. some more valgus stress? We want to see yes, where yes, sir, exactly sir, sir. is this tear till the capsule yes, part. Yes. Here yes. we are. Can you, can you see? Can I get a probe, please? Let me just uh, show them what's happening. So remember now I'm looking through my uh, medial portal and I'm working through my uh, lateral portal. Okay, so I've changed my direction because I wanted to eat that little part. All right, so this is our tear, which you can see. Are you guys good to see the posterior extent? Yes, we can see. Am I see. showing you adequately well? Yes, Please yes. do stop me if at any stage you guys, you guys can't see. So this component, so the root's not too bad. I think it's like a grade one kind of a thing. I don't think I'll have to do much. So I had everything ready for my root repair because there's an element of extrusion there. And here we, lo behold, we've got our horizontal tear. Anything more I can show you or you're good for me to proceed? So, so can we go on the window one and can we see the ramp area? Yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah, exactly sure, what That's what you want to yeah. see. Let's get there. All right, here we are. So how do you categorize this tear? What kind of tear is this? So this is a horizontal degenerated tear. That's it. That's my categorization. Degenerated, it is a traumatic He's tear a sports, in 21. Sports guy, but this kind of, uh, you know, for me, horizontal tears are more often than not degenerative, meaning there is a component of degeneration or overuse. You could call it whatever you want, but it's not purely that particular day that has caused this, it's something that's been happening over a period of time that's led to what we are seeing today. So possibly that day playing Coco, getting up from a seated position may have been the last nail in his coffin, but uh, uh, possibly this kind of issue must have been going on for quite some time. So I'm just getting rid of the components which I feel may not be, I mean, you can do this in the end also, there's no problem, but just to improve my visualization, Okay, so now we've got our, can I have my red rasp, please, my diamond rasp? So the important thing to remember, horizontal tears don't run into surgery. Treat them conservatively, because more often than not, you're likely to have an unhappy patient. But there is a group of horizontal tears, especially the ones with cysts, all right, mm -hmm. which where the patient has mechanical symptoms. 
And in such cases, repair can be a mode of relief in them. So in those kind of cases, it's a good idea to, uh, to you know, go in rather quickly. But if you do not have that, you do not have a flap component, like there was a flap in this particular case, you may more often than not, uh, not have a very happy patient at the end of the procedure. So, so, Vikram, I, yeah. so this is something which we see in most of our degenerative tears that yes. they present to us. It's a complex tear and once we divide it, we have two flaps. It's a horizontal yes. tear. Yes. So if we don't close it, probably we, the patient can have a parameniscal cyst in future. Absolutely. So is it always advisable in your practice to do a complex meniscus meniscectomy and then a repair for the tear? So it depends on the age of the patient. Uh, well, a 21-year-old with these kind of symptoms, sporting guy, I definitely give him an opportunity and try to preserve his meniscus wherever it is. Let's reverse the situation. Let's say there was no flap component. I had a similar patient, 55-year-old, sorry, no arthroscopy for me, lots of rehab, and then eventually maybe an arthroscopy once the patient is, uh, uh, you know, asked for it. Because for me, these patients require a lot of counseling. They happen mainly in middle-aged patients, not so common in younger. So this is an aberration, so hence I'm going ahead and repairing this patient. But otherwise, the age group is usually a middle-aged age group, not at this particular age that we are actually moving. So I think I've done most of my work I should be doing from my medial side. I'm going to switch portals, all right? I'm going to go in through my, yeah. So I've, I've gone on to the medial side through my, um, Lateral portal, all right? So, Evan, can I have some good valgus from you, yeah. please? Yeah, a little bit here. Just, just, just focus. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Great. Okay, so this is what we've got now, all right? So, can I have a shaver, please, once more? So, so I say it's like looks like a fish mouth tear. Absolutely, that's the, that's the word for this tear. It is a fish mouth tear, and uh, you basically shut the fish's mouth at the end of the day. So Believe me, this is the toughest part of the surgery is to remove this flap, which this is flap? lying. Yes. It's important to get rid of it at whichever stage because any flap is going to trouble you. So, and you know, the, the lateral meniscus gets eaten up pretty well. The medial meniscus, somehow I've noticed, when it comes to a shaver, is not the best meniscus to be eaten up. Can I have the small punch, if you don't mind, my sir? Jo apne abhi diya tha mujhe? Abhi jo diya tha? Okay, let's go ahead. So what's your plan for this horizontal cleavage? I'm going to shut the fish's mouth. That's that it. We all are anticipating that, but how you're going to do that with it? Okay, all inside so I'm going to use the sequent, okay. which is my go-to device for these kind of tears, where I have an affordable patient. So can you just elaborate on what sequent so is? The it's sequent is a all inside device. And the good thing about this device is it's not only one. So it's very cost effective. It's got seven devices or four devices fixed in one. It's a very, very cost-effective and wonderful device, uh, which helps in a great way in, uh, in you know, uh, uh, optimizing your meniscus repairs, not only as being a good meniscus repair device, but also being rather cost-effective. Otherwise, all inside devices are rather expensive. Can I have a little down so that I can see the get, get to the top of the meniscus? And uh, so, they're basically connect, they're seven peak, uh, you know, anchors connected with a fiber wire, all right? Can I have the, uh, my sleeve, please? If you don't mind. I think I want you to see the top of the. So let's, can we just go to the, can you open a seven, please? Okay. So can we, can we go into the table for a second so that I can hold, I can show them? Boss, can you hold the scope for me for a second? Yeah, let me just show them the sequence. Can I have the sequence here? All right, can someone focus? Can someone focus here? All right, I can come in front of it. Okay, so guys, this is the sequent, all right, seven. This is its sleeve. So we you are not able out. to see the outside picture, Vikram. Can you see the outside picture? No, we cannot. Okay, can I, can I get the uh, audience to see the outside picture, please? Outside night for focus, all right? Yeah, here, oh, I'm sorry, that's the other one. Okay, now can you see me? No, we can just see the arthroscopic picture. Okay. Yeah. Yes, now we can see. Now you can see. All right, this is the sequent. All right, these are, this is the trigger. Uh, uh, this is the sleeve. All right, you've got markings up to 20 
written on it like a depth gauge. Now I've taken out the sleeve, and here you can see multiple devices attached to each other, seven of them. All right, so you put back this sleeve on top. All right, this is the trigger you use to send in your devices. Uh, this can put it in two modes, a freewheeling mode or a ratchet mode. So to start with, we always push it in front. We call it a freewheeling mode because you want the thread to move here. And I usually, on the, in the medium menace case, 18 to 20 is a good depth to actually cut this on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it at 20. It's like seven shots of a Diwali cracker. You just burn it once. Absolutely. I call it the AK-47. So it's great. All right. So here we are again. All right. Let's get back. So I'll take you through the process as I, as I go about it. Okay, so this is my sleeve. I'm going in with my sleeve now first. Okay. Can you just tell us yeah. that is there any kind of uh, minisco tibial lift off also on this? I have created it, no, with my, my, my pie crusting to some extent. Okay. Yeah, so it's a part of the pie crusting process, but trust me, these parts heal up pretty well. Okay, so my first aim is to get my meniscus device over my meniscus on top. So my sleeve plays a very important role in this because it not only acts as a retractor, but also helps me introduce my meniscus repair device. So can I get it out, Ahmed, if you don't mind? Thanks, buddy. All right, so here I am. So side by chance, if I can't get, get through it there, you can see, can everyone see? I've got on top of my meniscus. Yes, we can see that. Right, and, and here it's very important to have it in an L shape, concave upwards, all right? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put my first anchor up on top. Here I go, all right? The first time, all we do is pull the trigger forward and pull it back and deploy our first anchor. And you hear that click. And then what I do is I gradually pull it out. Now I need adequate length of suture. So this is a trick, you take it a little bit towards the notch. All right, get adequate length of suture. Now find your inferior leaflet. Once you've found your inferior leaflet, go bang, all right? So when you go bang, the important thing here is you need to rotate this, all right? So you rotate it 360 once, 360 twice, two full circles in a clockwise manner, then deploy your device here. So you got your second suture in, all right? And now with slow ringing movements, I try to take out my, uh, my sleeve out. So here you can see, I've got this. Now I change, now I need to approximate these two ends. So what do I do? The water is getting off, guy. Can I get the pump on? Somebody change the water. So Vikram, what was Somebody the idea of the water, twisting please? it 360 degrees twice? So that's because it, it kind of prevents the previous one, uh, previous anchor from uh, coming out. So it creates a kind of a knot around that area that prevents it from uh, getting redeployed in the joint. Then I take it into ratchet mode. So here you can see me in ratchet mode. I've got it closed, all right? And I'm gonna now pull on it. All right, can you see me pull? Now you can see it approximate. Can you see it approximate? Yes, we can see it. Yes? Very well. Okay, so that's where we've gone. So we've got one part of the mouth shut. Uh, so like a Bell's palsy patient. Now we've, we move on to the next. I've created adequate length. Now boom for superior surface of the meniscus too. So here you need to be damn sure that you are number one, concave side up. Now every time I put this in, I'm gonna rotate 360 degrees twice, deploy, shoot, forward, take it out, yes? That's where I've got it there. I pull my ratchet mode in, reduce it to the closed end, and then pull on it gradually. So what I do is a continuous suture. So can you see? Yes. It's a continuous fashion in the way the meniscus repair is happening. Yes. Now, I go in for my fourth implant, right? Now here I am again. Again, I've got adequate length. Boom, I've got in, all right? Now once I've gone in, one, two, all right? And then bang, we've got it in, all right? Now very, very slowly get this out. Now when I've got it out, again, my this thing moves in, get into ratchet mode, pull, 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 right? Yes, we can see. You can see it going, all right. 
Now we roll on top again. Find our friend on top. Uh, here we are. So this what? kind of device is uh, helpful for this particular kind of a tool? No, I do them for everything. It's, it's, a, it's a universal device. For me, it's my go-to device for uh, bucket handle tears, you name it. Even radial tears, you can get great radial tear repairs with this particular device. It's, it's really, really uh, versatile in its uh, uh, construct and its predictability and the way it works. It requires a little bit of uh, technical expertise and getting used to. So initially, it wouldn't be too unhappy with your failures, but uh, can you just hold this? Sometimes this trigger gets a bit, can you hold this? Sir? Okay, can I just get this trigger in forward? Thanks, buddy. All right, so this is where we've got our last guy now coming in. All right, but it's a little, it requires a little bit of technical, uh, you know, to get used to it, maybe use it on a few sawbone models, or not sawbone, sorry, or cadavers and stuff, and then get back to it because, um, uh, this seven, you need to keep your concentration going uh, throughout the procedure, but all for the good of the patient, because the patient feels quite, uh, you know, uh, comfortable at the end of it. So here I am getting my last bit. Yeah. Okay. And I think we've got one more left. So I think I'll go for one more. Here we've got one on top. And my last comes here. For the time being, I'm going to put some more. I'm going to change my portal. So here what is go. the distance that you keep in between two bikes? So I just wanted to close at the end of it. Here I'm a little more fastidious because I have the opportunity of being as close as I can, but about 0.5 millimeters. And if you can see, I go in a Z-shaped manner, right? So this is where I've got my in. Can I have my knot cutter, please? So if I heard it's 0.5 millimeter? Yeah, approximately 0.5 uh, centimeter, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, can I get this uh, in? For five millimeter distance on top to bottom. So this is in a zigzag fashion. So if you look at me, the top two will be about 0.5 centimeter away from each other. However, the lower suture or the lower bite that I'm taking may be um, uh, a, a wee bit closer somewhere in between. Because remember, this is a continuous loop, right? So I'm done with this side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now shift my whole work again, like the way we saw it the last time. So I'm going to change my portal. I've got to close this part also a little bit. So let's let's move on to this. Can I have a straight artery, sister? Haripal, mera wala de dena. Straight artery. All right. So you can see there's a little bit of a horizontal component on the other side also, which I'm going to take care of. So I like dilating my portals nicely with a straight artery, which gives me direct access to where I want to work. So that's that's damn important for me. Can I have my sleeve, sister? And ek aur saath ka khol dijiye, sir, please. All right, so now we're moving slowly from the posterior on towards the body of the meniscus. Um, so we're going to do the, a similar exercise to close the whole one as we go ahead. Uh, so once they're ready with their seven one, I'm going to start with that. I like the seven because cost effective wise, they almost work out to be the same and uh, uh, you know, more the merrier. So at least you have sometimes couple don't fire or, uh, you know, there can be some kind of unpredictability on table. And uh, for a few penny more, uh, you're better off opening the seven because it doesn't make much of a difference uh, uh, cost effective wise. So what is the size of suture in this number two so zero? The, yeah, zero. It's, it's, it's a two O uh, fiber wire, uh, equivalent of the Comed, uh, you know, fiber wire. And uh, that's how it works. So can I get this? Do you have any experience of suture entanglement with this device sometimes? Never. I've never, never. had suture entanglement. The issues that you mainly will... F Can you hold the sleeve, please, somebody? So this device looks quite something? fascinating. We want to know what are the difficulties that you have faced in initial period when you started using so this. So the initial period were basic. Can you take it out, my dear? So the basic issues that you will face initial period are non-deployment of anchors. Because till you master the art of pushing this adequately deep. If you can see here, I'm very particular that my sleeve is on the meniscus while I'm banging it. You can have a group of sutures that pull out. That's the main issue with this kind of a device. Otherwise, trust me, there'd be a reason why I'd move on to it because I'm... I'm Vikram, if uh, one of the anchor doesn't deploy, then Correct. the whole construct can become loose? Not really, actually. So that's what a lot of other companies would tell you. But if you tug on one, because ultimately it's that device that doesn't, but the suture is one. So by tractioning it, you can actually flip that device posteriorly, right? 
And when you flip that device posteriorly, it's almost like a, you know, an anchor which is not working. Otherwise, you know, many times our uh, fast fix don't, uh, you know, deploy perfectly. And as a consequence, uh, we may just leave uh, the device posteriorly as long as it's not coming into the joint. It's basically the same uh, principle here that happens. And uh, so you, here you can see I've gone on to my third, right? We're getting this guy all the way where we want him to go. All right, here we are on to our fourth anchor. So Vikram, just a cost-effective uh, approach. Is it possible that if three are used, we cut the suture and uh, keep the device? Get I it can't mysterious? unfortunately say that in public, but you understand what that means. Yes. So nowadays we are in India, so we need cost-effective uh, devices. We do a lot of good surgery here, but we need to be sure that uh, we are fr it's friendly to the patient also at the end of the day. So yes, uh, those are possibilities here. I wouldn't advocate that in public, but if you've got good uh, ways of preserving it, then uh, not a, I mean, worth a try at the end of the day. Yeah. Do you have any experience of suture irritation, so much sutures never, never, in never, such never, a never. small it's area? The same, it's the same group of sutures that you otherwise have when you uh, basically use any other all, uh, all suture or normal uh, meniscus, uh, uh, you know, all inside devices. Not much of a difference. So Vikram, this construct becomes very rigid and uh, can lead to some chondral uh, Okay, so abrasion. it's not rigid. I'll tell you why it's not rigid. Because if you can see the way I'm pulling it, I have control as to how much I want to pull it. So if I decide I don't want it this, this tight, I can always leave it. I mean, there's a possibility of me leaving it slightly loose. That doesn't affect the whole construct. So that's the beauty of this construct is you can titrate the tightness of your... Uh, uh, of your repair. So uh, that's the thing. Yes, of course, there are anti grade suture passers which let you tighten sutures in a way that, uh, you know, you have no, uh, uh, you know, you can, you can actually tie a knot and make sure that there is no uh, over constraining of your repair. But if you ask me, uh, this has that added advantage over using standard all inside uh, two uh, anchor devices. So we have seen you suturing it so well. So do you think you need to do something to increase the biology at this area? Yeah, wonderful. I was anticipating that question to start with. Now, he's 21. So because he's 21, number one is his age. Number two is the fact that he had no cyst formation posteriorly. Uh, I would basically leave it to his own biology because unfortunately, biological augmentation, there is no conclusive evidence to prove that it actually works to perfection. Uh, can I have the wand, please? Yeah. It is a great uh, uh, thought in the right direction, and I use it myself. But as of now, its role vis-a-vis -vis, uh, meniscus repair is not yet fully established. Until the time it's not fully established, I believe in, in basically debriding the meniscus adequately well before you, uh, you know, uh, make sure that you go all the way to the capsule at the back uh, use your rasp perfectly, use your shaver, go into the tear, make sure that everything else is eaten up so well, and then go ahead with your repair. So I, I, I would rely more on that. In this particular tear, no fibrin clot. Uh, I tend to use fibrin clot off and on, especially when I would do it in a relatively older individual with uh, degenerative changes. In this kid, I think I'm, I'm happy. No microfractures in the notch? No, nothing, nothing at all. So I believe that doing pike sting, we do a yeah. lot of trephination on the capsular absolutely, side also. Absolutely, absolutely. So you see the amount here, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And you hit the nail on the head. I could actually put one more here, maybe a four going from the side, if you'd like to have a look at that, because that'll close can, up Can we part. have a comment on of this, or Professor Rajkumar, sir, who has done a lot of work on uh, meniscal repair and bi uh, with the biology as well? Rajkumar, sir. It's always good to have my teacher there. Hi, sir. You can take this one. All right, so I think we are we are good with that. No, Vikram, uh, yeah. you Hi, are sir. good uh, at what you have done. It is nice to see this meniscus uh, settling down like that. Having said that, the question what Arun was asking was how to improve the biology. Correct. Correct. Uh, one thing is you are doing pie crusting, that is one way of improving your biology. Mm -hmm. Then you Can do trephination of the meniscus itself if it is a chronic tear. Okay. The third thing is we all know we have to do a 
micro fracture. Correct. The fourth thing is uh, you can use fibrin clot. You can use PRP also. So there are different ways to skin a cat. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we need to address the biology as well as the surgical technique augmenting your repair. That should be the way to go. Agreed. Okay? Agreed, sir. So one Agreed. question if I'm allowed to ask. Sure, sir. Go ahead. Um, apart from the age that you take as a criteria to repair the meniscus, uh -huh. What other criteria do you use to say that I want to repair this meniscus or I want to divide this meniscus? So for me, there are tears waiting to heal and there are tears not waiting to heal. And radial tears are tears which are not waiting to heal, like your sleeve, the charka khollo. Radial tears are uh, tears that are not waiting to heal. Pani khatam ho gaya bhai sir, please. Okay, so radial tears are tears that are not waiting to heal and vertical tears are tears that are waiting to heal. Horizontal tears can come somewhere in between. So for me, repairing criteria is wherever I can save the meniscus. Little flap lesions, I tend to debride, I tend to take out. Uh, wherever I can approximate my meniscus to the capsule, if it's a vertical tear, I would do that in most cases uh, whatsoever. In, uh, uh, what can I say? Let's say if it's a complex tear with hardly any meniscus tissue, Everything is in, uh, in tatters, I would take it off. For me, age is not a criteria. For me, biological status of the joint uh, is the criteria to repair my tears. Uh, chronic, well, uh, vis -vis, uh, uh, vertical tears, for me, the time period is any time. I can even do it up to six months if I can get my medicine. So Vikram, ah. just to uh, intervene here, yeah. a quick uh, outside picture, and yeah. can you tell me your landmarks to do the pie cresting? Okay, and can I just uh, put this part and then I can, okay. I think my hands will get a little free. Can I do that then, sir, if you don't mind? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I'll ahead. just get my hands a little free here and then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll be able to take you through that. Okay, so I'm just going to... Okay, so here we've got a complication, so welcome. This is what we wanted to see. Yeah, can you see this didn't deploy? Yes. Right? You can see. So now what am I going to do? All right. So what I'm going to do, can you come out now? Can I have a look outside? I'm glad this happened. For me, this is important to show you. So you see this is not deployed. Okay. So now I need to use this thing again. So what would I do in this particular situation? So what I would do is I'd first get this guy into ratchet mode. Can someone show you? So I'm on ratchet mode and I'll pull out the, this thing here. So you can see the, the thread is so long and you've got a little uh, device stuck on top. Right? So now what we do, can someone come here? I need to show them how I, uh, how I basically get out of this situation. Can someone come here? Yes, sir. Can number 11 blade? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So first you make this long enough, all right? So when you, when, once you've made this thread long enough, all right, you need to make it into a figure of eight pattern. So I'm going one loop around my, uh, you know, my uh, one thread and another loop around my thread. So it's figure of eight. You cannot see it Isko on a larger screen. Can you see, show here, my dear? Okay, see. Take a minute, let me just come here. Okay, so this is a little knot. Can you see this? There's a little knot created on the tip of the thread. Yes. Can this be seen? Yes, yes. So this is not a simple knot. So this is a figure of eight knot. That means what I've done is, so normally in, in, a, in a normal knot, you take two threads, tie them together. Here what I do is I take two, cross them like this, get one thread to go all around once again. All right, so you've got one arm of the thread making a figure of eight around the other arm and then you pull it through. So it's like a double knot, as you call it. So it's big enough to act as your anchor in the posterior capsule. So that's so the way so we go about So is this it. your way of doing it or it's a defined technique? There's no defined it. technique here. I think some, I mean, uh, it, it's a matter of, there are multiple ways that the, uh, uh, you know, the reps will teach you how to do it. I figured this out to be a rather, uh, you know, effective way of getting a good anchor in the capsule and hence I, I tend to use that. Okay. 
right? Fantastic demonstration. Okay, thank you. And let me just come to that pie crusting part. I'll yes. put in my last anchor yes, later. You can, yes. So this is my, so you can see, uh, we've got a OT table, we've got a side support. I like to do my surgery, whatever surgery it is, on the table, TKR position, 70 degrees flexion with a good side support. Now when there's a side support here, I put the side support myself more often than not to make sure that when I move my butt like Shakira, I get adequate uh, uh, opening in my uh, medial compartment. So when I have this, I'm between the table and the leg here. And I get uh, wonderful Dr. Ahmed to hold the foot or whoever is here. And it's not only holding the foot, external rotation of the foot opens up the medial compartment more. So if somebody can show the PIP of the uh, arthroscopic image, you can see how much the medial compartment opens up when you do an external rotation of the foot along with a valgus stress. When that's done, you've already tightened up the MCL adequately well. I usually use an 18 gauge LP needle, but here we unfortunately don't have one, so I'll just show you with a uh, normal 16 gauge uh, needle because he's a rather thin gentleman. So I'm not doing it because I've done it. So you can see I've made one little puncture here. So I go approximately at the midline here. So the mid substance of the MCL and the femoral end of the MCL heal damn well. The vascularity is great. So that's where you want to do it. So I like to go right in the middle of the joint. I make one entry and through one entry, multiple trephinations in the MCL moving in various directions. So it's like if you want to stretch a, uh, a rubber sheet, you make multiple holes in it, it stretches more. But the entry to make those multiple holes is just one. And then I work around the region, giving a valgus. It's a combination of my butt moving, Ahmed giving uh, external rotation, and my uh, needle going in and making multiple graphinations. You'll hear a little boom, like a kind of a cut oh. noise. That means it's given way, and a gush of blood will be seen uh, within the uh, knee joint and then you know, lo and behold, you've got adequate space to go in. For me, this was damn important because clinically I anticipated that this patient would have a root tear also because of the extrusion. Luckily, uh, we did not have that, but uh, especially when you're using, doing a root yes. tear, even though you have low profile jigs, it's very important to get adequate space within the uh, So, this is a uh, question, knee. Vikram, why you have put an extra needle up there? On top? Oh, that's my outflow needle. So it's, it's going to prevent the extra swelling which comes in absolutely, the Absolutely, absolutely. So the uh, extra needle on top is my outcome. So needle. it's a wonderful demonstration of a very difficult case. We Thank all you. liked it very much. Thank you, Vikram. Thank you, you so You can continue much. with the rest of the Thanks repair. And I'll Thank sign you. off. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Just, uh, cut it. So we'll just give me a sleeve. I'll put one more hole. One hole, one hole. One hole, one hole. One hole, Now I call upon Dr. Rajkumar Amravati Saab to please come on the podium and uh, have a talk about MCL injury. He has got a video presentation, demonstration for that. And uh, Dr. Amravati has kind enough, have been kind enough uh, for our request to do this presentation for us. So I request Dr. Amravati, please come. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Am I audible post lunch? Guys, thanks. Okay. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Ashish, Dr. Vinay, and the entire uh, UP team for having uh, me here. Uh, I'll be presenting my experience in uh, learning through how a cadaver can be done for an MCL repair. And I'll be showing you certain uh, anatomical landmarks which you should be um, mindful of when you do the cadaver tomorrow. And I'll illustrate through one of the cases that we had recently which uh, went wrong and uh, probably after um, addressing that she should be doing well. is happening.
चरण के चरण में जोड़ दिया जी मैं सेकंड भैया को क्या कर दिया ये ये पावर पॉइंट हम ऑन करें Okay, this is how the skin has to be incised on a cadaver on the medial side. Be generous in your incision. And when you incise, make sure you take out the first layer, that is the skin and subcutaneous tissue, and that will be your second layer. So when you take out your second layer, it is important for you to mark different landmarks that help you to do your MCL. What I marked for you is the MPFL there in that fashion. You will see different kinds of pin, red and yellow. I will tell you what they are. The white thread is along the adductor, tuber adductor uh, tendon. Another white thread on top where the retractor is on the semimembranosus. And down the red pin is your uh, semitendinosus and gracilis tendon. Okay? So that's how you have to open up on the medial side. And you have to revisit your uh, landmarks time and again to confirm what you want to do on the anteromedial side or the medial side when the, the tissues are injured. Is that okay? क्या है भाई पिक्चर आई मेरा लैंडमार्क आ रहा है ओके दिस इज योर स्टेनर लीजन व्हिच कैन हैपन इन एनी लिगामेंट एंड व्हेन इट इज स्टोन इट कैन गेट लॉक and this is the distal uh, attachment of the MCL. When it tears and avulses, it will overlap onto the pest tendon and it won't reduce. So it is important for you to open it up, see on the MRI clinically, and then you can fix it in this fashion. You can also augment it with the tape, uh, as the fiber tape has been shown to add value to your collateral ligament repairs. भैया आ जाओ नेक्स्ट कर दो नेक्स्ट ये ये हाँ मेरा ये एक स्लाइड भी नहीं दिख रहा है ना भाई ये देख कैसे दिखाएंगे OK, 
Okay, that is how you try to augment your repair. We can put two screws with the fiber tape on either ends and then try to tie it like that. Or you can have one fiber tape at one end then tie it. Because it is cadaver, we can do it in a different way. We can try all the ways. I'm sorry there is a technical glitch, I can't help it, but uh, these are all the different landmarks. Okay, imagine a superficial MCL is torn from the medial epicondyle, medial condyle of the femur, and also along with it, if you can see, if we take it out, take it down like that, you can see the menisco capsular junction. And when you give a valgus thrust, that is where the pike resting was being done when Vikram was operating. Okay, that is when the joint will open up in that fashion. If it is an acute injury, you can again take a anchor in that fashion and uh, suture it there and fixate it to the bone. And then check whether the stability is good enough. Next. 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 Chal to next chal. Chal ke rakh. Ek bhi nahi hai lag. Ja 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 ja. Aage ja aage ja aage ja. Okay, when you're trying to do POL, it is important to recognize the semi-membranous tendon which is there marked with the white thread. And your direction of drilling should be from the semi-membranous attachment towards the girdish tubercle. And your POL is fixed in extension. And when you fixate it, it should be loose in flexion. That is how we fix a deep uh, POL in that fashion. So that finishes POL, superficial MCL, stainers. I had some animations, but unfortunately it is not showing up on the screen. Chal. Okay. Uh, this is a case which we had uh, recently encountered, uh, MCL failure after a multiligamentous injury. You can see the patient's uh, MCL instability there. Hopefully you should be able to see what I demonstrated on the cadaver there. Surface marking is done to make sure that what we are doing is right. We also check how much of the joint is opening up on the CM picture there. You can see that the staple for the MCL that was put is little loose and it has come off and as a result of which the joint is still unstable. You can see the dry through sign on the medial side. This time we took the menisco capsular sutures both from the posterior part of the meniscus as well as from the mid body of the meniscus so that we can augment the menisco capsular junction along with the uh, MCL that we are going to repair. This is how the sutures will come out to begin with. The posterior sutures will come out quite posterior. When you open up the joint on the medial side, you are able to get all the sutures in one place. You can see that the MCL tissue that was there earlier that I repaired is not functional at all. But you can see the distal part of the tissue is much vascularized. So to our advantage, we can use this tissue in this fashion to augment your repair that you are planning again. So you mark the isometric point with the help of an awl, confirm it on the C-arm, then drill your femoral tunnel. In this case, we planned a Martin Lynch technique, wherein we have a single femoral tunnel and a POL and a superficial MCL tunnel distally. So you can see that the PCL screws are there 
Also, the ACL screws are there. We need to be sure that we go in between them so that we don't um, uh, damage this uh, uh, reconstruction that has already been done. We drive the graft through the femoral tunnel, fixing the graft at the femoral end with the bio screw. The POL is then uh, taken along with the posterior meniscal sutures into the POL tunnel, which will give us additional stability on the posterior medial side and fixate it with a 6 mm bio screw. Then the superficial MCL part is taken through the proximal distal tibia and then again secured with the bio screw. The remaining tissue that is there um, lying free there in front, the staple was not removed so that it gives us an anchorage to hold that graft. And it, to add collagen to the repair, we have sutured it back onto the uh, repaired MCL. And this is the post-op uh, images of that patient, pre and post. And this is how the um, image looks after the surgery. OK, none of my images are seen. So I humbly request you to vote for my candidature for the IAS vice president post in the coming uh, year. I am Dr. Rajkumar. I work at St. John's Medical College, Bangalore. And I welcome you all on behalf of the IASCON 23-24 committee to come for Bangalore in IASCON 2024 uh, and enjoy our hospitality. Thank you so much. Any questions? I am happy to answer. Otherwise, thank you so much again. Hello. Uh, hello. Who is moderator? Uh, hello. I go on to phone. I go. Thank you, sir. Now we are heading towards our last live surgery that is uh, ACL avulsion fixation by Dr. Rajiv Raman. In, in a minute or so, uh, now we are there. Hello. Rajiv sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Dr. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. I think this is the last live surgery of the day. So yeah. this is a four month old ACL avulsion. Okay. It was almost had a fibrous union, you know, as what happens when there is ACL avulsion is there, there is a continuous sepsis of the synovial fluid here because this fragment is not stable. So most of the time you don't have a true bony bone to bone union. You can see this crater is fibrosis is there. The first and most important part is elevation of this fragment. So normally we do it with a small osteotome or you can use your fusel liberator also sometimes to release this fragment. The second important, important part is preparation of your TBL bed and the preparation of your avulsion fragment. Here you can see this is your TBL bed. So you need a bleeding surface there so that there is a good bone to bone healing. So normally just we are preparing this TBL crater, what we call. You can see now blood is coming down. And anteriorly you can see there is an interminuscal ligament here. And most of the time in neglected cases you will have entrapment of the interminuscal ligament also there. So you can see here this is your crater. So you use uh, any burr or uh, to just to freshen the crater or the... Yeah, normally thing. you can use your burr also. So the only issue with burr is that uh, if you use a burr, most of the time what happens when you use a burr, sometimes you have very, 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 you, you may make a bigger crater. So I think a okay. bigger crater is a good thing. Okay. That's a, you have a control over creating of your crater. Even in the so old cases you like... Are, you are damaging my one case after this case, don't use this several blade for any other case your surgery. Okay. So you can see this is a raw bone here. Now this is a raw bone in the proximal part. It's a four month old injury. So 
Now this is preparation of the TPL stump. You can see this is the TPL stump there. The preparation of the TPL stump. And you can see here intermeniscal ligament here, which usually is intra. So sometime in neglected cases, you can may sacrifice the intermeniscal ligament also. So, and it is one of the important cause of malreduction. What happens whenever there is ACL avulsion, there is entrapment of the intermeniscal ligament under this anterior part of the fragment. And now with your probe, try to pull it anteriorly and medially. You can see this is the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus which is attached with this fragment. So try to pull it like this. And, and at this position, extend it, extend, extend. And see, extend, 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 extend. Extend, extend, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So don't, no. Flex, 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 yeah. So this is the anterior part, yeah. So now extend, extend, extend. So it's a four month, extend, 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 and see, is there. So you can see in terminal extension also, there is no impeachment. The anterior border was there, now it is sitting well in the crat crater. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yes, sir. Yeah. So now today we are using the Arthrex mini tight rope system. So okay. the, what, uh, the advantage with ACL is that you can see the vascularity. This is so pristine. You can see the vascularity of the ACL. Just you can see it. Huh? Yes, it's sir. quite vascular. Huh? So for four months old uh, avulsion also, normally you can plan for ACL repair. That is the advantage of because of having a good bony chunk here. If it has been a mid substant here or proximal part here, you may have a avascular structure here. You can see just this is the best way to see the vascularity of this. You pull it and you can see, yes, it's a quite vascular ACL. So definitely you would like to repair it so by the probe. So we have, I have Dr. Arnav also with me and Dr. Somadip with me. So two great friend of mine in this surgery, just hold it. So just, and this is your jig, the TPL jig. Just try to put it over the center of the bony fragment. You can see here, this is the center of the bony fragment. This is your medial border. This is your lateral border. This is your anterior border. So try to put it over the center of the bony fragment. And at that time, yes. Sir, so you will go for provisional fixation first and then to go for that uh, the tunnel for the… Uh, see, see, normally in this system, mini tight rope system, come on. So you just fix it. Uh, there is a button there. It's like a dog button. Uh, the button is there, mm -hmm. the proximal part. So you just drill it. You don't prefer for the provisional fixation first, no? No, no, no. I will do, I will just fix it, uh, first I will fix it with one, uh, one guide wire and uh, another guide wire I will use for tunnel, uh, making my tunnel. So uh, that's what I ask. Yeah, yeah, so it's right, it's a provisional fixation always. So just you hold it, just I am, so this is the anterior horn of the, so just hold like this, yes, good. So we will use two, that, huh? yes, fantastic. So one. One over the medial side for provisional fixation, then one over the lateral side, yes. Got it? Bada, bada, bada. Big incision, big incision, na? Go deep up the bone, yes, yes, yes. So you can see here, just we are making a vertical incision over the medial to the tibial tibial setting. Pull it anteriorly or no? Yes. Anterior, pull it. Fire of this thing? Yes. Pull it, you have pulled it. No. So this is my provisional fixation, all right. Yeah, remove, remove that one. Got it? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
any question you can ask i think So you routinely use this dock button for so uh, all I the fixation? Or? No. So I routinely use, I will remove this one, another second pin will fire. One, uh, one down. This, this one will be there for holding, yeah, for holding the fragment only. So I will fire one more pin. Yeah. Over that center, yeah. Yeah. Huh? So normally I use the suture breeze technique yeah. to take a bite through the SCL stem. The only thing mm -hmm. is that some people say that you, you are strangulating the SCL. Mm -hmm. By that suture bridge technique. So, the dog button is a very good technique. So, see, that is your provisional fixation. And I am pulling the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, which is keeping my ACL in proper tension. You got it here? So, the, my ACL is in proper tension here. Fire the second bridge pin, guide wire, please. So the probe is actually pulling on the ACL, right? Yeah, in the anterior horn, the lateral meniscus. Most of the time, it's, it's attached with your reverse fragment. You can see here. Yeah. Yeah. So normally, if you pull it like that and fix it with a primary fixation wire, what happens? The advantage is that you are putting it in an anatomical position. So this is the position of the anterior horn mm. of the lateral meniscus. Most of the others, see, you see, most anterior horn of the lateral meniscus normally moves posteriorly. Mm. Here, I'm just putting it like that. Got it? So now, this is my fixation to the center because the right one is my provisional fixation and this is my, the left one or the lateral pin is my fixation through the bone. You can see it's going almost to the center of the bone, center of the bone. Remove this bullet. Yeah, channel. So, yes, great. One curate is there. Yes, yes, center. So, now this is the pin which I am doing. Yes, I am. Yeah, I am not talking about the manager. Okay, one, two, three, I am talking about the center. Yes, center. Go. Neat. Neat, sir. So when there is, just hammer it and see. Yes. You pull it. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yes. That's fantastic. Yeah. This one, no? Oh, this is your guide wire. Yeah. All right. So leave it like that. All right. You go to your hand. Just pull it anteriorly. All right. Keep it there. This will be fixation. So anything you defer when you are when you are fixing with ACL abandon, normally you take also bite through the ACL fragment above the bone, medial lateral and lateral middle, uh, medial, the cinching sutures, loop. Hello? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes. Yes. So just, it was not about the center, just I'm rerouting it. You, you are redirecting another. Bang in the center, yeah. yeah. Bang center so that yeah, I can see the bone. If, if it is in bang center, it's good. And the probe is actually pulling on the yeah, ACL. Yeah. Always, always. So when you are doing a normal, because when you are putting the cinching suture also, I think this technique is very good to put it in anatomical position. Mm. Take it out, take 
you can check it out. Uh, check the bullet also out. Yeah, you want to give a bit more history on this one, right? What are they doing? Resistance is good. Yeah, fantastic. It's yeah, almost center of the board. Good. Key. This is the guide wire. Check it out. So the angle of the jig is 55, right? In every way. Now you can see this is my holding wire. Eleven number blades just are in three pin region. Eh? Yes. The only issue with the dog button is that uh, most of the time when you are using this dog button, sometimes the chances of anterior impingement if it doesn't sit properly. So you should you should you should you should put it over the center only and in the. So the camera is on. Yes, sir. yes, sir. we can see you. Yeah, so you can see this mini tight rope. All right. So it is a handle, and this is suture is there. The, uh, none of the suture material is the fiber wire is there. You, now we have tape option also available. And you can see the button there. See? Mm. Yes, you can see this button there. Yes, so Once you go, it goes inside, you can flip it. So now we are putting it through this hole only. So once it goes inside, check it out. It will come through the same hole. Got it? You should just push it, push it here. Got it? So now it's like uh, probe. But yeah. So hold, hold this one, hold this one. Yeah. So you can see now. So inside picture is not there. Yeah, inside picture, please just wait. No. Just probe here to answer here. So all mosquito also we can see. <coughs> yeah, it's just it. Now it's there, sir. Yeah, now it's there. Yeah, probe. So you can see this. Uh, mini, uh, uh, the endo button here, the mini yeah. button here, all right. So when you are putting it inside, it goes vertically. Now you flip it, it will sit mm. horizontally there. You can see here, hmm. now we have unloaded it. I will hold it horizontally. Just put my probe inside and yes. Now take it out. Fantastic. And this button will not move. So you can see here. Yes. Yes. So 
you, see, you can see this deploying device. Now I've taken this device out, and you can see now. Now it will sit. You can see here. It's waiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You can see here. Yes, sir. Yeah. So it's there over the edge, and try to put it over the anterior part and the uh, central part of the phone. Yeah. And now you can see here is the cinching device. Here you can see here. Yeah. And now we will remove this one, the holding cable. All right. Or we can keep it like that. Huh? After that, we will remove it in later on. Huh? So once we put it. So keep, I will keep the holding wire there. You can see now my anterior horn of the lateral meniscus, we were sub, which was subluxing it posteriorly. Now it's anteriorly. You got it? So earlier, before surgery, it was very difficult to see the posterior part of anterior part of the lateral tibial plateau. Now you can see this anterior part of the lateral tibial plateau. So your anterior horn is at right position. Earlier it was subluxating anteriorly because the whole of the above surface was going posteriorly and laterally. Got it? Yes, sir. So now this button has flipped. Now we will go for cinching. Yes, cinch it. So you Keep can it. see here. Focus here. Focus here. So this is cinching. You can see and once it outside camera and inside both here. You can see now as it is cinching down. You can see this button going in. Yeah. Yeah, you can see this button. Just wait, wait. This button. So you would, so you would go for the key wire remover first, or? I will, I, I, I will just make it a bit tight, then I will remove. The okay, wire. okay. Go, go, go. You can see gradually yeah. pressing the fragment down, down, and at this time wait. Now take the key wire. Wait, 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 wait. Wait one, one second. Yeah, now. Now remove the key wire. The good thing is that you are not taking any bite through the ACL. So you can see the tension in the ACL. Now cinch it. Cinching, cinching, yes. And now he will cinch it and the button will sit inside. Just focus, focus here, focus here. Yes, yes, fantastic, fantastic. And yes. And cinch it a bit, a bit more. A bit more. Halka. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. And Yes, done. So now you see, done, done. So you can see the tension in the ratio is restored, and whole of this button is now over the central central fragment of the above this here. At the same time, it's a very small button. See whether it's getting impinged or not. You can see there is no impingement. You can see here. Yes. Sir. So this is a very small uh, small button. Normally, when you use the endo button or normal endo button, you may have impingement over the notch. So in full extension, see my knee is in full extension. There is no impingement in the uh, uh, notch. You can see here, there is no impingement. So fantastic. Now it's it's done. And now, see, look, give me so. Well done. Yes, yes, my strategy is done. Abhishek, we are done. I think uh, Rajiv has done a wonderful job. You can see yeah, it. Yeah, certainly. So now it's well, well fit. It's uh -huh. well fit. So fantastic. I think I was using this suture technique now. Now I will shift to <laughs> mini tight rope. <Yeah. laughs> so I don't want to strangle it. I don't want to make a tight rope ac across the vascular fiber of the ACL. All right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank, 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 thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Thank you, Santanu. Wonderfully demonstrated. Thank you, sir. Abhishek? Yes, sir. We are done with the OT part. Yeah, thank you, OT and team. We'll hands there. up to you. Hands up to you, OT team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kudos. Thank you. Thank we thank have you. now, uh, in the earlier, uh, uh, period of our arthroscopic conclave, we used to do five, six surgeries. Now we have completed nine surgeries Are today. In a single day, and that too, very well completed in time. It's 4.30, quarter to 5 only. So we are done with all our ni uh, nine live surgeries. And now we'll be proceeding towards our GBM in just a minute, in just a few minutes. OK? So be, be here in the uh, this uh, hall. All the uh, AAUP members, please be here, because we'll be having a GBM in a short while. Thank you so much. And all of you are invited in a in in a gala banquet dinner today's evening in the same same uh, campus and and whosoever is registered for the cadaveric workshop tomorrow all of you are welcome for tomorrow cadaveric workshop it would definitely be a very good learning experience and all of you thank you so much